Hello and welcome everybody to our live stream uh, today. Uh, I want to welcome first uh, all our guests, um, starting with, uh, of course, my, my good faithful uh, Hyper G. Good evening. How are you doing? Very good, mate. Very good. How are you? I'm, I'm well. I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of uh, yeah. Masters at last. I know, right? Because I, I had replaced you with my other good old faithful. Matty P. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Yeah, very good, very good. It, and I you must admit, this is so exciting, isn't it? it, it is this this must be a global first, isn't it? You know, a Masters tournament being live streamed Master, with live yeah. commentary, people dialing in from around the world. What a treat we've got in store for listeners tonight. Absolutely. Although we are going to have to say before we introduce any more guests, um, uh, unfortunately, the content specifically, Colin versus Marcus, has been. Um, postponed a few hours uh, only because of uh, Marcus has had a, a, a van accident but don't worry he's fine um, it's just his van uh, he was too, way too spicy for the van and it exploded um, under spiciness uh, but thankfully he's okay um, and is getting sorted um, so uh, we wish uh, Marcus all the best and get in uh, a speedy recovery from wherever he is. Um, but don't worry, that does not mean we are uh, not covering Masters uh, live stream table. Uh, but instead of uh, Por Favor uh, Demons versus uh, Lizardmen, who are now called Sorry in Ancients, of course. I don't know who Lizardmen are. Um, <laughs> um, we are going to go have a, have our, ourselves a good old fashioned elf off uh, in the master himself, uh, kicking off uh, uh, the live streams uh, against Rory. So H high elves versus silver elves, um, and we will get to that. That starts at seven. So if you're joining us now, you have lots of time to. Um, get drinks and snacks and everything. Um, we do apologise for the change of schedule, um, but we're still bringing you content, so, you know, I'm not that sorry. Um, but before we get on to anything else uh, much, much, Lee, uh, we will introduce our other guests. Um, yeah, well, we've got some real treats for you tonight, guys. Um, uh, first of all, one of the Paired Weapon podcast's uh, favourite sons, a brother, if you will, dialing in all the way from California for his third appearance. It's my mate, it's your mate, it's Johnny Crash, a.k.a. Henry. How are you, buddy? Good morning, fellas, or I guess it's good evening where you are, but pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Dark and raining here, mate. I bet it's beautiful sunny in California, isn't it? Oh, it's like 73 degrees yeah. sunny outside. It's awful, man. <laughs> Well, you're very welcome back on, uh, and uh, and and with a bit of a change to the the prescribed uh, game tonight, I think that's a bit more back on your turf as well, isn't it, with the elves? Yeah, when when you originally invited me on, I misread um, Saurian Ancients as Sylvan Elves, and I'm like, oh, I know the Demon Sylvan Elf matchup really well. And then I think last night I messaged you, and I was like, I, I'm just shit at reading. Um, <laughs> and now now it's just back to my wheelhouse. Two elf armies, I play a lot. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Wow, that's super. That is super. And uh, of course, uh, we got I've got another one. Do you mind if I keep going, Lucky Sixes? Oh, please do. You, you introduce guess? much better than I, I could ever dream. <laughs> well, well, we're absolutely delighted as well to have on board. He's he's your boy. He's my boy. He's the boy I taught to play. He taught him everything he knows. <laughs> he's of course he's not. He's the UK's youngest and most recent player he smashed onto the scene in 2020 and got himself a slot in the masters yeah you know it he's pushing the rats around this trend trend bernard how are you buddy i am not bad thank you doing good have you uh, have you had your first game yet no mine's on thursday so yeah. looking forward to that yeah it should be good it should be a good game excited nervous a uh, bit of both really i'm feeling quietly confident i think mm. Well, uh, in, a, in a moment, perhaps we'll talk about some of the games last night. But I think one of the moments of last night's uh, uh, Masters for me was um, I got a screenshot of your uh, your little uh, <laughs> your little observation uh, really quick, <laughs> oh, where own. you were watching. How many games were you watching simultaneously? Last I think night? I had four on the go at the same time. There. Oh, Trent, <laughs> Why I, uh, not? you don't understand how jealous I was of your wide boy. Yeah. My wide boy, yeah. Nah. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's it's good screen for for watching all the UV games. That's pretty much its main use at the moment. Yeah. So. I mean, that would be good on its own, but the other seven screens you had was <laughs> was very helpful. I can imagine you get every every uh, angle of that UV. Right? Exactly. Yeah, you don't miss anything. <laughs> it, I mean, it genuinely looked like a command bunker in some sort of you know sort of you know. Uh, American sort of yeah Air Force Command Center. Or something. <laughs> I guess the issue is when you're watching that many games, it's very hard to keep track of all of them at the same time. You end up missing more than you actually watch. So yeah, pros and cons. Yeah. Well, I know you're watching me at one point because uh, you pointed out how I'd thrown Game Boy right at the end. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, no, fair, no, fair enough, mate. It was uh, it was a hell of a night for for Ninth Age last night, wasn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. Did you catch any of it, Lucky Six's staff? Did you see any of it? We got we got glimpses. Uh, we we were actually um, sort of uh, doing some recording as well. In between all this master stuff, uh, we, yeah. we got a channel to run apparently. Um, so, apparently, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we we were trying to do that, but we caught we caught a few of the glimpses and uh, obviously all the highlights and and everything on the uh, th- forum channel as well. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have uh, more than one screen though, so it was a little bit difficult for me to keep up in the way the trend did. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite that, something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you uh did, have you managed to catch up with any of the results and anything yet, Johnny? So are you um, uh the the time zone makes it funky for me and as much as I want to watch games of ninth age on my phone while I'm at work, I'm not sure that would be the the best call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's that is a bit that is a bit tricky. But um uh, I guess uh, Tom, are we allowed to uh, are we allowed to talk about some of the results from last night? Absolutely. Is that okay? We'll wait for the round there. Well, what uh, I mean, just the Masters was off to an absolute powerhouse of a start. Uh, uh first of all, Sunday, did anyone catch this game? It was the green skin off between Ed uh the ninth age Murdoch. Uh, and Alistair smash and grab oh, Parrin. Did anyone see that? I watched that one, yeah. Yeah? What do you make yeah. of it, mate? Yeah, I think uh, Ali got off to quite a bad start because Ed got fairly lucky with his magic phase on turn one. I think he did three wounds to the Great Green Idol and then two wounds to the uh, the guy in the Gargantula. And I think Ali thought that the game was over. Um, so he kind of ran everything forward just to see how many points he could get and he ended up turning it around and, and did fairly decently from there. So yeah, it was a good game to watch, yeah. And uh, well, how did it finish up then, mate? I think it was 12 8, mm. if I'm not mistaken. To Ed, yeah. Right? To Ed, yeah, yeah. So it was a good start for the captain of the Scotland ECC team there, because I think that was a bit of a banana skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alistair certainly got the potential to take people out. Uh, and, you know, we all know what the green skins are capable of uh, once the, uh, the dice gods start blowing. Um, and then, of course, the. Um, we kind of sort of got onto a bit of a Super Tuesday last night, didn't we? It was um, things just got a bit, got a bit fruity. Uh, and um, so, uh, w- which games did you have on your multiple screens last night, then, Trent? So, so I, I had it your makes sense. It was Monday. Yeah, it was. It was that <laughs> oh, super, sorry, super Super Tuesday, Tuesday on Monday. It was, it was great. <laughs> that's that's how super it was, though. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Monday. Yeah, of course. Sorry. And I will interrupt I, you there the before you, before you tell us all about the things because I believe we have another guest on as well. The guests just keep on coming, don't we, Jack? Yeah, they do. We keep on coming, <laughs> and they don't stop coming, mate. <laughs> they just don't stop. Um, you are. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm such a famous name. Everyone knows who I am well, by that's now, it. right? Yeah, right. So I, sh- I should. Just, <laughs> I mean, you're not only famous uh, for your your own podcast, the Thunder Socks, uh, but you're now famous for a different reason, um, and that is Jack Dix, the worldwide internet YouTube phenomena uh, that is Jack Ta- <laughs> Jack Jack Dix. Oh, I tell you what, never has so much effort been put in to content that will be seen by so little. Uh, yeah, by... Hey, hey, <laughs> Whoa. It, uh, hey, at, at least three people so have said they like it. At least three, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, that's not what I meant to say, but those are the words <laughs> no, that came out of my mouth. Hey, however, it came out perfect. So, that, it, it, nonetheless. So, um, so yeah, so we've, uh, we, we do have a few uh, other surprises that might come along in between. Um, but uh, for now, that is your panel. And what a panel, mate. Uh, is, and, and what a pleasure it is to have so many 
friends from uh, around the, uh, the the Podosphere, the Ninth Ages Sphere, and yeah. indeed the Northern Hemisphere. Do you like that, mate? All my spheres here. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's really cool. And I'm um, one of them absolutely psyched. About yeah, man. And so, I mean, thank you to everyone that's joining. We've got 30 people on the uh, chat already uh, watching in. Um, I'm sure, as I say, we're, I'm sure we're very disappointed we can't see Marcus, but how exciting that we're going to start off our live stream with the master himself. Um, choosing a, an odd list, right? I don't think... Yeah. How, how yeah. many people would have bet on high elves, truthfully? What's a high elf? Not me. Um, a high born elf. <laughs> He's done it again. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> That's two strikes. Right. Who invited him? <laughs> Con considering the day before this submission... Craig told me that he was trying to decide between Vermin Swarm, Infernal Dwarves, and Dread Elves. <laughs> um, I would not have bet yeah. very much money on him going hybrid elves. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not even he. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, we're, and, of course, we're against Rory, who's the Sylvan Elf. Um, uh, just without even looking at lists or, anything, or the players just yet, who normally wins that match? Uh, let's go to Mr. Crass. So... I'm normally on the Sylvan Elf side for any of the Elf Mirrors. Yeah. I think just a lot of their tools and their book is lined up to beat the other Elf books, and it's the one thing their legacy book really does well um, is handle the Elf Mirrors and the Demon Match, kind of. So yeah. I'd put money on um, just not knowing players, not knowing lists. I'd put money on Sylvans. Sure. Um, what about you, Mr. Craig Johnson? Uh, who has just chimed in, uh, who would you put money on? <laughs> I've got back myself, right? Um, <laughs> You've come in at a fantastic time. I thought I'd pop in and, uh, and just say hi. I know that, um, we're not going until 7 o'clock. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting one in that when I've played Silver Nails, I've always liked the High Elf matchup. Um, I, I think Silver Nails generally do okay against High Elves. And there's some things in Rory's list which are aimed at the dark, uh, the Dread Elf matter, uh, Dread Elf meta that sort of hamper me. So, for example, Cosmo is really, really good against my list. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't think Silver Elves are the strongest book. And from chatting to a couple of people, including Scrub, who I shamelessly stole the list from, um, he reckons it's a good matchup. But he obviously knows how to use the list, which sure. is an advantage. Yeah, so, be... um, have you used uh, High Elves before in a Masters? I've never used High Elves. In a tournament in the elves, 18 years I've been tournament gaming. They're the only fantasy oh. army I've never taken to a tournament. There you go. So, yeah. um, I mean, I mean, if I, if I could just jump in there, Tom. I mean, when I when I when, when you emailed it in and I saw it, I actually said, "Shit, the bed." I can't believe you've done it. What what's your, what's your thinking behind that, mate? I mean, because it's such a bold move. I mean, it's very it's very you, but you know, what what's your thinking? I mean, my thinking behind it is that the list that I generally want to use don't really suit the meta that I was predicting at the Masters. So, for example, my Vermin Swarm really struggled, for example, against Infernal Dwarves. And I couldn't write, for example, any Beastow lists that I was particularly enthused by. As I've already said, I don't think Silver Nails are in a great spot. So I was actually really struggling to come up with a list that I wanted to use. And I wrote lists for 13 of the books, trying to get my own sort of, my own sort of style on it, but also be competitive with uh, the people that I assume would be in, near the top. So Jake on his Infernal Dwarves. Colin potentially on Infernal Dwarfs or Saurians, Hugh on Demons or Dread Elves, and trying to cover all those bases was really hard. And then when the New Year's Revolution list dropped, um, I had to look through them, and obviously Scrub and Furion are on the, essentially this so, uh, this highborn elf list. Mm. And I, I still, to an extent, do not understand it. I do not understand how uh, her 53 infantry elves with a few characters and a couple of flying things can consistently win games and yet there's two of the best players in Europe playing what is essentially the same list with a few tweaks and therefore it, I almost saw it as a challenge to go well it, this is obviously a good list but it's one I have that I cannot get my head around and therefore the best way of doing it is to sort of stress test it so I've said it as a bit of a challenge to myself and it is obviously a good list at some level I think you need to be playing it right and I'm not anticipating playing it perfectly um but it was also just due to the evolution of the meta and the predicted master's meta as to why I didn't want to take the armies that I'm sort of, I guess, more used to in, in Beast Herd, Sylvans, and, and um, Vermin Swarm. Honestly, I think trust falling into a list is actually a good way to... If, if you're confident in your player skill and you're confident in the list that you're looking at, trust falling into the list, I think, is 
a perfectly good and reasonable choice. And I yeah. mean, out of everyone, uh, Craig probably believes in his own skill the most, right? I, to an extent, <laughs> in, I, I trust in my own skill with certain styles of lists, and I don't think this is that style of list. In the, I'm, I think, well, I know Matt's touched on this on previous podcasts. I very much am about lateral movement, and that's that's sort of my game. Mm. Whereas this list, that outside of that, it doesn't. We're losing you a little bit there, Craig. But yeah, and essentially you're saying there's a lot of movement and lateral movement and everything in the list. And uh, I, I mean, I remember you saying that that's exactly how you play. And you sort of play against what the Ninth Age sort of wants you to play as well, is what you said. Yeah, and I, the, the bit that probably cut me out, hopefully you guys can hear me okay now. Yep. I don't really not happen there. But um, I was saying that this list, I, as much as I agree that trust falling into a list can be a great exercise... I think this list, yes, it has the three flying monsters, but the majority of the list is pretty static blocks. Um, so it's got elements that I, are sort of my style, but it's also got elements that are completely alien to me. Yeah, um, I know. I'm very, I'm, I'm actually very excited to see this. Obviously, being a highborn elf player myself, um, to see the both the phoenixes in action as well. So. Um, I'd- I've heard rumours that Scrub himself is going to watch and judge me. He's uh, He sent me a message to say his judgmental eyes will be watching. Oh, good. Um, Craig, to confirm, is it, it's two fire phoenixes, right? It's one of each, isn't it? It's one of each. Yeah, one of each. Okay. Yeah. I've seen two different versions of the list document with one with Frost Phoenix and one with two fire phoenix. So well, I just wanted to... one, one is the correct one that everyone has shared and the other one is <laughs> an incorrect one that one person I won't name has made. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a fiery and a frosty, um, and that's where some of the tweaks compared to uh, Scrub and Furion come in, and that uh, Furion's got two frost phoenixes, for example, um, but pretty similar less overall, but a few tweaks in it. it. It's actually funny because there was two versions of kind of a proto version of this list at the US Masters at the start of 2020, and I remember playing against it and then listening to them go over your list i was like oh i kind of actually remember that list <laughs> except there was one more griffin lord and one less uh phoenix mm-hmm. and on that note guys i think i'm going to drop out of this call because Rory has set the room up um, Ooh, very exciting. i'm going to jump in there I'm yeah absolutely well through. thank you very much for coming on uh just now uh, we will join you very very soon on ub um i'll be logging in through that um staff uh, will be joining your discord i will um, as a man on the ground, so that he can you, listen in. And... Yeah, you won't you won't hear me at all, Craig. So <laughs> yeah. don't you worry. I will be there, <laughs> but you won't hear a word. Um, so. But don't worry, like Scrub, he'll be judging you. Um, so <laughs> uh, you've got that that to fall back on. Um, but yeah, yeah. So... Well, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for coming on, Craig. Best of luck, mate. And uh, yeah. yeah, we hope the best elf wins. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> thanks. Um, and so... yeah, and that's. <laughs> Before I go, Lucky Sixes, yeah. I will I will depart shortly and follow Craig almost immediately. Um, I've just been uh, taking a little glance at the Jeff versus Jack match as well. Oh, go on. Um, and I, I think it's only about turn end of bottom of turn three at the moment. But I've just witnessed quite a few very good charges from the Beast Herds player Jeff, and it seems to be going rather well. Now, bear in mind that I haven't watched the whole battle, and I've only just jumped in at that point. And I could be completely wrong, but things look to be going quite well for Jeff and the Beast Herds, as far as I can tell. Well, no doubt Trent's got it up. Uh, is, uh, uh, is that what you're seeing, mate? I haven't actually got it up. I'm not that organised. Oh, so. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. All those screens. Let you down. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, what have you got on all your screens? Or do we need... Nothing. Is, it, is this a PG, right? So. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm entirely focused on this stream, so... Good, good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, I mean, it might be a good time to say hello to the chat as well. Uh, a few people I recognise on there as well. Um, like I said, uh, if you are just joining us in 
uh, just joining us now. Um, there is a slight change in schedule in that it's not starting at 6.30. It will start in 5-10 to 10 minutes with Craig versus Rory. Um, that's because Marcus has had a, a, a fan accident. But don't worry, it's not all that bad. His, his wheels just popped out. Um, he's fine, <laughs> um, which is the main thing. And uh, unfortunately, their game won't start till a lot later. So we're going to switch games. Uh, still bringing you some live stream. And what a, it's not a bad... Uh, uh, substitute starting with the master so um, I'm going to quickly go through the chat uh, Agonas, uh, Agonas I, I always get it wrong, Remy basically hello, uh, Garrett, hello Glenura, hello uh, West, thank you for coming in uh, he's, one, he's one of the guys from our club and uh, has got some lovely silver elves, uh, he'll probably be painting them actually now, um, so well done John, Cricket uh, Guillaume, um, Paul Favor, yeah unfortunately not, uh, so and loads and loads of other people uh i will try and go through them uh, every now and then um uh, uh, boxy um uh screw the corn uh the classic uh mr brown hello and john whiff hello to all of you right and i will uh i'll go back to the chat and if you ask questions i'll try to note them down as well and we'll answer them and i'll pose them to the wonderful crew uh we have here um but yes uh what we'll do, uh, we'll have a quick break while I'm sorting out the UB room. Uh, hopefully, when we come back, we'll have that all in. Uh, but don't go anywhere. We have a competition for you, don't we, Matty? We certainly do, mate. And we've got some world-class prizes out there that have been donated by people from literally as far as uh, the, the other side of Manchester. We've got a real treasure trove. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And... Uh, uh, I will, without further ado, put the competition on. Uh, we have lots of um, uh, entrants already. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like Matty said, some fantastic prizes. So uh, take a look at our competition. Hi, guys. I'm Lucky Sixes. And I'm Matty P. And today we're here to introduce the Masters 2021 competition, where you can win a whole host of prizes, including painted models from the Gobbo and Kev, lifetime TTS subscription, gaming book from Heretic Games, Rotten Factory unpainted Nurgle champion, laser sight pen, and a free standard size commission from the Gobbo himself. All you have to do to win one of these prizes is answer this simple question. What was the latest army book released by the Ninth Age? Was it A. Orcs and Goblins B. Dread Elves or C. Undying Dynasties And Matty, how do you enter this wonderful competition? Well, Lucky Sixes, I'm uh, glad that you asked. All we're asking people to do to enter this competition, and let's face it, why wouldn't you with a list of prizes like that is simply to send us an email to the following address pairedweaponpodcast at gmail.com that's pairedweaponpodcast all lowercase and all one word at gmail.com don't forget to include your contact number your contact twitter your contact forum and any way other that you'd like us to let you know if you've been a lucky winner or not and don't forget to keep an eye out for the ptg videos at the end of the Masters, where we'll be announcing those lucky winners. Yes, at least seven winners we will have for this competition, so it is well worth you entering. Make sure you check out all our other content on several podcasts, including Paired Weapon Podcast, Slanrat, Thundercox, and Fantasy Warbanging Podcast. And of course, the video is right here on PTG. That's it from us. Best of luck, and stay tuned for more content. Best of luck, guys. See you later. And that was our competition. Uh, as Matty said, some fantastic prizes. And uh, we are here uh, in the room, the UB room, uh, ready to go with uh, Craig and Rory. Um, we, as I said, we've got staff, um, or Hyper G, sorry, um, Man, our man on the ground, he's listening in and will buzz back back and forth, letting us know if we 
have no idea what they've rolled and why they've rolled, uh, but there you can see they're rolling for sides now. Um, and yeah, and uh, thanks to everyone that's come in. We've got a few other questions. Um, <laughs> um, people, yeah, I didn't want to pronounce your name, Widgkirk. I, I, I can't pronounce that, I'm afraid. Um, Wykert. Oh, you've said it. Wykert. Uh, Tommy T. Heckling me. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, t Matty. Tommy uh, T. is uh, wanting some excerpts from Matty's Latin primer. Oh, primers into Paris? Well, I imagine. And tales from the, ho the house paddock, of course. <laughs> well, it's underwater at the moment, mate. We're having all sorts of trouble. It looks like the battle has stopped out there. Oh, honest. no. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty muddy. I didn't. I, I mean, Tales from the House Paddock does sound like. A, I mean, I'm not being funny. It's like erotica. <laughs> so, so Matty, I, bet, I bet Matty P could write some fierce oh. erotica. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not sure about the whole book, but the intro would be amazing. Just, just imagine the vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so many colourful words used for buggering. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If you ever get a chance, I'll sing How Much Is That Doggy in the Window in Latin for you, Tommy. There you go. That'll be nice for you. <laughs> and um, Boxy, no, Marcus hasn't literally fallen off the wagon. Um, although we, he does say I'm seriously wishing him well. Um, yeah, he's just, just had a bit of an uh, accident, um, unfortunately. He sent me pictures of his um, torn-up wheel um, earlier, which didn't look good. But he is okay, which is the main thing. So uh, we'll, we'll give it tonight, and then we'll slate him for the rest of the week. Uh, after that um but yeah uh right so we're so we're in we're, and they're 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 rolling and stuff they've got sides and everything yeah i think they just shook on the 10 10 oh yeah wait, no, sorry. <laughs> all right see you later <laughs> good stream <laughs> thanks to everyone um yeah you know that craig yeah. made that joke you know he did <laughs> i was the so, first uh, thing he so would have said what, what, what... Johnny, what do you reckon's the the key the the key to the Sylvan list then? Uh, if Rory's gonna gonna turn this over, and and I I guess we're saying that he's probably second favourite. How's he gonna do it? What what's gonna be the key to this then? So I think personally, if I was playing this game, I think it's understanding the role that um, the two archer, like skirmishing archer units, have. And it's mainly to protect the dragon from the bolt throwers. I think. Um, mm -hmm. Because using using the monster, using the breath weapon against the blocks is going to be important in the game, but he's not going to have a lot of mobility with that dragon until at least some of some of that highborn firepower is taken care of. Hmm. I mean, it is, it's pretty shooty, isn't it? If we sort of half go over the lists um, in this, uh, and I'll try and zoom in. Uh, so the highborns uh, that we know, we've got uh, a big block of sea guard. Um, well, there's three blocks of sea guard there. Oh no, sorry, a big block of sea guard, a small block of sea guard, a, a block of lion guard, uh, three bolt throwers, which are obviously got the dragon's name on it, um, a block, uh, a small chaff unit of reavers, two phoenixes, a f flying griffin, uh, and we have uh, BSB a mage and a high prince as well so loads of characters probably uh, i think it was pretty close to the the kappa um character things only a small block of lions though that was interesting yeah, uh, only, to me. The 11, only the 11 uh, uh lions a uh, banner of becalming though on them yeah um, which is sleep uh, but they those guys do pack a punch so, so uh, and, and, you know, I, think, and i think they're a wizard bunker to be honest yeah right um yeah. i mean they're sort of wizard and late like late game right i guess um and with all their uh, people in them because I, I i'd imagine the prince who's the sliver prince goes in the sea guard uh, he yeah. probably just bounces around to wherever he's needed to be honest sure uh, maybe not in this matchup but he could also just be a lone gunman pretty easy mm, yeah um because he's the queen's companion one isn't he so he's got three shots uh so it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, ha the I know that the Frost Phoenix works pretty well with the line guard in terms of agility and making sure that they go first. Um, I guess with the mirror match or the elf off in mind as well because of the high agility, right? Yeah. 
Um, so that's and with the extra Aegis um, is going to be again hoping to be the out of the two phoenixes the one that stays stays around longer um, do, do you see any of them staying quite close together or any going f like splitting apart across the deployment zone I, I think I think both birds can really just do do what they want because mm. pre pressuring a Sylvan's line is probably more important than staying within like a BSB or within like kind of a sure. tight knit bubble. Yeah, yeah, because their their discipline is going to be similar, isn't it? Um, not too dissimilar, and the thing's fearless anyway. Um, so if we go over to the uh, Sylvans, uh, we've got a big old dragon. So it's a uh, I'm very happy. Um, some sentinels, uh, some pathfinders, um, which they're, they're going to do some decent work on the flyers and things as well. Um, a, a small unit of archers, uh, a smallish, medium-ish uh, size unit of dryads, uh, small, well again, medium sized unit of thickets, um, some wild huntsmen, which I'm very interested to see if they survive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, heath hunters and heath hunters, uh, and then a thicket shepherd, which goes in the um, thicket beast. So, um, I mean, from that you've got your your hammer and anvil right there and there, sort of thing, um, and the rest just does different jobs, right? I, I think the biggest problem is with all those sea guard, you don't have your hammer. Yeah. Like the the huntsmen need to sit behind a hill. Yeah. Like they're just gonna give up those points. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, with I guess what you're saying with cover, cover volley and stand and shoot and no stand and shoot penalty on the sea guard. They're I just mean, done. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what's, what's their armor? Is it four up, four up, six up? Um, uh, are they with shields or are they with pair? Uh, uh, they're shields, the huntsmen, shields, shields and lances. lances. Okay, they're shields with lances, so I think it's. Four up, six up, but that might be generous considering sure. what the Sylvan Elf book is. Yeah, it is four up, six up. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, I you the, said uh, you... The, the, inter the interesting build here is the is the Prince, isn't it? Um, you, you're seeing a lot of uh, Titanic might on Sylvan blades recently. I think that's quite nice. Oh, it's great with the extra AP oh. from the Sylvan A, mm -hmm. the Sylvan blades, and the extra attack. Then you go, oh yeah, yeah and I'm strength seven. <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude, dude's a monster. Yeah, yeah. Um, obsidian and, rock and as stand, well. Standard obsidian ro uh, rock as yeah. well, obviously. Yeah. So it's plus two. Um, so um, just for anybody chiming in, that is because I've had this in the past with magic resistance. Uh, magic resistance, you increase the value, right, of the casting. No, you decrease the total. Yeah, you yeah. minus the opponent's total. There we go. So I still have issues with um, <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so there you go. So that's that's making it harder to cast. Um, and probably making sure that if anybody actually goes for you, you're throwing an extra dice. Um, so yeah. Um, I mean, we said initially we've got one vote for Sylvan Elves and one vote for high, Highborn Elves, although that vote is Craig. Um, which is good that he's backing himself. And of course, as the master, why would you not? Um, but... What else does everybody else think in this matchup? Um, I think it's, it's definitely going to go to Craig. I think Rory doesn't have enough shooting to deal with both the Phoenixes and also the Bolt Throwers. And the Bolt Throwers are a huge threat to the Dragon. And also Craig has enough shooting to take off the Wild Huntsman. Yeah. So I think Craig has all the answers to, to what Rory has. I also don't think Rory has enough of the um, the Thicket Beasts. He's only got four. So obviously with the BSB, yeah. they're, they're unbreakable, whatever it is. Uh, are they bodyguard with the BSB? Yes. yes. Yeah, so I think he, yeah. needs, he needs a few more in there because four isn't particularly scary. Yeah. I, I should I should also add, I was saying Sylvan's in the blind, not knowing lists. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, of course, yeah. No, <laughs> knowing lists, I'm pretty firmly with Highborn here. Oh, okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. Well, I, w I was going to see if you change it to your mind, so if you have, that's fair enough. So it, is anybody here Sylvan Elf? I think it's particularly difficult in that we know the players as well, isn't it? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with Rory on a long shot. Yeah, why not? Well, mate, for me, he's got a dragon, so he's absolutely winning. Um, yeah, it breaks my heart not to back the dragon. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would have predicted the the Sylvans were on list alone, but um, 
knowing the players, it's hard to bet against Craig sure. in this, yeah. in this Although, situation. Although, I mean, to his own admission, he's never played with A, Highborn Elves, or B, this list. I know it would have he would have done his research and spoken to people, but he hasn't actually played with this list, so that surely got to play against him. I, I didn't catch. What was the secondary? Um, so it's Hold the Ground, I oh, believe. Okay. Which I think is, again, out of these two lists. You've got the big block sea guard, I think. Realistically. Well, and also you just have the lions, which. Yeah. Oh. I think the dryads and the and the tree, the yeah, tree king yeah, should tree be king. able to get the objective. Yeah, that should be fine. sure, thicker beast. Yeah. Um, would you think they will? I mean, I guess it's just whether they can stand there and survive, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, they just dryads as far as I can throw on. So. <laughs> I mean, you can. Those two scoring units are going to move up, and I don't think. They're likely to get charged by either of the two Sea Guard units, and they don't need to charge because they sit on the objective. Um. Yeah, sure. They, I mean, I mean, they've got the Griffin who can't do it on his own for sure. The the Lion Guard could do a decent job, but I mean, against Aegis, it's always going to be an issue. Um, has the has, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Has the Prince got the Nova Lance? Uh, I believe he does. He yeah. does. So he does have the bind so. attacks. So he's gonna. He is gonna be really useful in most of these matchups. And I stuff think as this. Well. The prince is kind of living on borrowed time, though, with uh, the pathfinders on the board mm. and the uh, sentinels. Yeah. Because they will. They will kill him. Um, yeah, but there's so much work to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, sp I suppose that will be, perhaps one of Craig's main things is to keep it. Try and keep them busy, right? Or if we can keep him busy away from his his. Griffin Prince, then that might be a win in itself. Looks like these, uh, these two words like are spells are uh, chosen as well uh, when, when you when when we get onto it. Let's say I think these these two woods that are in because he's placed his own one, but mm. I was having a wood in his bomb zone as well. I was going to play for his benefit. Yeah, I think quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. sure. The the ruins is also really good uh, for Craig. He's got like one area of cover basically. Yeah, as opposed to the the two that. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's put his wild huntman in the cover, I guess, to because that side's not going to be used. He's pre he's predicting that's and marching columns, whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm. I think is Rory dropping for first? Uh, it's marching columns, so they've got to drop one. Oh, each it's for marching three, columns, yeah. of course. Yeah. Just to let you know, guys, there's a little bit of an update from Hyper G. Um, Craig chose the bottom side, and Rory's taking the first deployment. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> And I'll sign off again there. Yeah, keep, <laughs> keep coming back. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for the little updates. Um, uh, I'm going to put this out to the chat, who's now up to 50, uh, which is fantastic. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we've got Tommy T and Bognog, who is uh, Josh, I think, um, rooting for Sylvans. What do you guys think? What, I mean, we've had a little chat and uh, our... I, I wouldn't say expertise, um, cause, <laughs> but we have uh, suggested that perhaps Craig might be the favourite in terms of lists um, and has maybe a few more tools to deal with it. But what do you guys think? Um, and we'll come back to you in a little bit, see what people have said as well. Um, but yeah, so Craig run the roll off the sides. Um, there was an interesting chat. I don't know whether it was today or, or the last few days. I can't. I can never remember with the month head chat. Um, but the first day um so first turn was much more important than sides and maps um what, do you guys have any opinions on maps and and uh, the roll off and, and all that stuff so i think with map packs being more popular i think that's probably more true than the the days of yore where every table was unique sure um but I think with train being a bit more standardized, that that sounds correct to me. Fair enough. Um, Trent, I I I believe you have a follower in, in Hannah L, who says you're oh. you're the best. That'll uh, be my girlfriend supporting my my so, streaming career. Well, yeah. hi Hannah. Thanks for <laughs> thanks. For, um, and, uh, yeah, is there anything you'd like to say to her uh, in in front of fifty other nerds? <laughs> Um, no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, no, thanks for tuning in, Hannah. I'm sure she'll be uh, helping you. I'm sure this is just extra scouting, right? Yeah, 
Oh, she's got no clue what's going on. She's very supportive <laughs> of everything I do. She just sits there and smiles and lets me talk about ninth. So yeah, nice. she's great. All right. All right, I need you to be honest with me right now. Is she actually the one who qualified for Masters? And you're just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm not saying anything. Well, we'll we'll move on straight away. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be putting you in anything. Um, Shane Baxter, hello, um, hello world. Um, says, uh, what's the UB password? Uh, are we allowed to give that out? I'm not sure. Um, uh, yeah, well, yeah. It's, okay. um, it's Masters. All lowercase if you want to watch it. Not on this stream, but why would you? Here's what I say to that. Hello, world. Um, Shane Baxter, uh, damn, those are some se are some sexy voices. Uh, thanks, Trent. You've got another follower. Um, right. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, just some other people that we've already mentioned. Mainly Tommy T saying, um, mm -hmm. who is the... S s he says septic bloke, but I, I guess he means skeptic. I'm not sure. You'll have to Maybe clarify. Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe. Um, who would we suggest is the septic bloke out of us? <laughs> <laughs> any any takers? I, I mean, I, 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 for your girlfriend's yeah. sake, Trent, I hope it's not you. Yeah, I hope so too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not say, I've been locked in this room, uh, COVID lockdown, for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit of a development here. Uh, it looks like we've got three drops. So it's a question here of... Um, is Rory going to drop for the lot? I mean, that's, uh, that's obviously uh, something that will be in his mind now. I would have thought surely he's going to go for it. <clears throat> right, yeah, so think, that think... is Craig's uh, final piece uh, in the 111 drop. Um, and then, yeah, so we're thinking he goes down, right? Yeah, I'd be surprised if he doesn't. I mean, in a game with this much shooting, it's it's pretty crucial to get the first turn in sure. and see, see how much damage you can do. Yeah, he's going to want to alpha strike stuff, isn't he? I'd have thought. Yeah. Especially when each side is so. Uh, well, lacks resilience. Hmm. You just. Just, just, just on a, a, chime just in on a magic there, guys. front here, uh, it's probably worth looking at spells quickly. It looks like Craig's got uh, Blaze, uh, Fireball, uh, Cascading, uh, Favor, um, Raven's Wing, the Oaken Throne. I'm not sure about that, and uh, the uh, and awaken the beast. Uh, Oaken go Oaken throne, you get for free, so yeah, oh, okay. you get it for showing up. Yeah, that's, okay. I mean, so he's he's taking the hereditary on his um, Canary Tower guy, hmm. and then and I'm guessing this is not cascading fire. It's actually uh, salvo. I think it's yeah. just unupdated cards. I would yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, the old the old uh, cascading is it? Uh, it's difficult to tell what uh, what Rory's got up there. <laughs> his pile of counters. Uh, uh, he, he has looks... got, uh, he's got touch the heart from Cosmo, perception of strength, ice and fire, and unity in divergence, as well as healing waters and summer growth from. Uh, oh, unity could be useful here. Very much so. Yeah, um, mm. he caught me out with that the other day. I, I played this uh, as I said. As I said, I played his Roy's list um, the other day. Uh, <laughs> it was a, a practice game. We each used our. I used my master's open list, he used his master's list, and uh, yeah, he caught me out with that one. I totally, totally forgot that uh, convergence has gone down in cast value to an eight, sorry, to a to a nine. So you need an eight on the dice to get it off, and uh, he he just two diced it on me and, and, and got it off for my judicator block and took a nice chunk of them off. But uh, yeah, that's a really nice spell against against the elves for sure. Um, uh, Hypergee, you you were chiming in. Yeah, guys, sorry, I was just going to say that, um, I can't remember what I was going to say now. Um, <laughs> yeah, there was a, no, it was actually, um, there was a discussion um, early on as they were deploying or talking about the start of the game. They were actually discussing who who wanted second turn or who didn't want to go first. There was a bit of a discussion that neither of them wanted to go first. I think it was mainly Rory suggesting that. I don't know. Craig didn't necessarily agree with it, Ooh. but um, I'm that's not a sure mind game. Yeah, that's, that's a mind game, game every game. day. Of the week. Was that was so, that before they rolled for sides? That was before everything. That was one oh. of the first conversations of the night. Was yeah. both of them wanting to go second? So I'm not sure how much that. truth was in that. It. Absolutely. But, yeah, so, just absolutely. so you know, that well, that did occur. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I could I could buy each one of them not wanting to win the roll to pick sides. Mm. But, I, uh, I could see that line of thought with having the pyromage on board for uh, the Sylvan player, like 
not wanting to go first, not wanting to go within that bubble. But with everything else going on, I couldn't really see that line of thought. But if it was just the Pyromage, I actually understand that. Not wanting to go first. Concept. I mean, I, th I would have thought it's the objective, right? Um, hold the center is quite a bit easier to score when you're going second, but... Yeah. Yeah, I just don't... I, I don't see it. Um, but, I mean, look, uh, looking at amongst this... all that chat, he has dropped for... for well, he has he, Again, he's dropped. Yeah. I think this is a really interesting... Um, we can we can glean a lot about the setup from from the way the board is right now. So you can see that um, of of Craig scoring, he has three scoring units, and one of them is behind this hill on the far right mm. with the sea guard. So it's not really going to be in a position very early on to contest the center. Yeah. And Rory's ticket piece are going to move up, and essentially from turn two onwards, they're going to be trying to score. As are the dryads and possibly even the archers, depending on where other stuff goes. Sure. Um. So, I mean, this looks early on like Craig is, doesn't plan on playing for the objective for the first yeah. probably three turns. Um, to maybe nick it once he's got rid of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I imagine the Sea Guard are going to go in the ruins. That just makes logical sense. Um, and then these Lion Guard possibly out of line of sight of something. Um, I, I, I'm concerned that there's there's so few units in Craig's list because um, mm. his heavy character spend. I'm I I think I'm worried for Craig in the sense that realistically there's of of the threats in this list there are six the two phoenix the griffin lord and the uh the three bolt throwers because I'm not really counting the mage because you can't really target out the mage so there's like six threats that he's got to worry about and all of them go down to silver nail shooting yeah because his his high prince on griffin has got um demon's bane which means he only has a four up armor I believe it is yeah, it's against good. Yeah, it's, it magically gets extra armor, isn't it? Demon Spade. Yeah, so he's got Dragon Forged armor, uh, shield, and I think he gets one from the Griffin. I think, um, or maybe none. Yes. Uh, but so he's think, gonna have. I think it's one. Yeah, so he's gonna have a three up or four up against the the Silver Knife shooting, which is all obviously AP one. But the Pathfinder's going to AP three mm. quite easily. Um, which means he's looking for sixes to stay alive, right? And if it's short, yeah, if it's short range. Then you know he's winning on fives uh, rather than sixes. Yeah. Um, so that's this is all really dangerous stuff. And these and the the fire phoenix as well. Um, if the fire phoenix takes any hits at short range, you know, it will take have wounds plinked off it really quickly. Um, the the problem with the pathfinders though is is pyro is just such a rough beat for them. Like even just the the Laura tribute is just mm, such a rough yeah. beat when you need them to answer the phoenix, answer the griffins, pressure the bolt thrower. Like, it's it's a lot to ask for 20, 20 bros in their pajamas. Sure. Uh, while yeah, while yeah, I agree, those, I think the main... need to go bananas today, don't they? I think, I think the main advantage that the Pathfinders are going to have is, is that the fact that they're 30 inch range. Um, yeah. Obviously, they're scout as well, so they can pick where they go on the board. So if... So you can sit behind and shoot stuff, and then should the Pyromage move forward to try and Pyro you, it's probably going to be exposing itself to some kind of counter-charge threat. Yeah, it, it, it's just wounding the Griffin on sixes when they're at far range is a lot less appealing than wounding them on fives. Yeah. So well, it, it, it's Craig's Griffin to lose, in my mind. Sure. I mean, I think it's going to be if if Craig wants to use it in this game, he's going to be risking it. Is he going to? I mean, looking at this, he hasn't put him down just yet. Is he going to put him and the Fire Phoenix over on the left? Go for the dragon. Didn't look like he was measuring for that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I, I think the the Griffin's going to nestle in by the frost. Yeah. Just left a nice tidy gap. <laughs> I don't think he'll put him on the left because that would be opening him up to shots from those archers for free and probably possibly pathfinders for free for no for no real right sure so if he puts him there the right. scouts just go there right yeah hmm. yes um uh, we'll we'll again go back to the chat uh, which because we have Hugh Scarlin another Masters player and uh, Tom Udin and I get that wrong I don't think it's Udin I think it's Yudin um, but yeah. and I'm so I'm definitely the right person to be uh, reading names but we'll go that, with Yudin um, are you 
Are you memeing on him right now? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're so good at sarcasm, I literally couldn't tell. <laughs> um, but he says that we are very like uh, cricket commentary, which uh, about I'm very flattered because that is probably uh, the yeah, best. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really lovely, that, Richie. Um, <laughs> had a lovely cake sent in by Mrs. Jane Mitchell from Chelmsford. <laughs> Um, broad from the uh, broad from the pavilion end. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so I'll, that's what, I'll take that. Um, if if we get nothing else from this game, it's that we, you know we can rival the cricket people. That and golf, right? Because that's quite boring to watch otherwise. Um, uh, we've got. Uh, <clears throat> go on. I say it's funny you say that because uh, a couple of <laughs> months ago now, um, sort of in between lockdowns, I went to go visit uh, one of my grandparents. You know, keep a company and the. Uh, in lockdown times because you know i'm a good grandson like that oh. um and uh i was showing her some pictures from etc um and i showed her a picture of matt and she was like oh she was asking like who everyone was in the pictures and when i got to a picture of matt she's like well, who's that and i was like oh that's 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 my friend matt um uh you know she's he was uh i think he was like in the army and then he's now you know a geography teacher and now he's playing for scotland and she's like i've never seen a man who looks simultaneously like an army officer and the geography teacher, <laughs> <laughs> like, like the most stereotypical of both. Yeah. <laughs> my, to be yeah. fair, my nana's a lot of sass. So um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's the part I was born to play, baby. <laughs> really was. I think you also fit cricket commentator really well as well. So <laughs> yeah. thanks, mate. And um, thank you to uh, thanks to Jack Scran as well. What a lovely yeah. thing to say. <laughs> she, I think she meant it with love. So. <laughs> um, some some people she had a little bit more love for than others. <clears throat> well, oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I, the word is on the grapevine, though he's lost his abs. So, as it, you know, is he all that right? Uh, gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> um, I, I am. I'm being told, um, not quite in capital letters, that it is Uden, Uden, Uden. Yeah, Uden, Uden. Yeah. I mean, it, not Odin. If you, if you want. If you want, I can pronounce the names in the chat, and then I'll get them all wrong. Oh, that'd I'll be great. Oh, yeah, and as well, um, apparently septic. Um, I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll give you. The, septic is um, Cockney rhyming slang. Does anybody know what it's for? Septic tank. Oh yes, septic <laughs> it's Johnny Crash. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Right. So, septic so tank. Johnny, you Yank. were the you were the yeah. septic one of us. Um, <laughs> I'm that sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we've got uh, uh, <laughs> Chris Taylor in the chat, uh, Gulemo, again, uh, I've said that wrong, I'm sure. Uh, and, oh, Herman F. That's a Spears boy, isn't it? The guy that plays with Spears. 300 Spears, right? I wouldn't know, mate. Oh, I don't know. I might be. If you have played with 300 Spears, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> if not, don't worry about it and we'll move on. Um, right. <laughs> uh, so, um, we have pretty much, he's pretty much gone next to the Frost Phoenix and cornered, would we say? Yeah, circled the wagons. Mm. Um, what do we think, uh, are we are we happy with this sort of setup? Yeah. I, I, th I think what he's doing here is I think he's offering him, he's basically saying, go on then, run, run the cannons, go on, you know, run, run, your drag run your dragon at my bolt throwers. You can pick them all up in this game, probably sort of, you know, relatively. But you know, you got to get through some bolts. Uh, but that's three points. And whilst you're doing that, you know, your biggest threat isn't over there. I, I yeah, it's quite a good, quite a good player. I think that's from Craig. I think, yeah. I mean, this is kind of what we expect, right? You put all these high value targets behind the behind the buildings, spread the the bolt throwers out so that Variesta sort of spread his his sort of fast threats out to catch them. But I think this is a really nice play from Rory. Um, he's putting the Pathfinders down. I would have quite liked them to go where they were just a second ago uh, in front of the in front of the wall because he can move into the wall and then take the yeah. hard cover. Um, mm -hmm. So he can shoot off like one of the um, one of the bolt throwers, which he probably should do. Um, short range Pathfinder 5 probably should kill a, 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 re a Seagod Reaper in one go. Yeah, right. um, and then... Uh, yeah, he can he can move up a bit. Yeah, because it'd be res four with no armor, so he just went on fours. So. Four wounds, yeah, exactly. I think. Two, twos and fours with four yeah. wounds. Yeah, so he probably should probably should get it. Um, yeah, I would have liked him to have taken the wall. That would have been a really nice play because then Craig wouldn't have he wouldn't have anything to 
to prevent that. Really, he'd have to turn because he's got these line guards here. He'd have to turn a sea guard, fire them into there. Yeah. But then you know that's completely exposing a flank there um, for a free push from Rory. Um, I mean, the, the right hand side from Craig um, is pretty pretty smart. We got the uh, princes on Griffins there, which makes sense because it just prevents the the wild huntsman or wild huntswoman in this case um, from pushing up <laughs> aggressively and just. Uh, and just, and just taking that whole flank, so it's a good sort of guard maneuver. But yeah, I think Rory's Rory's left flank center here is really strong. And from the initial setup, I, I really like um, the way Rory's looking here. It looks mm. it's a really good start for him. Yeah, I agree with that. Alone. Yeah, and we're uh, we're sort of expecting him to have dropped for first. I know that wasn't confirmed, but we're, we're pretty much sure that he'll be going first, um, putting some pressure on the bolt throwers and. Getting high up, will he be? It'll be pushing for the centre, but will he? Will he be really pushing? Will he get really aggro? I think so. I think. Um, I think with the number of uh, what are they call again, line guard. That's it. Uh, the number mm. of line guard that Craig has. I see what he's doing. He's going to push up and try and threaten the um, the thicker beast here. Um, but the unfortunately, the line guard don't have multiple wounds against um, thicker beasts. So, yeah. while they're they infantry, can, right? Because they're infantry, yeah. So while they are good against them, there's only eleven of them, and you know it's what would be three fours and threes, I think it is. Mm. Um, yeah, well, and they, they, with the water well, threes for that, fours and twos. That's a pretty ballsy vanguard straight away, isn't it? So I uh, mean, yeah, I mean that he's doing that. We, that pretty much confirms he's going first, right? Because he's going to be putting them over this sort of area, right? He's going after. Yeah, it looks like he's going after the um, yeah. Sea God Reapers with that. Makes sense. The bolt thrower is a huge, huge threat for him. Mm. He's going to want to try and get them out of the way early. Yeah, makes right. sense. And if he um, can, if he can pressure these two first turn, the dragons. I mean, it's only got to do one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it looks like he may be doing a Vanguard plus move to get to to, to both these two units in range. Yeah, which makes sense. It's very little. He's got a chaff here, so that's understandable. Um, with both I, th I think he's, he's he's gonna spread it I think, and spread his shooting here and take out two bolt throws. I think that's a long shot, but if he gets them, oh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I've been proven right as well. Hermand F is the three hundred spears guy. Um, uh, right I, got, I can't remember what it what his name is on the forum. I've gone blank a bit. Um, it might be Herman, actually. Uh, Hermanard. Yeah, Hermanard. Hermanard. That's it. Um, but he, is, he, yeah. he 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 also says he's an avid crossdresser, um, which I imagine is while he's playing with the spears. Um, why not? Right. Uh, Sixty-three people as well. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining on. Um, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's just about to start. It's just about to get cracking and everything. Um, Jack, I have yes. a question for you. Um, would you like a new or old Jack Tix as the man who created the infamous series? Um, let's go for a new one. A new one. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, without further ado, we will go for Jack Tix, and this will be number four if you've been keeping up. Um, Jack Tix, uh, which are a fellow Jack Chapman from the Thunderbox Thundercox podcast, um, doing some tips and tricks for us and when we come back we'll get straight in and talk about the movement magic and everything that's been on enjoy Whew, I don't know how long this one is um, but <laughs> I, I know I know well, I've, I mean I, I do that with the fantasy wargaming the podcast literally every time I say it I think even if you listen to the competition closely I don't say it right in that <laughs> But yeah, no, very good. Sweet. Oh, I, I've actually got a drink as well, so I, I will pop out for two seconds. But yeah, no, let's 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 start this party. Um, vampire spawn, or in this case, I've got Ramphodons. Um, so any of these, any of these units are, are good for this strategy. So
welcome back to Jack's Tactics. In this episode I'm going to go over a quick little tip you can use for flying units, especially aggressive combat units, um, so like Kestrels or uh, Vampire Spawn or in this case I've got Ramphodons. Um, so any of these any of these units are, are good for this strategy. So these units tend to be quite fast combat threats and you want to make, you want to, going for long charges um, can often psych your opponent out, but um, just having the ability to threaten these long charges, you know, 21 inch, 20 range charges, um, can be quite beneficial. But what you don't want is to be making these charges and then uh, bumble forward, you know, six inches, and then your opponent gets an easy cow charge on you and you die. That's bad, we don't want that. So what you can do is place units in front, like so. Uh, I've got some braids here, you could use um, great bats or dire wolves or you know, any, any anything else uh, for generally you want a unit that's very thin. It's not this is not gonna go too far forward, so it's gonna be an easy charge and then overrun for your opponent. Um so stuff like forty zombies probably wouldn't be a good choice. Um but in in this case I've got uh skink braves. So what you can do is you can declare your charge. Let's say I've got a charge against um Sorry Warriors up here. And they are quite far away. Let's say uh, 19 away. So in this case, if I want to make this charge, we don't want this to go. Oh, I failed the charge. Three inches forward, or or worse, six inches forward, something like that. So it needs 12 for them. So your opponents can go for that 12. Yeah, in this case they don't make it, but they could easily brawl a 9 and be in. Um, so we don't want that. So in this case, what we can do is we can have these skink brains in front of them. Now, we can go over this charge. I fail the charge, so I sit there. Because I can't go within one inch of the skink braves, and, and if you fail a charge, you don't have sort of flying movement, essentially, is the, is the way to think of it. Um, but you, could, you, you can't just hop over this unit uh, essentially so it sort of prevents you from from moving anywhere on a failed charge while still giving you the chance at the long range charge uh, and as you can see this unit is is out of pretty much out of charge range of, of these guys or near enough uh, effectively and you can always flee if you have to because you're sorry agents and who cares but um yeah, so it's a little trick you can use for any any flying unit really uh, that you that you kind of want the charge with it's a little trick to uh fish for long range charges um 10 yeah that would have made me in and then that would have got me this charge that i need or you know whatever whatever value you need um the numbers aren't especially important but you can uh, you can sort of threaten long range charges fish for them without essentially any risk to yourself okay so until next time guys And we're back. Um, we are. Uh, thanks for that, Jack, for your tactics. Um, sorry about the uh, minor technical difficulties. Uh, if you could just hear me, well, lucky you. Um, so we're over to turn one, and we're going to jump straight in. Although uh, Hypergy has got an update for us, right? I do. Yes. Um, so I thought I'd uh, throw a couple of quotes from the players directly, just uh, as the deployment was going on. Uh, first of all, we've got the very own, our very own master who, quote, said, um, when placing the Fire Phoenix on his left side of his deployment, he said, I hope he keeps your dragon busy. And then about five seconds later, the Fire Phoenix was almost in the opposite corner. So that was a quote that really didn't actually happen <laughs> at all. Because the, within moments of saying it, he changed his mind that the Fire Phoenix was over the other side. Um, and then, of course, um, just before Rory began his first turn, he was known to quote, now I've got to come up with a plan. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Fantastic. Straight from the players. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, there's mind games all over the place, right? Okay, six it's, cards out. 
difficult to know whether they're mind games. There's not a lot of chat. <clears throat> Straight serious. Well, it's serious stuff, mate. Is the is the masters? Yeah. Uh, big card. Big card. Right. So, looking at Rory's first turn movement, I'm really surprised he's kind of moved in the way that he has. Um, sure. Because he's put one of these units of Heath Atlas over to the right and one to the left, but with his Vanguard and move, he could have had both of them all the way on the left, out of line of sight of the Lion Guard and able to shoot these Seaguard Reapers, and I'm really surprised he didn't go for that. Because, um, yeah, I mean, just I think these Seaguard Reapers, just having the ability to take them out sure. quite easily on the first turn would have been huge. I mean, this Heath Atlas unit isn't even looking at them. I, yeah. I mean, I'm well, not it, sure what it's looking it, it, at. It's shooting a Lion Guard. could be looking at these, right? This one. Um... To bring you up, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I was, um, I, I'm opening it. There, there's on one in the ruins because he's got three, isn't he, Craig? So I guess he could be looking at them, but surely he's going for the lions there. I guess what what he could potentially be doing is if he gets the lions early, that that just guarantees the the objective, right? I guess. Yeah. But just from the setup, he's pretty much already guaranteed the objective early anyway. Um, and because it can't be scored on the first turn, like I don't think he needs to prioritise it this heavily. I absolutely think the Seaguard Reapers are a bigger threat. Because this, I mean, this one at the bottom could just take a shot down the flank and kill most of this unit, or just short range shots. Yeah, I, and for sure. Shooting at the line, one. yeah, shooting, shooting at long range, short range at these Seaguard Reapers or Lion Guard, they, they've got the hard cover from the ruin because they're inside of it. So mm. it's just not going to be very effective shooting. I think it's yeah. a bit of a. Isn't he? Uh, isn't he shooting into the flank of them though? So that's going to give him. Uh, he's not going to pick up the. Um, I the think. Hard target from them. I think it's because ruins. It's any unit that's inside yeah. of them. I think. Yeah. It, so if it was a wall, ruins. that'd exactly be right. right? Yeah. Right, or Trent? a forest. Yeah. No, he, he still gets hard cover from those ruins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't really know what what Rory's doing here. I don't know why he didn't just put the heath hunters into the the other bolt thrower as well. Because I mean, he's got nothing to deal with that now. Hmm. He's going to have to take another turn for the Pathfinders to move over and, and shoot those. Yeah, and I guess as well, if it had just faced down, if he hadn't shot it, he could have charged it, right? Yeah, exactly. This is yeah. it. He's, he hasn't even got a charge for next turn because yeah. he can't go in the flank of the Lion Guard. Hmm. No, but if the Lion Guard push up, he can charge that ball thrower. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's true. Which I guess is, uh, again, keeping him away from the... the, the hold the centre, I guess. I guess why would you charge the unit in the ruin when you could charge the unit that's in the open, right? Because it keeps the Lion Guard more stationary. So if he's worried about the Lion Guard actually pushing, this keeps the Lion Guard semi nearby. Where yeah, the, the Lion Guard aren't going to push turn one. There's no need. Yeah. There's no need sure. for him to move about those ruins. Sure. I don't, and I don't think. But... I don't think he needs to be worried about them pushing it. It's not like they're going to turn to deal with the the Heath Hunters. Yeah. No, it, it, exactly. But I'm, I'm just thinking of a reasoning why. They're not facing the other ball thrower, and that's the yeah. only thing I'm coming up with. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to try. I think he's going to try and shoot these line guard, but they got a four up save anyway. Um, hmm. Maybe he's trying to keep them for chaff, but with the okay, two so ball he's, throwers he's alive, they won't last Unity, uh, unity on the big block. Uh, ooh, four dice cast. Decent cast. Got a six um, out of fifteen. This is an eight six. So he's got enough dice to dispel it if he if he wants to. Perfectly average, as all things should be with Cosmo. <laughs> so, yeah, um, would you be, I mean, get, seeing that, would you be throwing all your dice to, to stop it? Yeah, um, I think this is crucial. That, that you've got to stop this. that. You've yeah. got to stop that. Yeah. The thing about Cosmo is that Ice and Fire and Unity mm -hmm. and Divergence, on average, to strength three units, do the exact same number of wounds with a five up save. Um, Which is probably so. why he's got. I mean, he's got eight dice, so he's got four more to potentially do that as well, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah so so there he goes. He stopped that one, yeah. He's used five, interestingly. So mm. he's got one for if he wants to stop two two dice, I guess. Uh, he might. Go at it. It's potentially stopping a one dice thrown. Sure. I don't know if I like that. I think having one dice left over is not not super useful. It's it's quite risky to try and dispel it with five dice. I'd, I'd like to seem to throw the sixth at it, just to be sure. But oh, I can get you a number if you like, because you have the exact percentage of <laughs> dispelling that. I mean, Fun. yes. Yeah, I oh, so well, I mean, so we're saying this. He has gone for three dice on the spell. So uh, imagine that ice and fire, right? Uh, just yeah, so he's re-rolling our saves there, isn't he, with that? Oh, he's, he's rolled 11 on his 2d6 as well, so that is 
Uh, 11 wounds, yeah. That is brutal. That mm. is tidy. As I said, it's about as bad for each one. <laughs> I mean, especially roll, when you roll 11 on 2d6, right? Yeah, so um, getting a 15 on, on 5 dice is 77%. So. Okay, yeah. Well, I think here comes the critical phase, doesn't it? So, um... Mm. How many dice has he got left, or is that the lot? Uh, he's, he's got, got one, left. one left. I think it's one each, so it's a dice off for so an extra spell. He's going for throne, then, isn't he? Uh, yeah, most probably. Or, yeah, it's going to be thrown. He's not going to try and go for the six on healing waters, I would imagine. Um, just look at his other spells. He didn't take the number one spell from Cosmo, so it's probably got to be thrown, really. Would have been an interesting call, though, wouldn't it? Altered Sight with a Sylvan List. I do like Altered Sight, especially because of how much work the the shooting does mm. in, in the yeah. Sylvan Elf List. Um, I, I love it. I think it's such a good spell. Um, it is a really good spell. I've, I mean, I, I run um, Queen's Guard and Sea Guard as well, so either of them getting out of sight is just incredible. This is this is the thing with Cosmo, right? You, no matter how many spells you take on Cosmo, you always want another one. Yeah. <laughs> because while each spell is very situational, it, it makes it so... At every point in the game, pretty much, you've got something that is useful. So if yeah. you don't have it, when you need it, and you're yeah, like, so oh, you I wish I had that spell. I wish I picked that spell at the start of the game. So no, uh, no throne uh, got stopped, and it looks like the uh, pathfinders are going into that that left hand uh, uh, RBT, which isn't a real shock. We got some good uh, chat, mainly from Hugh actually talking about his game, uh, where it sounds like Hugh, uh, you'd lost. Um, wow! <laughs> Don't trigger uh, it. Yeah, no. Uh, he said oh, it was very gone. swingy though. Gone. Dice, Reaper's dice. Gone. He's got it. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, Hugh, tell us more. Dice are tell brutal. Us more. That is absolutely. Insane. Ooh, blimey! Hugh said. Uh, I hate those dice. Four, oh no, fourteen six he won. So I'm getting completely wrong. Um, he says eight thousand four hundred points dead by the end of it, which isn't bad for a, a nine thousand point <laughs> total, is it? A bloody game with no, Hugh no, v, v Jack, is it? Was it you playing Jack? Oh, well done, Hugh. Congrats. Uh, uh, that's, no, that's, was... It's two two punchy lists, though, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, you're right. So uh, back to this one. One of the Reapers, one of the threats are gone. So we reckon that's pretty average, though, right? For him to get rid of that. Yeah, he probably yeah, should, he should be killing those, yeah. He, he did it easy in the end, though. I mean, it's pretty, I mean with that, I, I guess we'll see what he does. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a not so good now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he hasn't it. Really. Um, that's problematic. So, yeah, I guess, I mean, pretty good. Take off a bolt and 11 Seagard. No, it wasn't 11, was it? It was 8. Yeah, it was 8. But he's got, um, uh, he's just failed with his, his big block to put anything onto the central uh, bolt thrower. I uh, He rolled dog shit for his um his wounding there having hit nine times yeah and yeah not a single five not a single five that that sea god reaper now gets a flank shot down the uh his cavalry yeah, yeah. so um although i mean uh, what so you're hitting on a three and then wounding on two and i don't know yeah. i'd still go for the i'd still go for the six shots with four strength four really mm. either or really yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's the uh prince is missed Prince is missed. Nice. I like this. I like this, mate. I think uh, maybe the part of the reason he went these heat thunders into the flank is that he thought that those fifteen archers were just going to be able to do the job on the Sigurd Reaper. Yeah. yeah. Between that and the Prince on the Dragon, he just thought that was going to be enough. I think that's quite optimistic. Yeah, uh, that's betting heavy to win heavy. Yeah. I think. Uh, oh yeah, see, he wants to take off the chaff here. Yeah. Again, I think. He's rolled pretty good, but um, yeah, I think it's fives or something to hit, or fours. So. Passes his panic, though, so that's. Yeah, I guess yeah. It, it, it always a chance, I guess. This left flank is, is looking pretty good for, for yeah. Rory right now, though, because he still has the. So he's got two bolt throwers yeah. and pyro magic. That dragon is still stood there. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, those once... pathfinders will move up on the bottom bolt thrower, kill that, 
hope you'd expect. And then I guess if the Heath Riders are still there, they'd just go for the one in the ruins. Yeah, this, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff he's got to deal with here on this left flank. I would imagine, yeah, the, the Phoenix can't even get out of Rick Gavin even getting get range to hit these Heath Hunters. Mm. So um, it's, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Bolt Thrower Fire went to them. But it's just looking very, like a very strong first turn for Rory. Yeah, it, it's starting to look like that that drop for first really, really is rewarding him. One thing to add, guys, from my side, listening to the players, um, there was a discussion during the magic phase at the start of Rory's magic phase whether he could do um, the um, touch the heart spell to do a focus attack on one of the highborn elf characters in the unit of um, of, of Seaguard, um, because the the unit was within twenty the, the wizard sorry was within twenty four inches of the Seaguard, but the character that he wanted to do the focus attack on was not within line of sight. Um, they weren't entirely sure whether that was allowed or not. Basically, the wizard could see the unit, but not didn't have line of sight to the actual model that he wanted to focus on. Um, they decided not to go ahead with that. I'm not sure. I didn't catch whether or not they decided the rule for that or whether Rory just decided not to do it. But uh, that was a discussion that happened at the start of Rory's magic phase. That's interesting. I guess if you're... Fo I mean, does anybody know? Because I'd be guessing at this point. I'm guessing. Yes. Let me pull it up real quick. I think uh, he made the right call in not doing that, though. Mm. Okay, so it looks like Craig's going to want to chaff these and then I guess put his griffin in yeah, some sort of position. Yeah, he's going to do the KOE rush on. Yeah. And start the start the griffin up that side they they played it correctly They're, oh good Be, because it's a because it's a missile it has to have line of sight to the model fair enough well there you go well done well done chaps they don't they can't hear and uh another thing as well is um the line guard unit uh would not get covered from those heath riders in the flank shooting wise um they would not no oh uh, that's no. interesting because i had a lot of people in the chat say they would <clears throat> Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're firing into the flank. Yeah, I didn't want yes. a big thing out of it, but I knew I was right. Yeah, so yeah, all all cover is based on frontage, even if even if it's a um, requirement that you're inside of it. For so cover. why why are they not? Because surely they're centre or the majority. Of yeah, the but unit, the, the, the yeah, the, so it's done on the it's done on the frontage into which you are facing. So there's three line guard whose whose front is in the uh, is in the uh, the ruins, but. They would be firing into the side of which not more than half the models are in cover, and therefore they wouldn't be picking that up. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so terrain only gives you cover if uh, if uh, the majority of your frontage that whatever you front rank. shoot, yeah, well, of your okay, whichever yeah, sure. side you're shooting in, yeah. Is, so um, because they're on this obscured. side, this is technically the front rank or the frontage. Yes. Uh, so because yes, that more than yeah. half of these three are not in the ruins, it doesn't give you that. Interesting. And a bit silly, but interesting. <laughs> rules are rules, right? Well, it makes sense, right? They're shooting at the three closest guys to them, which are not in the cover. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. It does say well, in the rule book that it's, it's covering terrain for units inside the ruins. So... Ye yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but, if you were stood behind the ruin and someone shot through it, it wouldn't give many cover. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. It's that first bit of covering terrain. Um. Oh, things have happened. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is a very aggressive push here on the. Well, it looks like a, a very aggressive push by Craig on the right here. Uh, he's obviously chaffing up the uh, uh, the hunts uh, the Heath hunters there with. Um, uh, what remains of his reaver block that obviously passed on a nine. I suspect he's got that little V there, hasn't he? The, the, we're out out of uh, arc from the dryads. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's going to pop. I think he's going to pop. Well, he's obviously going to put the frosty in there and possibly all of his flyers into that. that yeah, that, that trying to get his thing. I guess worst case scenario, he'll just try and put the the fire phoenix far enough away so that he won't risk it. 
Like make it a 16 and then <laughs> not going to charge that. Yeah, I think I think you alluded to this in the chat how how vulnerable uh, Rory's wizard was over there because as you can see now he's got almost nothing to deal with both of those phoenixes. Mm. So yeah, it's looking looking bad. And, and this is his wizard. So Craig's almost going straight for the magic, right? Yeah, and I mean that's a huge advantage if you get rid of the wizard turn yeah. two or three. Um, and, if, and in case anybody's wondering, this is just to measure his um, wild hunters. They're not extra reavers. <laughs> Mask. And they got there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think what Craig was trying to do there was he's trying to have the both the Frost Phoenix and the Fire Phoenix out of Arc of the Dryads. Yeah. While also making sure that um, there's no if over the right. well if the if the Sentinels move in the next um, wherever the Sentinels move that they're going to get charged like they can't get out of line of sight of the Fire Phoenix. Um, because I think the Frost Phoenix is, was going to go for the Dryads to try and sort of pin them down, and then the Fire Phoenix was going to be going for the Sentinels. Mm. Um, I think there's quite an interesting little little sort of technical rule here, because if the if the, the Huntsman came into the remaining Reavers, because they wouldn't be able to close because of where the Sentinels are, the Reavers would have to close to them, which would straighten that overrun into the, 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 the blind V that he's trying to put both his Flyers into. I think that's the issue. Mm. Uh, possibly. Oh, they could um, move up to there. So, well, we can't see it obviously, but maybe, maybe yeah. eclipse. Maybe. I think the huntsman, the huntsman can close there because there's only the two movers yeah. left in that there's, unit, isn't there? Yeah, it's not there's the only the back two, right? Yeah. Well, I it's guess frustrating, you... isn't it? I want to be yeah. able to move the the, the units around. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't think they'd appreciate that, man. <laughs> <laughs> This makes sense as a as a as a play from Craig though for him to sort of move aggressively on the right hand flank because his his left isn't looking so good. Yeah, I I think with the shooting starting to crumble away, starting to just grill the weaker side is correct. So how many how many uh, Seagull did he lose out of that unit from that one ice and fire? Was it nine? I thought it was eight, but it it might be nine unless he's I moved think it was character. Because was... he had a full. Uh, stack in the end, didn't he? At the back, yeah. I couldn't quite remember. He's he's lost nine. I think he lost one more to some shooting, maybe. Okay. Uh, he certainly lost eight to ice and fire. Yeah, I think uh, they were the so... only thing the uh, poison archers could shoot at. Okay, yeah. Sentinels, yeah. Just, uh, just while there's a tiny lull, uh, a couple of the other games that have gone on since then, if you were around last night and saw uh, my man, your man, and everyone's man, the driver of the K-Train, take on Tanker with his beast turns, Kev Stonebanks, uh, he was in big trouble, wasn't he, Jack, early doors? Oh, on a, I tell you what, like I have seen some bad... I've, well, I've seen Tanker dice before, but <laughs> yeah. that was... that He pulled out all the stops to try and dice Kev off that game. That was incredible. It had it all. It had double six charges. It had Kev failing three dice against... Sorry, five, five dice against three dispels. It, you know, it had... Uh, oh. Tank pay, passing five uh, five up ages saved from the Minnow Lord, doing two wounds in return, uh, <laughs> with an, uh, after being charged with his aspirants. Uh, and then running down the Minnow Lord on the turn that he got charged. Oh goodness! Uh, it was honest. It had absolutely everything. Every every yeah. tanker dice stereotype you can think of. It had it all. <laughs> uh, and then and then those those gods, the gods of the dice, they're so cool. They are mate. Because Kate, you, Kev, you can't keep a good man down. He he, he, he scrambled, didn't he? Scrambled late game. Yeah. Uh, uh, tanker failed a leadership nine rerollable uh, test with from his uh, main Death Star with the. Um, with Mrs. Mino in the rear, uh, and he lost that unit, um, and he was able to uh, yeah turn around a lot of points off the back of that. And uh, yeah, he, he broke them uh, when they, they nine rerollable failed it, and then um, he chased it with three units, one of which was Swift Stride. He rolled three ones. They they fled. They fled four inches. He rolled three ones with Swift Stride, then two ones with his uh, uh, BSB, <laughs> and then rolled five with his Soothsayer to chase them down. It was epic. Absolutely oh wow. Epic. Yeah. Um, so 10, 10 Kev, what a game! Uh, yeah, I know he was absolutely delighted. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm sure I, I just spoke, spoke late last just night. sitting in a bath tonight, right? Just with the candles on, a couple of beers, and just chilling <laughs> and just yeah. relaxing after that. The laptop open, watching the stream. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Along work, with the Kev. 69 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, other people? Oh, it's <laughs> uh, six, nice. 68. Uh, sorry, he's not as funny. Um, no, but yes. That was lucky 69. <laughs> yeah, that was him. As soon as, he, as soon as we reminded him, he, he left. Couldn't relive the memories. But yeah, so... um. I mean, has anybody got the other scores so far? Because we are we're about three yeah. quarters of the way through round one. The other uh, the other game was Ryan uh, uh, beat Mikey fourteen six in a rerun of the uh, final game from uh, Autumn Assault. Hmm. Um, I believe I didn't see this, Trent. I'm I'm thinking you watched it, but apparently it's a punch up in the middle, and uh, Ryan won it. Yeah, I mean, I watched it, but it was one of the four games I had on, and I wasn't paying very much attention to it. I was invested in the Kev game. So, yeah, I don't really know. What was your take on the Kev game? Does that boy know when he's beaten or what? He <laughs> will not have it. Yeah, no, definitely. He definitely managed to claw it back. I was very impressed with Kev. So, yeah. I mean, he had to avenge his Mino Lord, right? If, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. He can't let can't let his boy go down without a fight. Yeah, Kev's had a great year this this year. He's done really well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and he said, uh, especially, uh, give him a bit of credit for that, really. If his minor lord did go down to some dice, uh, that has been his main weapon for mm -hmm. most of the season. So to then claw it back with other things, it shows you. Yeah. It's not... I think I think Kev deployed that game really well, actually, because he, he split up his um, two Minotaur characters and um, from, from the Minotaur unit in deployment and like spread it across the board um, and had his Minotaurs as a separate unit. And I think that was a really good call because... Cool. Uh, there was no range damage against them, so uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that ended up playing playing out really well for him and, and helped him get back into that game when things didn't go so well. Oh no, great, fair play to him. Um, what was what, so we've had that was two. Uh, Ryan and uh, Mikey, the other one. Um, Hugh, obviously, on the chat, uh, got fourteen six against Mark Greensill, um, with lots of death um, and mm. bloodiness. Um, uh, then it's it it is Jack and Jeff tonight, uh, where we heard earlier that Jeff had some good charges in. So I don't know how that game's going, but it it seemed like it was turning the beast herd's way. Looks like Jeff's winning that quite heavily. He's killed almost everything that Jack has, and, and that is beasts versus warriors with Jack. Isn't yeah, it? correct. So, yeah. I don't know how Jeff does it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that was the the chariot heavy beastman last drop, right? Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeff is the most instinctually good ninth age player I think I've ever met. Um, I don't know how he does it. I really don't. It was um, a really interesting um, interview with him on uh, the Slan Rat. Um, especially, my, I, I, it's a few people have said it. My favourite bit was when Craig went, "Oh yeah, Beast says aren't very good," and uh, Jeff went, "Well, yes, they are." And Craig <laughs> swiftly moved on to another topic. Um, <laughs> For what it's worth, uh, I do agree. I do think Beast Heads are a strong army. I think they're underrated. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah. And, um, and, re and really, we've got two very, very different Beast Head lists. Um, again, with a Chariot Heavy, one with a Mino-centric. Uh, um, I mean, it'd be harsh to call it a Death Star with Kev's one, but um, his main threat is the Minos. Um, but, yeah, so... I mean, got a bit of and and over in America, I'm, I've been told it's all Longhorn blocks anyway. So it seems to be quite a good variety of lists coming out of them. Yeah, in in the US scene at least, we see a lot of the Minotaur Minotaur Star, but also just the the book seems really diverse. It's not flashy and new, but it's still it's still got some bite. Yeah, a few tricks with the ambush and the the woods and things like that as well. So yeah. It looks like we've gone into Craig's magic phase. Yeah, um, so one, yeah. one card's out, 6-4. Yeah, he's got two dice on a fireball at the Sentinels there, getting an 8. Uh, so, Roy just deciding whether he wants to try and stop that. Because obviously he's still got uh, mm. Salvo to come out on. Yeah. Uh, Salvo's got a lot of things that can go on. Yeah, he's let it go. Uh, oh, two hits oh, that do not is. wound. Oh. <laughs> but he's got two from the... Uh, Blaze, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, oof, that's brutal. Um, so it does look though that he's he's 
defending the ruin, so to speak, rather than pushing up um, with his line guard and sea guard. Yeah, there's a good there's a good exemplification of that rule we were talking about. The way that he's moved the uh, the line guards now, so everything's now shooting into the front arc, and there is yeah. slightly more than 50% of the models with the centre of the front of their bases in it. So he's going to be picking up hard cover. He could not be a millimetre further forward. Yes. Um, I, but I guess the same would apply if these Heath Hunters came to here, though, right? Yeah. They can, so yeah, then they, yeah. would still get, they would still get the... Or no, they would still not get cover. Um, but then that's relying on the Heath Hunters being alive. It's like, being there. <laughs> it's like Craig has just rolled uh, a ten for Cask. In fact, is he using the old? Are they using the old magic for this, Masters? Uh, no, it's current. I think. Yeah. Cascading fire has changed. Though. It's agility, isn't it? Something, um, something, what is the cascading? Cas yeah, cascading fire and salvo swapped, and cascading fire is it's kept the name, but it's changed the effect of the spell. Um. Yeah, you're right, and it's now uh, it's now essentially a debuff, isn't it? Yeah. Unless that's pyroclastic flow. Yeah, of course. So we'll, we'll, we'll ask uh, we'll ask Hypergy when he next comes on, or, or if Matty, if you could uh, ping him a question on that one. But yeah, I, I can oh. answer that now. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. It's, it's all good. Good man. Yeah. Um, I believe well, Craig has definitely said cascading fire actually uh, when casting that with the two double five. Um, and Rory's dispelled it with all his dice. So, I think of make of that what you will. I'll let you guys discuss that. Is that was that cascading fire? Did he say what unit it was on? Um, I believe on the um, on the Sentinels, and that's where it was moved to. Um, so, yeah, you guys can discuss the effects of that and the, the reasoning because I certainly didn't get it in the chat, mm. um, and I don't know myself. But um, okay. it, Craig has definitely said cascading fire. So, yeah. Let's just check the arcane compendium. Um, yeah, Cascading Fire is number five, and Scorching Salvo is now number two. So, I mean, yeah. So, um, is it? It could be that it's number two spell. It's a Cascading. So they could have. Just yeah, got that's the what I'm saying. Wrong. It could yeah. have been Salvo, and he's just said Cascading Fire because yeah. what's on there. Yeah, that, that's that's the only thing that makes sense because then that otherwise they would have both made the mistake, right? Yeah, because he yeah. he throw all his dice to stop it, and if it's he think if it's the debuff, then yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, That's if you're an elf, you're definitely aware of pyro, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> um, so, but yeah. Just just whilst whilst we're uh, doing this, it looks like the uh, it looks like that unit of heath hunters that had a big old target on their heads oh. have only gone and dodged it. Look at that, one wound. Classic bolt throwers. Did, also, he, did on, it look like he on the cascading fire front? Also, that pyro is only an adept, so he shouldn't be able to take number five. So it must be so. Salvo. It must yeah, be. It salvo, can't yeah. be actually be cascading yeah. fire. It might just be because okay. it's the number. I imagine the the um, token hasn't changed, so just the number two, right? Yeah, it looks. It sense. looks to me like uh, like Craig's fired both the bolt throwers and rolled absolute dog toffee. Uh, and then Rory's only gone and diced him up with his saves. So, uh, so yeah. it looks, oh, mind you, here we go. There's a, there's a bit more coming now. See, I think those, I think those uh, Heath Hunters can make a charge into that Seaguard Reaper now. Yeah, I, I mean, even if they don't, right? If they just dance around, they've they've taken the two bolt throwers away from the dragon in turn one. That's yeah, fair play. They're gonna take, they're gonna take fire from the Seaguard from the Seaguard here, I imagine. So. Yeah. Um, um, in addition, if he tries to shoot the, uh, if he just try to charge the Seaguard Reaper, he's going to get um, cover fired from the Seaguards as well. So yeah. No, oh, well, yeah, I'm not sure what um, I'm not sure what Craig's last spell there was, but I think he fail cast it, whatever it was, because uh, nothing appeared to happen. Mm. Um, yeah, because I mean, yeah. in, in total, he's done three wounds to the Heath Riders and th two to the Sentinels. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what that last spell was either, but um, quote from Craig, it's not really going to pan yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Sea Guard have blocked off two there. So yeah, I mean, uh, so far, with only a little bit of shooting left, if any, uh, bottom of the first, you've got to give Rory the upper hand, especially with the objective uh, I, being I, basically I, no void. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say this is going much better for Rory than I thought it would. Um 
What do you reckon, Johnny? I, I've, I've had Sylvans let me down in a position like this before, so I won't say anything, but may, maybe I'm wrong about Highborn, like the Bolt Throwers in this matchup. But yeah. Could also just be that Bolt Throwers will always let you down when you need them to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, looks like it's going into Rory's turn. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> officially bottom of the first. Um, piling on the uh, pressure on that left side. Those, those three dice for his past frenzy test for the uh, Wild Huntsman. My problem with what Craig's doing on the right hand side is that both of these units that you're trying to pin in are light troops. Hmm. So they can just move backwards. Um, do the the Reavers have a musician? Do we know? Uh, they do not. Like they do. I do not believe they do, no. Uh, they do not. Okay. Yeah, as you as you say, Hugh on the chat, it is brutal dice. And um, I don't know what Craig's done to piss UB off at this point. Um, but it's only turn one. And as Kev will tell you... Uh, it can all turn around, right? Hello! Hey. Look at that, seamless, right? <laughs> that was pretty seamless, I'm impressed. <laughs> um, clearly your ears were burning, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Stonebanks, because we've they been talking been. all about you. Oh, have you? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, ha- oh, we said his name three times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been uh, who was looking in a mirror? Own up. Um <laughs> But yeah, so Kev, uh, we were just talking about your game. Ended in a ten ten. A uh, pretty, pretty boring game, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Not much happened really. <laughs> it was, yeah, very standoffish. Which was actually my prediction. It was going to be standoffish, and it turned out to be nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> it was not a bloodbath. I've never had a game like it where it just swung, not between us so much. Yeah, just like one turn to the next. It was crazy. So uh, was it a case of being really quiet in the first three turns and going, oh, bloody hell, this is another Masters? <laughs> um, and then going, oh, oh okay, we're, we're back in it. Event yeah, think, the minor. Like, yeah, the first, first couple of turns were really, really quiet. It was quite cagey movement and stuff. And then once uh, Tanker committed, I had to start committing. And then it was just, uh, yeah, all right, bloodbath. Uh, it's all thanks to my Mino BSB. She won me the game. Oh, the BSB this time. Yeah, oh, the Mino Law was an incredible disappointment to me, getting killed I by t- aspirants. I watched that go down. That was unbelievable. <laughs> it was probably my own stupid fault. I shouldn't have done what I did. but Because you got three spells off that turn, right? Buffing yeah. Them. It was last spell was four dice for, to him versus six dice for me on uh, healing waters on the aspirants. And I failed to dispel it. Nice. With six dice. Tanker dice, sick. classic. Tanker. But what I should have done is I go, oh, we got it off. I probably won't charge him. But I'm like, ah, fuck it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then bounced the and got run right? down. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's yeah. pretty diabolical. Also, as a quick update, I did message Craig asking about the salvo thing. It's actually Pyroflow, which just oh, makes sense well, as to go. why he would take that spell <laughs> rather yeah. than anything else. Sure. Uh, um, he did the wrong token out. No, that's fair enough. That's good. That's good. Um... Okay, so did you enjoy it though, Kev? I did actually. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was a crazy game, and I was so despondent <clears throat> at some points. So I saw it. Nice so to... I, I popped into your chat a couple of times, and things are going like pretty evenly. And then he just made that like double six charge with the main unit on the into your bunker. Yeah. And I was just like, oh no! And it went <laughs> off and around. I was like, oh god! But then your counter charges just managed to come through for you. I was a bit worried when the minnow when the minnow BSB took three wounds on the challenge. I forgot he had flaming attacks, and that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> what a dickhead! Uh, yeah, that that was a bit scary. But then you met me, you pulled it off. So the scariest bit was when the uh, twelve aspirants charged my BSB on one wound, and uh, failed to do any wounds. So that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> twelve so, impacted. So Kev, did that get your KOE juices flowing again? Might might put them back on the table. Possibly. It's a really nice list, actually, and it's really scary. Like, there's so a couple many of things ranks. in KOE. Yeah, there's a couple of things in KOE that are really good, but then there's also a couple of things in KOE that you have to take that are just fucking shit. So, yeah. <laughs> it was nice to see like an all night list. There's only a couple of units of peasants yeah. and stuff. So, and it, it can you, be uh, done. What, how did you get rid of the Grail Knights, mate? Uh, Charged them in the flank with the uh, free chariots. <laughs> I'll yeah, do it. I did mean to ask you, Kevin, about what was going on with those those grails in that game because he turned them around and faced them towards the building, 
And I didn't know what he was doing with them. The wild horner came on ambushing from behind. Ah, right. So he okay. turned the grow knights around to face them, charged them. So I just fled with the wild horn because then my uh, chariots could see him in the flank. Gotcha. Cunning. So, yeah, like he shouldn't have bothered turning around, to be honest, because what are they going to do? You slap them about <laughs> when they strength three hits. They're not going to do anything. Oh, that's, a, that's what they're there for—to play mind games, if nothing else. That was a—that's a cunning plan, then. That's well done. <laughs> yeah, I thought that. so. Uh, yeah, they just came on through the throwing weapons at Yeoman and wiped him out. That's all I needed them to do. That's more than long horns doing arm lines. Or wild horns. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what more could you expect from a unit of wild horn? It was a great game. I really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Uh, how did uh, Tanker? Did Tanker say anything about his list before or after? Or I imagine um, not before. I think he, I don't know, I don't think he's overly sold on KOE. It wasn't what, what he wanted to take, obviously. Uh, he doesn't get to complain, he rolled it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he decided he was going to go with a random army, but I do. I think he did enjoy parts of it, and he played it very well. He just made one mistake where he didn't risk his damsel uh, um, to heal his BSB up. He was on two wounds. So, because my gargoyles were facing the damsel, she had to get out of dodge, which meant she was out of twelve-inch range of the BSB and couldn't heal him up, which then meant the BSB died and the unit just got murdered after that. So, uh, that's probably his only mistake. But I, th I still think he played it pretty well, <clears throat> much better than I did. <laughs> What's going on in this game then? Fill me in. Well, about to say. Uh, Rory dropped for first and uh, got a couple of early alpha strikes in, which was quite nice. Uh, I'd say he's botting the left flank, as you can see. Uh, Craig's given him the old refused flank and he's wheeling around. Haven't seen this since uh, the Battle of Marengo. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a bit of a dosy do at the moment, really, isn't it? Yeah, he's got... Um... We kind of think on the overall, obviously, Rory's absolutely dominated this flank um, and pretty much uh, he's going to get the objective. I, I'm not I'm not sure. Craig would have to really pull out the bag to get anything on the objective or would have to absolutely clean up this side. Um, he did put a bit of pressure on this right side, but it seems like, as Jack said, these are light troops, so can move around pretty much anywhere they want. Um, and are getting out of line of sight of the of the frosty um, and are leaving a long charge. And yeah, one thing to know, one thing to know on that lucky six is is that Rory's actually failed a um, march check on his um, huntsman, which has okay. only been able to move nine. But yeah, yeah. Like, just to add to that. Yeah, sure. So I mean, yeah, it, I mean the frosty. Uh, sorry, the flame phoenix looks like he's only nineteen. Uh, or needs it. So that was only a ten on that's the side. That's a ten, yeah. Um, and twenty from the wild huntsman, but I don't think he'll be going in there. Um, I it's, think it's also is... sorry. It's also a terror, which is not nothing for yes. A sure. BSB less mage um, bunker near the edge of are the Are wild huntsman fearless, or are they? Not? They are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so it would. So he'll be trying to terror these off. We're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be a massive terror check. Yeah. And then if he and if he passes it, he's still, you know, it's still gonna be it's gonna be uh fruity that 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 swift stride into the front of the mage bunker. Because yeah. if that that flame phoenix gets in it, I think it's I think tickets. Yeah, I mean it's either that or they go off from terror and uh I mean, yeah, that's both of those scenarios are good. So just if they fail the, the thing. Although if he I mean it wouldn't go in with this griffin on a 20 would he so uh double six three rollable is mm, if he didn't have a counter charge going in turn then he probably would take it but um, yeah see you mate those, <laughs> those dryads do have uh, magical attacks so he is a two up four up against them so yeah not the end of the world but i mean not in the flank though right with a champ as well yeah he'd go down on static um so that wouldn't be good <clears throat> um i'm being told it's discipline nine for this unit, um, no, it's a master. Yeah, it's a master. So a little bit better, uh, but yeah. So no, it's um it, all to play for. Uh, really hotting up over here. Uh, the they're just these two throwers are facing this one, this bolt uh, root bolt thrower. I think uh, Craig has the option to deny Rory the objective point this turn by moving up the line guard. But in doing so, he will take some DTs, but more importantly, he'll give himself up a flank against the uh, uh, against the dragon, yeah. which 
I know they're, they're line guard, but you, you don't want to give a flank up to that dragon. With no, that no, that's not... I mean, with the breath weapon as well, it's, yeah. it's just no... I mean, I, I wouldn't oh. give their front, <clears> if I'm honest. <laughs> um, I don't think that's four a great Four cards as well, four, four cards out, so lots of, uh, lots yeah. of bell tokens out there. It's a. Uh, I mean, to be fair, this this phoenix moving up, uh, these phoenixes, sorry, moving up with the griffin has given uh, has given Craig a lot of space for his uh, sea guard and line guard. They're not uh, going to be in danger of getting ice and fired or uh, unity and divergence to, again. Um, yeah. So it's just the phoenixes, quote unquote, that uh, have to worry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just the phoenixes um, that have yeah. to worry about uh, getting hit by all this magic this turn. Um, I mean, just, just for uh, just for for giggles. I know it's it's off topic and stuff, but there's a really very amusing uh, uh, on the main uh, UK Night Sage chat at the moment on the the new uh, elf models that GW have let out that look like the Gunga things, the Gungans. Oh, the kangaroos. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Only an elf would look at a kangaroo and be like, "Ah, oh, this is a missile cab, <laughs> not a combat cab." <laughs> No, get, no, get some height, can't you? Right. <laughs> Those creatures known for punching and kicking and being a very uh, not not a smooth ride, are they? So. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, firing a bow from a horse. Yeah, that's that's all right. But firing a bow from an animal that's like jumping up yeah. and down while it runs. Oh, that's that's massive. I like the idea that they brought in both. And were, uh, I like the horse, but the kangaroo. Now that's flashy. <laughs> Let's go, we're going to right, every, get everyone a kangaroo. Let's go. Uh, so Rory's tried for ice and fire. Rolled a thirteen. Uh, uh, Craig stopped it with all his Smashed dice. It, yeah. So he's got yeah, five so to that, naught now. No, sorry, uh, it's uh, three, three, to three, naught. three to naught. Touch the hearts going on the uh, frosty. Here we go. Um, ooh, is that ca is that cast? Yeah, I think it's only a seven oh, on the dice needed. Oh yeah, it's, it's Cosmo. They're all cast on like a two or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised he went for the Frost Phoenix there. To be fair, because uh, that one has a ward save and the Fire Phoenix doesn't. But uh, it's not. I, I think reason. it might be because his only real hope with the Frosty right now is to chip off wounds with the poison and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I, to be fair, I think the Fire Phoenix is a bigger threat to him right now because that's the one that can see the uh, the Wild Huntsman and the Archer Bunker, whereas the the Frost Phoenix can't see either of those, and it can only really go into the Dryad Agents, if, uh, so the Dryad unit, if anything, and it's just going to sit right. there for a while. Like, it's not... I thought the Frosty could see the Archer Bunker. So not quite. He's just moved yeah, out. Oh, yeah. He's just moved oh, out okay. because of the Light Troops sh uh, shenanigans. Oh, but yeah. Actually, All right, then yeah, I'm a bit more confused yeah. by that. But I mean, as Jack said, I mean, he the Frosty does quite like the Dryad unit. I mean, wounded being wounded on fives, but he's got a five up, five up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a moot point, right? Because he failed the save, so it all works out in the end. But <laughs> if he passed yeah. the save, but then it could have been bad. But fortunately, he d he did not for Rory. That is. Okay, so here comes some standard uh, silver shooting Shoot into in. the White Lions in the ruins. Hard target two. He'll be lucky to get anything out of this, but he hasn't got any other options. Yeah. Three sixes, I imagine, to hit. Uh, 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 yeah, so threes, fours, five, have, six, yeah. Does he have shots? He can shoot the uh, bolt throw, though. Yeah, I think, I think he's, after the last turn, he's quite convinced that they'll deal with that. Uh, it's just possibly. interesting firing them first without knowing for sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because mm. you do want the bot throw gone. That is for sure what you need. Uh, you can fire both bot throws, so yeah, I guess um, yeah, I guess it would make more sense to shoot the Pathfinders into the bottom one than the Dragon, and if both of them don't do it, then you can fire the other unit, because they don't have... Oh, they can all shoot that bot throw if they need to, but yeah. Well, I've got an update that um, Colin and Marcus are kicking off, so good luck to both of them. Um, and I'm glad Marcus found it home safe and uh, is able to crack on, uh, I'm sure, with a poor for poor cherries and berries like Jack Chapman just today. It looks like it had been determined that that line guard unit was not in cover. 
um because where he was hitting on okay. fours. yeah because he was hitting on fours there wasn't he so um he's killed a single line guard anyway uh, yeah but... i would have yeah i, mean, I would have rather seen those shots go onto the uh the old other bolt thrower to be fair but mm. it's what it is because between them and the uh heath riders there's a good chance but this is the out. yeah these are this uh pathfinders now yes yes who we're talking about he's done three wounds there with the pathfinders oh. so He's got the dragon to go so, into it. Yeah, so he's going to need these to actually do some wounds, right? Oh, he's got the Heath Riders as well, which does one. Yeah. See, this is going to get really tight. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, the Lord has failed it. See. <clears throat> Here we go. He's probably kicking himself now for that. Because those shots with the, with the archers are essentially wasted just shooting into... Yeah, he, I mean, he got one line guard, didn't he? And that does yeah. nothing. Yeah. yeah. The sequence in there is really important. Poor Rory, he's going to look back on this and be <laughs> yeah, badly judged. Him, yeah. He's gonna, yeah. Absolutely what, slating him. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, we, we, should actually, we should actually say that, you know, that, that thanks to the guys, that, and, and I guess particularly Rory as well, could, you know, for, for saying, yeah, you know, go and do the live commentary on us, because, I mean, this must be horrific. Can you imagine that? I mean, you got 100 geeks watching you <laughs> and criticising everything you do. Well, I'm uh, glad 100... you guys weren't watching my game yesterday. It's, it's, that's it's for sure. 100 Greek geeks and Trent's girlfriend. Let's not forget yes. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... it's... To be fair, it's uh, it's super easy for us to criticise when we're on this side of the screen and we're not playing oh, the game. And, we and don't if we're have honest, a thousand things the to reason, think about. Yeah, the reason we're on this side of the screen is because we are not at Masters. <laughs> Apart from Kev, who's just chilling. And Trent, actually. So. And me, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, well, you, well, your girlfriend. You, you, of course. You guys can <laughs> yeah, fuck <my> off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking arrogant. Aunt I was never, <laughs> never given a chance to qualify. So It's true. It's true. Septic. Don't roll me out. Is there a US Masters, Johnny? Are they doing it this uh, year? I honestly have no idea. I I definitely qualified for my region, but I'm not playing UB, so I don't carry the way. Oh, fair enough. Did yeah, the... I mean, there was an interesting question uh, before the stream that we were all chatting about um, f uh, from you, Johnny, was is, is there a, a different skill to UB... Uh, much different to tabletop, or is it is it fairly similar just on a screen? I I, I personally think it is. I think UB players um, like you, Trent, are a lot more technical, and I think that's a skill that some of the the people who play a lot of the more tabletop version don't have, but they make up for it in the the skill of being able to like read a table when you're two drinks deep or have a good poker face or be able to read and tell. So I think things get lost in translation there, but I, I do think they're different games, which might be a bit controversial to say, mm. but yeah. What, what do we think on that? Is it, is it that different? Is it very different? Is it? I think it's very different. I think yeah. uh, on a tabletop angles and stuff like that, distances aren't quite so obvious. Uh, so maybe I have, to have more of an eye in where in this is, you know, it's there. You can't deny it. So it is. You can not give away your poker face on UB, whereas in person you want to measure stuff, but not give away the game if you know what I mean. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, things like that make a hell okay. of a difference. Some I mean, get it. We we say with UB that it's all very precise and there is actual things, but there is a with when you do on tabletop, you sort of you can agree that they are out, so you know that they are out. Like you say, well, it's really tight, but what do we, what do we decide? You can decide that, right, as well. Yeah. So it's, without being, it's fact. I guess you, you would do avoid arguments, right, because it's either in the yeah. line or it's not, whereas when you're holding a, um, a laser pen over the tabletop and you're shaking, because whatever. Well, I've seen lots of shenanigans over the years with random moving dice and things like that. <laughs> But yeah, they're going anywhere near where the arrow is pointing. But on this, there's no arguing with it because it tells you exactly what the angle is. So sure. things like that are really nice. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, interesting. Oh, sorry. I'll Go say, going back to the game, um, they've completely ignored the top right corner. Um, it looks like it wasn't worth the risk of a ten and terror yeah. check, um, and they, they've gone straight for the dryads. And two frosties take out a unit of dryads in the go. Yeah. Do we think? 
You think, I mean, the, the the flame has got so many grinds and everything. It's actually really good for that. They've both got uh, the stomp six, uh, d six. Sorry, um, yeah. They are both, they are both winning on threes though, rather than twos. It's going to be sure. threes and threes for them. Um, and he's still got a five up ages, hasn't he? On the, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't. I I think it's highly unlikely he breaks dead fast this turn. But I don't think there's a counter charge available unless these yeah. thicker beasts just mm. absolutely blast through the prints. And if that happens, I think that's. That's probably. I mean, could, uh, great, just being but... silly, could they not wheel past it and just get some people in? I don't think so. I think is it, the is it looking fire right? is just enough in where sure. that won't work. That yeah, might be uh, the that, case. It, is it beyond ninety degrees as well? Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, because yeah, it might be that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, again, they have probably looked at it while we're talking uh, but, stuff. But yeah, I, uh, I really no, like yeah. using the prince as a roadblock here. He, yeah. he matches up pretty well with the, the thicker beast. Yeah. So. Especially with the vine, right? And the, the fact that yeah. he can pop his Nova Flare. And whenever. he's got the ward save versus yeah. them. Or I the mean, better armor save. Uh, they're not going to go through him, are they? Because even if they challenge out, they're not going to win on combat res. Um, well, and I think he can challenge out pretty yeah. pretty comfortably. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he would, wouldn't he, I guess. Interesting. Well, um, so if he does go into the Prince, that sets up Craig for a nice flank charge into them with the uh, the Sea Guard. Yeah. Yeah. But the the Thicker Beast also can't just give the Prince their flank, so they're kind of in an awkward place now. Yeah. And, the, I mean, the Prince will charge that as well, won't he, if, he, if he's given the chance? Yeah. yeah I could see that. Um, Especially with... Well, and he's he's going to have to be pretty careful, otherwise the, uh, the the prince is going to go over the top and into those arches as well, and then it's just going to be bits everywhere. Yeah. I am surprised that Craig didn't take the charge into the wizard bunker, though. I, I would have thought he would have gone for that. Yeah, it felt kind of like a freebie, but maybe maybe it's just not not yeah. worth not getting these drads. I guess if it is discipline nine, although chat saying eight. So I don't know with master. Yeah, I, w I was pretty sure it was an eight. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but I guess it feels like a check, but that's too much. Being you have to get a leadership and roll at least a ten. I guess that's just from him, his point of view. Maybe just didn't think it was worth the risk because if it goes wrong, it's uh, they can get out of dodge completely. <clears throat> yeah, druid is indeed an eight. Yeah, hundred percent druid. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, eight, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I guess what he is seemingly going for is he's going big for the the center now. Yeah. Um, although that will, I mean, he's he's gonna f flee the dragon, right? If he if the dragon comes in, because he's not gonna get out of line of sight. I think this turn he's just trying to prevent the um, he's trying to prevent the objective going straight to Rory and um, this. If the dragon does go for this charge, and bumbles forward, there's a good chance he can get charged by the prince on Griffin in, in return, hmm. which is not good news. Uh, looks like we've got a we've got somebody from our pitch side reporter, IPG there, buddy. Yeah, cheers for that, Matt. Um, yeah, basically um, just a couple of things from me, a little bit of a rewind. Um, at the start, or just before the magic phase, Rory's turn two magic phase, Rory was said to quote when Craig was uh, a little bit disappointed with turn one, Rory quoted, don't worry, mate, it's only turn one, despite the fact it was Rory's turn two. But <laughs> anyway, not worrying about that. Um, yeah, there was in the shooting phase for Rory, uh, it was established that the Lion Guard were not in cover from the ruins. Um, okay. Craig thought they were, and Rory said... I don't think they are. And credit to Craig, he immediately said, "Fine, I, th I thought I thought they were, but I've got it wrong. So they're not in cover." And they proceeded to continue with the line guard not in cover. Okay. Um, fortunately for Craig, and um, they did save three out of the four armor saves on those shots. Yeah. Um, so it didn't hurt Craig too badly. Did, um, was there uh, any reason why they weren't at his cover? Uh, it wasn't just wasn't really discussed. Uh, okay. Craig was very quick to say, "Fine, they're not in cover." So. Sure. I don't really know, but um, you know, one way, whatever way it was, um, Craig was absolutely fine with them not being in cover. Fair enough. That's how they proceeded really quickly. Yeah. Um, also, in terms of Craig's turn two, I know you mentioned that the Flame Phoenix um, potentially could have charged with a needing a ten on the long charge, um, yes. and went into the Dryads instead. He actually ended up rolling an eleven for that charge. So, 
if he had have chosen the long charge, if the dice had remained the same, he would have made it. Would have got Obviously, because it was yeah. a shorter charge into the dryads, it, you know, the Didn't dice matter, probably would have. Yeah. Exactly. But that's just uh, the Oof. way the dice goes. Uh, and just for info, before we get to the combat in the with the phoenixes, um, the frost phoenix is only touching two dryads, whereas the fire phoenix is touching three. Um, you can't really see it because of all the wings. Mm. Just so you know, in case that wants to be analyzed yeah no great thanks nice. very much thanks for that um yeah so uh again very interesting that he, he didn't go for that and uh uh yeah seemingly that yeah cover... yeah just going back to that just going back to that cover rules mate there's a there's a, a rules supplement that's been issued um it's, it's on the downloads and stuff you can have a look at it in which they clarify the the issue to do with um uh, cover and stuff looking at it very closely uh, uh, you know just 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 re-rolling it back the, 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 the standard bearer guy on the right-hand side, I would say he was marginally, and it is marginally like one pixel out, and therefore he only had two of the front rank in the ruins and therefore. Right. But Craig's a super guy, uh, and yeah. he would, would have said that straight away. He has, however, lost two, uh, two line guard running out of the ruins. Yeah, so, uh, DTs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, in, in the uh, vein of updates as well, we have... Hugh on on the chat saying that Jeff joins him and Ryan on fourteen, getting a fourteen six against Jack. Right. So uh, nothing too nothing too crazy so far then. No, I no. was getting higher than fourteen, yeah. which is surprising. I thought there'd be uh, some big scores this round. Um, but then equally, no one's getting <coughs> smashed as well, so that might be a, a thing. So no one, no one's. Okay, looks like over. um looks like we've got a, a binding scroll coming out here. Sharp eye, Matt. <laughs> Get bound. <laughs> yeah, just, what, I'll, I'll, do my, the bind. I'll do the classic Chris Kamara quote. I don't actually know. I, I did not. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is there Jeff? I was waiting for it. I knew it was, was going to happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Live stream one, fellas. There's 70, 75 people in the chat. Thank you very much for joining in. We really appreciate that. Is this uh, your most popular live stream? Oh, by by a long way, by a long way. Excellent. Um, so yeah. I know, I know a lot of the California scenes waking up and tuning in right now. Oh, well, there, there you go. To them. Just, so, just to it's credit you. to the quality content you put out, mate. Oh, absolutely. And uh, no, I, also I the stuff that, that you produce and not the stuff I do as well on your channel. Well, that's um, that's also pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, we try and we try and uh, reach your standards, Jack. But we will never get to it. We will never get there. You put out far too much com content to put out to get reach my quant quality. <laughs> um, but quality no, ever quantity, uh, Trent, sure. you will have to say thank you to your 74 girlfriends that have tuned in. <laughs> I let my one girlfriend hear that. <laughs> you had to get that in straight away, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I have no additional girlfriends. <laughs> on the record. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, great. Um how, how, so it looks like uh, Roy's just dropped Salvo. I uh, didn't fancy that. Uh, not a shock with SC, really. Uh, so uh, Craig's now got five unanswerable dice. This this could this could hurt. Oh yeah. I think that as uh, as I, I spoke to Craig before, and he said that two is pyroclastic flow. He got oh, the card sorry. out. Yeah. He got the card out for pyroclastic flow, uh, and then put got the two back out again. I think to troll me. Um, knowing <laughs> right. Craig, that sounds like something he would do. Um, okay. Always half yeah. my on on the uh, on the banter. Ah, uh, looks like he's gonna try and go for a Ravens wing. Ravens wing. The... Okay. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah. This is very interesting. I guess it's one of those that you just can't prioritize with all the other pyro spells in there, right? Yeah, I think um, I think realistically, uh, it it just prevents the dragon from going into the flank. Yeah, and him yeah. having to flee. I mean, looking at this as well, the dragon is uh, eighteen, nineteen, nineteen flank. into the sea guard. But yeah. also, if he goes into the flank, he goes straight into that sliver prince, right? So it's not great. He can easily go for the uh, other bolt thrower as well, and then have all the bolt throwers cleaned up this turn, and yeah. uh, easily have a. Yes. R ruins play a part there with the the dragon. Will it take much? Will it take? It's any like, it takes. It takes three. On, uh, on, I believe, ones. I don't think it's ones and twos, because I don't no, think it's cavalry it's or construct. Cal so. yeah. Well, also, Raven swinging out of the dragon's way kind of takes the dragon out of the central fight where it needs to be. 
I think if the, I think if the dragon does go for how far is this? Uh, let's see, seventeen. If the dragon does go for the reaper, um, which isn't obviously a guaranteed charge, then it does put him behind Craig's whole line basically, um, with very little options for Craig to deal with it. So, yeah, oh, great. Uh, we, we've got confirmation on the um, on the chat that over half of te- like. It literally was millimeters, but over half of the line guard were out. So we, I think we're we're all unanimous in that. We have people from uh, Australia as well. Thank you. Hello, um, Sheldon twenty three. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks Marcel for reiterating the the line guard cover thing. So okay, I have received more updates from Craig. Um, so due to Craig making a mistake on which spells he had. Um, he decided to let uh, Rory decide which of the two spells, because Rory thought he was using Pyro as well. Sorry, um, Pyroclastic. Uh, Rory thought he was using Salvo as well. Sure. Um, so okay. he based his dispels off of that. So um, yeah, he's uh, he's basically said to Rory, you know, you pick which of the spells I've got, and he's and Rory has said you can have Salvo. Okay. So um, because it was Salvo. So it is. So back back to that. It is Salvo. It is um, definitely Salvo. I have re- <laughs> We have finally <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Excellent. If, Ooh. Oh, this is nice. If only we had a man on the ground. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is interesting. This is quite a nice play. Although, I st- you know what, right? I know it's, it's line guard versus action. I still don't think that's enough numbers to really bother them that much. It's not. Especially as the dragon can go up and breath, breath weapon them if yeah, he needs to. Yeah, I, I see what he's doing. He's getting out of the charge, which is great. But Ooh, that's rough. That is rough. That is four Pathfinders going down there. Being hit on fours as they are in short range off yeah. that first bolt thrower there. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just so punishing for not yeah. carrying that one, isn't it? Yeah, Such a bolt. that that wasn't even the one that he didn't get. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Such as the low bolt thrower, sometimes they hit five times, sometimes they hit once on fours. Yeah, here comes the second one now. Where's this one going? Uh, yeah, surely he got a... Uh, he's going into, he's going into the chaff. Get rid. <sighs> Three hits? Yeah, done. See you later. It was a poor roll, though, so... They... <laughs> Uh, one, two, two, three, three, three. That's yeah. I mean, he wouldn't have got any pathfinders with no, that shot. So, no. so a good choice, I guess. Um, big sea guards, I guess. Quite sure what they're shooting at. Um, I think they were going for the bunker. Oh no, they were going for uh, the yeah. chaff over here. I was going to say because fifteen well. shots doesn't reach the bunker. So yeah, sure. Also shooting through cover. We don't want that. <laughs> Uh, so we're going into combat. Oh, we need to get plus one strength on the on the fire phoenix as well, which is quite tasty. It's going to be a big one. Oh, there is only one Heath Hunter left there that passed its panic test, so that's free to solo chaff. No. <laughs> which is just as good, if not better, right? Hmm. But I mean, I, I guess really they're not. He's not going to want to chaff anything at that point. He's a bit useless yeah, well, now. Yeah. Some nice shooting there coming out from the the sea guard into those onto archers. the archers. Bit of cover. Uh, long range move cover is sixes. So that's uh, six hits there on eighteen shots. Oof. That's pretty good. The power of you, BJs. <laughs> and three, three more. Oh, he has a quick to fire guy in there, I think. Um, possibly, maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, well, he's got all his characters in there, so he's he's yeah. gonna have the queen's companion in there. So yeah. five in total. So it's nine hits that only turned into three wounds. There's actually a bundle of rules going on there because there's volley fire, which is irrelevant because he's an elf and all sorts going on in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got an extra ranks and all sorts. So yeah. I'm slowly coming to realise as well that. Um, when it comes to shooting, nothing is better than quantity. It doesn't matter how yeah. good you hit. It's just quantity that seems to matter. Yeah. Just get the dice on the table. 
Yeah, because yeah, I've seen that playing with Dread Elves. Um, I'm sure Kev could attest that they're, they're auxiliary units that shoot 45 shots at yes. short range. Yeah. You can just turn around and yeah, delete it's, units. Is it, It's one, yeah, one at long remember. range, isn't it? Or three at short? Yeah, one at long range. Yeah. Um, so that obviously doesn't do a lot because the hit on fire is at long range, turn three. Doesn't do a lot. But then when you get something like um, Vampire Spawn <laughs> land behind you or uh, Wild Horns ambushing behind you, or I've even done it to Exalted Heralds, um, if you get the number six spell from Witchcraft on them, they just get deleted. Yeah. And no matter what it is. I've actually, I don't know their new name, but the the shades have been really impressing me with that kind of yeah. quantity of fire, uh, too. Oh. Black Cloaks. Black Cloaks. Black Cloaks, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's why skinks have always been <laughs> yeah. like, very nice, right? Um, moving back over to the chat, we've got uh, Ross R Rasmus. Oh, uh, and um, what is the UB pass for Collins game? They're all masters, although I that it does come with a warning. Don't all flood to that because I think once you get fifty in a UB chat, it breaks. Um, <laughs> um, oh, only fifty? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, well, we're on twenty-two over here, and uh, but yeah. So the, the live stream is both both far and away the best place to to go for that sort of thing um uh, so There's some uh, chat coming out from craig here in this combat with 19 models you need to kill 15 for no steadfast so this is going to be quite an interesting Ooh, uh, setup so watch there. watch those dice for sure um and smith f uh, which is quite a big big name Yay, smith f. Scout himself. yeah uh, in, in a world where live commentary of curling is established as a following I think Ninth Age games with live co commentary has been long overdue. Um, I, I can't. A bit of curling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, it, I, if there is curling, do switch over to that right now, because um, uh, I'm sure that that's that's the way forward. But thank you, we thank you very much, and he says kudos for all the coverage. So, uh, th thank you to all you guys for uh, watching it, as that's why we do it. Well, um, Rory is is uh, is is agesting the uh, like like a like a, a, a like a big boy on a big day. Ooh. Just made uh, three out of four. <laughs> a big boy on a big day. <laughs> <laughs> he saves his own material for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not working for free, you know. <laughs> you don't get the say, gold on this. <laughs> how many? How many have you had? <laughs> uh, five. <laughs> An average Tuesday. Mm. Yeah. Or Monday in Matt's eyes, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, if that was the um, ward saves, he's done, uh, Aegis saves, I've done it again. Um, three out of four is, is not great for getting that 15 marker. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna, these stomps may come in big. Just as a quick um, update as well, uh, Colin and Marcus's game is just starting. Colin uh, dropped for first turn. Uh, Ooh. And he is halfway through said first turn. He's doing his movement, and he's sort of beginning the the cone of cone of death that's on ancients. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, um, uh, while we're sort of, of death. waiting on the combat result here with the Dryads, which we think is going to end up in you know steadfast. Um, obviously, we were we were planning to cover that game, and um, it got postponed to a little bit later. What? Where do we think that game going? That's obviously Colin with his soaring ancients, and Marcus with his demon legions. I actually had a question. Did um, did Colin end up taking Pyro or Div for the matchup? Do we know? Uh, he has taken Pyro. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think it's got to be Colin myself. I think he'd be uh, my favourite choice. Uh, I mean, he's my pick for the tournament. I must admit, I, and I don't think that's like a out there pick, really. But um, I, I'm, I think he's got a really nice list. I quite like. Uh, I quite like its utility, actually. He knows how to use that list as well. Uh, <laughs> well, as we said, very early, he, list. he wrote the book, literally. Right? It, yeah. So, <laughs> you know what? I think uh, I think that Craig might be lucky to win this combat at the rate he's going. Yeah, he's uh, um, he, he's he's just made some major saves, some but more he's ages. in trouble there. He's killed four with his stomp, including his stomps. Oof. Both no stomps. He just yeah, that was those two D six got double three uh, wow. for his stomps. And he uh, and he did two wounds. Yeah. Dryers have done nothing. Wounds. The dryads have failed miserably. Or in uh, wounding. In in combat, yeah, they have I mean, yeah, he did, not touch the Phoenixes. He did three wounds and then um and then Craig passed all the ages uh, all the armors on five ups. 
uh, and they failed to wound the yeah, Frost so. Phoenix. So um, what we're looking like? That's four nil, five nil, uh, f- five two. Oh, they won't have a standard, will they? So just steadfast, right? Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, and for people that have missed it, he's shit. rolled a double ten. Uh, <laughs> on his re-rollable oh. nine, I imagine. Um, oh, this is that someone is else okay now. devastating. Brutal, brutal. Oh my god. Um, oh. not to not to ruin the moment, but he's actually I think I think he's passed his break test, and that was the reform. The oh really? Reform. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to destroy the so, excitement, there, guys. So he can't reform. Uh, that's still as bad, right? That's yeah. a great A commentary right there, that is. <laughs> oh, Look, Kev, you a... showed up an hour late, so you don't get yeah, to right. criticise. <laughs> oh, well, uh, well, thank, well, thank you, Hyper G, for clarifying, because we would have been stumped that nothing would have moved. But... I, mean, really? I am paying attention a little bit. No, good, good. So it's, it's all about emotion it. here and passion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was set up for some hand ringing, and you just kind of got that away from me. It's proven that Silver Elves are terrible. Yes, <laughs> um, those rats were off that ship, weren't they? <laughs> Everyone was like, "Oh, it's oh a rubbish." But, well, I mean, you, you can't you can't say that we're not in the moment, right? Um, yeah. But unfortunately, we were in the wrong moment. Um, and it was, uh, so they have passed, and but failed. They can't reform. What, what, where have they been reforming? Do we think? Uh, possibly to get more attacks in. Okay, six, go, go six, wider six, or move down slightly. Sure, I'm not quite sure. Um, there's a um, a branch right in there too, right? There yeah, is, there yeah. is. Yeah, Game so maybe maybe getting her to the other phoenix, or just moving what her over mean? one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh we've got some some. Uh, oh, it's just. Some drawing. I, I always like a drawing. Yeah. yeah so it looks like the. Uh, yeah. So the uh, the huntsman are going to take out the uh, the chaff there. I think that's a fairly obvious call. The really big call is a uh, dragon into the bolt. So the really big call is what's he going to do with the uh, with the thickets? Yeah, because as well, um, that is my point is gone mute anyway, because. Um, even if he could wheel past, he now can't get in because of that. I think originally the Flame Phoenix was over. Yeah. Um, so maybe that was in. He was wanting to move right first, so that the I don't know, um, or, or move uh, reform so that he could st- prevent the Flame Phoenix getting out. Um, well, uh, not charge or be charged with the thicket beast, though. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's a tough one. But I think. Uh... I mean, the the bonus for charging right is that. He will have to get rid of his Nova Flare there and then, so he'll get rid of he'll challenge with the champ, right? And then his bodyguard with the um, thicket shepherd. So he'll kill the uh, Griffin will kill the champ. There'll be bodyguard, and then they'll stick around. Um, and then the Griffin doesn't have his Nova Flare, right? To be to be able to pop for the rest of the game when he hasn't charged. So that would be the benefit of charging him. But Stop. if we go out, then we've got a potential. Um, counter charge with the sea guard, so it pretty mm. much spells the the death of the thicket beast if he charged. So it's, it's a lose lose, right? I think the main key of him uh, failing that reform was that he could have gone very wide and uh, scored the objective, and prevent Craig from drawing it at the end of his turn. Okay, yeah. You, yeah, so there's a few not, things. Do you not think that the prince and the griffin couldn't chip chip down the the champ without the nova flare? Like, I might have to um, run those numbers real quick. Let me have a look at the build. He would, I mean, it's still divine, isn't he? He just doesn't get the benefits of being strength high. The Griffin's strength five against res five. Um, the the actual guy on top would be strength four against res. I don't think with the aid. Uh, yes, yeah, four four strength four and four strength five, I believe. Yeah. With Griffin. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Everything's sitting on twos, though, right? Because the Griffin has lightning reflexes. The Griffin does mm-hmm. as well, yeah. Um, what's the defensive of the thicket piece? Four. So, yeah, it would be the... Yeah, um, yeah maybe. He's not doing it anyway. He's no. running for a charge range now. So, yeah, so he's just got his dragon... In. I mean, that's just the safe bet, isn't it? Um, 
keep yeah, I think that's the right alive. decision. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, these would get rid of it, but again, you, then you've got the dragon facing this bolt thrower off. <laughs> Which you might forgetting. still. I keep forgetting how much they've nerfed figure beasts. <laughs> I keep thinking that they were their old superhuman selves. No, no more weapon skill 5. Yeah, no more AP3. No more... <laughs> <laughs> God, I remember that. God, I remember the days of ETC when I was playing against. Oh, here, have have nine of these with two characters in them. <laughs> like, mm, oh, yeah. Fun times. <laughs> they just keep taking. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's for another day. Druidism as well. If I could just jump in for a minute there, guys. Uh, sorry to interrupt as always, but um, just wanted to add as a really good sign of um, trust um, from both players. Basically, whenever one of them's doing a movement phase, the other one goes and takes a break. So, uh, really good to see. Yeah. Well, fair play. Uh, pretty poor judgment call from Rory, I would say. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll also, just to add, uh, the Griffin is AP3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, what? Because uh, I'm because uh, I'm a total rules Nazi, by the way. Um. You see the uh, the archer block and the thicket beast block. Technically, that archer block and that thicket block cannot be that close together because it's a footprint, isn't it? Yeah. Sure. And the right hand archer is definitely overlapping on the footprint, but mm. you know. Should, should we tell him and say it's a twenty nil to Craig for that? Yeah, I was going to say disqualification. Yeah, sounds like that's. To me. I mean, this is the Masters, but, right? You know, but just right. just get it in before Craig comes back from his break, so he comes in and the game's just over. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Only player to have won a game twenty nil um, without being in his seat. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of playing games without being in your seat, have you guys ever heard of uh, sort of like an ETC story of um, the no player Skaven list? From eighth edition, or I think so. I have, yeah. No, oh, well, I haven't, answering? and I'm I'm sure some of the people from the, or some of the eighty people uh, from the chat, and certainly Trent's girlfriend, have not heard. Of <laughs> <laughs> if she has, questions must be answered. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, uh, well, I, uh, well, I, uh, there was a certain player who shall remain nameless um, who told me about this something that he did where basically they couldn't find an eighth player for their ETC team. So instead of uh, not playing, um, they submitted a vermin swarm list, which um, had an engineer as general and then just core filled up with slaves. And that was the list. They didn't have anything else. They just had core general because that was legal. Um, and then they put it on the table and they said, oh, well, our player hasn't showed up, so we forfeit. And it would lose every game, um, I think, 14-5, because there physically wasn't enough points in the enemy army to take to get anything more than that. Oh, wow. You can sit there. You have six rounds at it, and you still can't. <laughs> yeah, you, you kill all of it, and it's like, cool. You're up. You're up enough to get a fifteen-five, whatever it was, and that's it. So, oh. yeah, because so there wasn't it, any points to take. But... Would, would there have to be a ref to make sure the other guy weren't cheating? <laughs> like, I, I, don't under... I think. I think what they did in the end was they had um, someone's girlfriend or someone's um, uh, accompaniment from the night before. Uh, to sit in the chair <laughs> oh, and say, I'm not forfeiting, I'm playing the game. And then, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, I mean, if, if there was if there wasn't uh, an argument that the VS were OP, <laughs> yeah. you can literally not play it and still not lose 20-0. I mean, that's... See, if it was, if it was me... <laughs> <laughs> if it was me, I would have at least given the engineer a Doom Rocket or something, or a Brass Orb, just so you, that you, you can't can just risk have it. some random person throwing it out. It's like, some person that doesn't even know the rules of, of Warhammer from back in the day and just, yeah, just wins a game, so yeah. something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fantastic. I, do I think like the impressive it. thing from that story is that somebody managed to meet a girl on a night out and then convince her to play a game of Warhammer <laughs> yeah. the next day. I see. I see. You have not been to ETC. <laughs> Clearly not. Yeah. Well. This, I. You should never underestimate an ETC player's ability to pick up women <laughs> uh, by using toy soldiers as a talking point. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, curiosity is a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> also, not speaking English really very well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there's there's been. Uh, I remember the nights when I'm leaving the hotel from ETC and just see seeing various Spanish women just calling, 
begging for Marcus to come out of his hotel, <laughs> searching for him longingly. So what we're saying is that Ninth Age is kind of the universal language of love. Mm-hmm. Well, My girlfriend's not going to let me go to ETC now. So <laughs> thanks, guys. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's mainly the really like hot guys. That I mean, are, yeah, I'll, I'll be yeah, fine then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, like, and you to be fair, if... I, I pine, pine over Marcus. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, have you seen, have you seen to, some uh, of the Danes just, then? Just... <laughs> Just to throw a bucket of cold water, the uh, uh, flux card ones out. That'll, that'll stop Here everyone from getting excited. So. I mean, uh, so this is for Rory. So, I mean, is that terrible at this point? He's, he, he's probably going to get a spell off. He's going to get uh, one spell off. What spells do you want to want here? Um, Kill the lions? I, I reckon he's going to go for... Um... I think he's going to try and three dice the perception on the sea guard to get the dice out, and then sorry, three dice unity on the sea guard to get the dice out, and then do perception strength perception, yeah. on the dryads. Yeah. yeah, unity then perception definitely. Of course, he does have summer growth and healing waters as well, so he could try to go for like a one dice thrown, two dice on on that. Oh, he's going to try and hit the sea guard. Rory's defying our expectations once again. Yeah, absolutely. Um... So he's going with chaos. I think that's because then he's oh. likely to go. Oh, no. Triple two, which goes down to a triple one, right? It's back up to a triple two. Which goes back up to because it's four. So, okay, so um, that's 2d6 or d6 against the d6. unit? D6. Which actually is pretty bad. Yeah, D6 was... strength 3 on the unit, yeah. Yeah, this Pretty might be worth order. letting go from on Craig's part. Uh, ice and fire on that one for, to, for clarification. <laughs> uh, hello to Ollie, who's in the chat, and Spicy Barbecue, who agrees with us, although I think sarcastically, that of course, talking about toy soldiers turns on all the women. Yeah, I mean, Hermanog goes around dressed as a druid, cutting up deer half of people and talking <laughs> yeah. about toys. And, you know, he, and if which, that's he can't, not sexy... Yeah, I mean, he can't keep the women off of him. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen him carry enough <laughs> of them off with it over his shoulder to know. Man's got game. <laughs> Fair play. He, Fair play. he was very taken by the Scotland players in their, in their kilts. I think mm. he mistook them for uh, ladies. So. Did, did he end up taking you off? Over his shoulder, man. <laughs> I, I, ne- I, 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 I never divulge secrets about <laughs> what happens at ETC. <laughs> yeah. Unless it unless it involves vermin swarms being OP, it stays at yeah. ETC. <laughs> For sure. Or if it's a bucket of bugs. But that's... <laughs> um, I mean, this isn't a great run of dice. There's some oh. good ones there. Yeah. Um. That is miscast. That might have been. So, looking at it... Uh, uh, it was the seven hits from hmm. uh, Roy's Ice and Fire, which translated into um, five wounds from uh, Craig. He did a double one his panic, and it looks like Roy's just tried to one dice two different spells, I think, maybe? I think that's the miscast. No, that's the hits that's, the no, yeah, you're right. That is the miscast. One hit and... Oh, even better. Oh, so actually, all those ones were... Happy days for everyone involved. Yeah, they were all good, good stuff. Yeah, They're all good ones. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, Roy did not manage to get the uh, get the perception of strength off that he wanted. Because I think it was first... unlikely. So I think... yeah, I think that first one was to try and draw dice out, and it just uh, didn't go for him. Is it worth it to kill five uh, Sea Guard? Thinking about it, this main block may have MR, um, which may be yeah, it's MR four, which is probably why I didn't try and three dice yeah. perception on them. Um, but yeah, he was just trying to draw a dice, and it's only because it rolled a triple two that I think Craig let it go. But even then, I think he would have let it go regardless, because perception is just too important to let go. Um, so I think maybe he would have been better off just doing three combat buffs this round, rather than trying to get damage spells out. Sure. I'm not um, sure I'm a fan of, of the way Rory's moved his, uh, his Sentinel unit here either, because it kind of blocks a lot of the charge paths for the wild huntsman so they kill these chaff units yeah the um, huntsman can't really bail out the dryads at this point i mean yeah. they could face uh so that they move just past it and go in and still have pretty good line of sight sight um, i guess it's so small here though right 
the, the problem is, is you're only going to be able to see to the left and the right of the Sentinels. Yeah. And um, if if the Phoenixes break the Dryads, which isn't unlikely at all um, over two rounds of combat, um, then they're not going to be there. They don't have to be be there. They can just move to a place where they can't be charged. But if they are mm. still there in that position, um, having not broken the Dryads, then there's no counter charge. It's going to come out from the sure. yeah. from the Huntsman. So. No, yeah, fair enough. Um, I was just about to say, actually, uh, do we think Rory's done pretty well with the Huntsman in not getting them in line of fire up to this point? Well, he's uh, he's busy taking off Lion Guard at the moment, so um, oh, and yeah, that's I think a failed he's, panic as well. I think yeah. He's just failed his panic as well. Yeah. Uh, what did he fire at them? Uh, he started with uh, the... the Pathfinders of uh, the yeah. Uh, so I mean, the these are. A mute point now, apart He's... from possibly scoring if they don't get finished off, but they will be. That was, they? So... That was with the Pathfinders oh. and the. Yeah, so they, uh... they're going. They should they're be going, going away from damage caused, shouldn't they? Or is that just magic? Uh, panic test is from closest unit, technically, I thought. Uh, but e Even if yeah. it's directly caused by a unit. Um, just to let you know, guys, what's happened there is that uh, Rory's rolled both his shooting units, um, yeah, caused the panic right. test from the first shooting unit. But Craig didn't do his panic until both units had shot. Uh, okay. Right, okay. okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, because he should be running away from the Pathfinders if they did it, which would have taken him through the Thicket Beast and therefore would be DTing, uh, which is what I was thinking. Mm, sure. I'm not, actually, I'm not actually sure of that rule. That's what happens when you play uh, Vampire for, uh, for several years. You <laughs> and don't, don't ever learn the flee. shooting rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just don't <laughs> learn the shooting or panic rules. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Three, three editions clunking around in your head and then you play Undead for a while, you forget game rules real quick. <laughs> and, and when I played Verminsform, um, nothing ever lived to, long enough to take a panic test, so, you know, I, I never had to learn it then either. <laughs> also, I, I've never met a Verminsform player who knows the leadership rules. They just know their leadership rules. They're like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I get it from, but I have ten. Yeah. <laughs> That lone rat in the corner, ten, and you're yeah. like, well, yeah. I, I guess, I'm sure, probably. <laughs> um, uh, it looks like we're we're going back. back. Yeah, I before think the because panic. some of these would have been out line of sight, is what I think might have happened. Um, right. One. So he's gonna let, he's gonna he's gonna let the pathfinders fire again, isn't he? Uh, yeah, or, or they think... or well, give him the choice, I guess, because I think he this guy would be in. It looks like he's just touched him, so maybe it would just be that guy out, but it would have to obviously roll again. Um, and yeah, by the looks of it, it wasn't a great guys. roll um, <coughs> from Rory, so maybe maybe that's it. Yeah, because it would have been five instead of six, right? Mm. Um, so I think he's rolled again with the minus one person and yeah, rolled really exactly right. badly. Oh, good. Uh, that's one thing for tonight. Then. So, yeah, that's what needs to happen. Cool. Um, oh, that, that, that's Paul. Um, is it right there? Joining on UB. Paul Godbold. Mr. Godbold himself. Um, yeah. So, See what Craig is. Craig is bleeding a lot of points here. Yeah. Um, so I don't think Rory's lost pretty much anything, has he? Lost a chaff unit and half of another chaff unit. That's it? Yes, because this one's still here. Uh, and, I mean, probably won't be targeted by anything, I, I can't imagine. Unless he just turns these guys around. But... Craig's not actually lost anything yet, has he? Uh, uh, he's lost the two Reavers. Bolt two, bolt two bolt throwers. throwers yeah. Also, uh, those uh, those Lion Guard are panicking. Um, yeah. yeah. They, should, they should rally Leadership 10 rollable, but, I mean, they, they're... They're not long for this world. But, yeah, I mean, in that position where they are now, that is not... That, that's no <coughs> point. Yeah. That, is, that is not where you want to be stood. Oh, this is the combat going with the Dryads here. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they, the they are... The dryads. Again, he's only knocked down three, so even if he gets the two with stomps, they're still going to be steadfast, so... Look at him, 66, 1-6. Mm. Um, I guess the, the benefit of this, if they rallied right now, uh, in the next turn, sorry... Um, because Craig goes second, if he re uh, swift reformed them or pivoted them so that they were within six because they're just out, would they count as scoring 
for the objective? I think they're shaken and they're fully scoring. Is that it? Is that because they've fled, they can't then rally and... Oh, that was a nice roll to hit and wound. That's three oh, wounds. Oh, oh, one wound caused. One wound ages, because of the ages. ages saved him, yeah. That, ages was on saved the, him there. that was on the Frosty, so some big hits uh, on the Frosty, but... It's a stomp's coming, coming out. From, yeah. Two more Aegis saves. A bit of a fluff, fluff-tastic over there. How far away are these... Uh... Pillow fight, pillow fight. Yeah, Two, man. Three. You know what? I think these Huntsmen might be able to fit into that gap, you know. If he this... rolls here again... I don't think they can touch it, though, because the Phoenixes aren't on the edge of the, uh, the unit. Yeah, I think they can yeah. go forward, wheel, and then contact. Yeah, so I guess yeah. the idea was that they go to there with this, this point, um, and then they would wheel over... And it, oh, that looks tight, though. It's going to be, yeah, it would that be very tight. tight. Yeah. But, uh, oh, this is still he, hard. Could, he could combo charge him. He could. Stick Huntsman in he and could. Uh, the he'd edge. have to. Yeah. I guess he'd have to maximise, and the Wild Huntsman would maximise better than the these yeah. guys as well. So. On the edge with the Sentinels. Um, I although they would wizard in combat. They wouldn't both uh, fit, though, would they? No, they, they wouldn't both they fit. So both fit. if they declared the charge, would he be able to move these guys forward, or would that help him? I don't think that would even help him, would it? No, no, because if he did that, he would have to pivot the Sentinels towards the Phoenix on the failed charge, and then just block. Yeah. It. He would he would block the Wild Huntsman yeah, anyway. Yeah. So he'd have I to don't refund think. the Dryads. Oh, he is going into the. Looks like he is sending the Thicker Beast into the Prince on Griffin. That looks. It would be the other way round, wouldn't it? Because it's yeah, be Craig's turn. turn. Yeah. Oh, it's is Craig's turn. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and I would imagine Craig will then. Push these guys right up. Uh, the Sea Guard unit. What does that leave the dragon on to charge them then? In the um, it'll looking like an eighteen-ish. Mm, uh, right, and if he goes straight forward, it'll be six. Maybe up here. Uh, I mean, he could like wheel and go ten this way, right? I reckon it'd be like a fifteen, sixteen sort of really? range. So, yeah, but he doesn't close. even have to. He can just put the dragon behind the. The unit, breath weapon it, and fire with both the pathfinders and the archers into them, sure. and it kill most of that unit. Yeah, that this is if the prince on dragon doesn't charge the lion guard. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. the dryads holding was really big for Rory. That uh, was really big, like because if these guys are free at this point, it's game over, really. Surely, that's yeah. what I'm saying. If, if if they break now, then and they, you know, they may go off the board. They needed a nine, probably mm. ten, maybe even to go off the board. And then at that point, yeah, those those phoenixes are getting judged, uh, yeah. especially the ice phoenix because it can't uh, can't flee. So, yeah, uh, Prince like, the Griffins in. Yeah. So was that kind of like a bit of a? I mean, I, I'm not sure he had much choice about it, but like a, quite a high risk play from Rory to have these guys there. I, I, again, I'm not sure how much choice he had, but well, the the dryads there. Yeah, because I mean, all he needed really was to hold them, and almost Rory now wants them to die, right? So that the wild huntsmen have a charge on these guys. Mm. Uh, that's, that's like Craig passing his cold-blooded rally there. He's trying to see if he can get in range of objective, but looks. I, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, they're they're in there, but yeah, would that actually, because they were shaken, will they? I think if you rally, you're fine. Um, I yeah, check I, it, though. I think I'm looking at the shaken rules now. It doesn't say that they don't lose, that they lose scoring. So I, I assume they still score. Oh, is it, it? I guess it's only while they are shaken, they lose. Yeah, scoring. while they're fleeing, they obviously lose scoring. But yeah. while they're shaken, I don't think they lose scoring. Okay. So yeah, you know that fleeing loses scoring for as long as it, as it is fleeing. So yeah. So yeah. regardless of what happens here, he'll be it likely be two. Yeah, two Craig one, should be getting this objective this turn. Um, uh, it'll be a draw. Oh, right, won't it? Oh, yeah, it depends on what he does. Here. Yeah, it depends what he does here. Um, but if he does push them forward, he'll win this one, which will draw up the, the objective because this is his end of turn three. Yeah. So, actually, I mean, I, I'm not giving him much hope to win the objective, but it seems much more in his favour now. Unless he, I mean, he's just wanting the dragon. <laughs> he's thinking. Yeah. So I, th I think the one thing about pushing up the sea guard here is it gives the dragon a pretty decent overrun into them if mm -hmm. you just push them straight, straight towards the OBJ. But yeah, if you do this, yeah. This so I mean, this better. is 
looking like a 15, 16. That's a 17. What? It's got to be fly. Uh, it's fly seven. Fly seven. Okay, so if he gets to this point, that is 18, I think. Oh no! I, I <laughs> yeah, just mean o- an just overrun an from the lions. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I imagine he'd flee though, right? Yeah. I can't see him holding. But although there's not, doesn't look like an obvious overrun at this point, even if he went there. Not sure that's straight in. So that that's actually fantastic positioning from the master. Because even at that point, it's a nine overrun at least if he can get in. Yeah, it's a nine overrun, and I, okay, am I balling it? But I don't think even if he clips the yeah. corner, I don't think he makes contact with the front of the sea guard. So I'd say yeah, that's it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. So that oh, I mean, yeah. that could be yeah, the, the lions spot. are like just barely at the wrong angle for yeah. that to work. I mean, uh, we're saying this as well. I'm not sure he really wants to go into this unit with the characters he's got. I'm not sure. Not, with, got... not, with, not with the Spear Lord the on spear that. Spear Lord, yeah. I mean, then the flank is a bit better because he put... Yeah, I mean, if you can take the Spear Lord on the flank, then you take away his bonuses for agility and, and AP, so yeah. it's not so bad because he's and just a guy who's strength 5, basically. They're coming in at I-10 with all the strength 7 attacks in the world. Yeah. Yeah, That's true. Like he probably he should kill him, shouldn't he? I don't know what it, it, it is. It Destiny's cool. He's got on the high prince. Uh, on the high prince, he has got no. He's got two plus armor. That's it. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, with all the AP you get from the paired weapons and and stuff, he's going to be on the fives at best. I think maybe sixes for some of the attacks. Um. I mean, with the stomp. That you'd expect the prince to go down, I guess. But I'm not. I just it's still, yeah, and a challenge. Yeah. You, yeah oh yeah, the, the prince definitely can't accept the challenge. It's more. Does he have enough bodyguards to? Yeah. Survive I mean, the, the dragon goes in. Does he? He accept. He issues a challenge, though, right? Because he doesn't care about anything. One yeah, I, I think. I think either way, a challenge is issued in that hypothetical yeah. combat. It's just there. It's just doesn't staying. look like that combat's going to happen. But no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so. Uh, I mm. will say that um, Rory has the. I'm not quite. I can't, I'm never sure. Quite sure how the uh, war machine rules work. Can Rory get a charge into that? Uh, into that war machine and then overrun into the. So team? I I I had this with Ed um, uh, once. I think I don't think you can. You know when you go into something, you can't then. Uh, close the door because no matter what point you touch it you you touch it and you just so you only wheel once during a uh, during a charge and then you don't close the door so whatever point you touch the bolt thrower on that's the point you stop at oh, so I see. it's the, from this point really you're going right you, you're going to go this way um, there's not much maybe if you got to there so you could go. I mean, the way he's doing that now, you probably could get an overrun. But I'm not. Sh- yeah, it's it's very difficult. I, I, that's how I I well, Ed told me, and I presume Ed knows all the rules for everything. <laughs> but yeah, it's getting a bit juicy with the the movements and stuff. Um, almost. Uh, I think. Jack, and I'm sure you'd agree. Uh, time for another Jack Ticks. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Um, we'll we'll rev- revisit another one. So we've got a new one for uh, one of our other live streams. Um, so pick a number between one, two, and three, my friend. Um, three. Number three. Good choice. Um, uh, here we go, everybody, uh, for another uh, episode of Jack Ticks, uh, the worldwide internet phenomenon. Um Number
Hello and welcome back to Jack's Tactics. In this episode we're going over a sort of a generic uh, tactic that you can use. Um, I generally see this one used often with beast herds, but um, any army that uses a lot of single models like uh, war uh, Warriors of the Dark Gods will, uh, will be able to use this strategy to good effect. So essentially what this is all about is uh, making sure that when you have multiple single model units that you are directing most of the opponent's attacks on models that you want, uh, not the ones that your opponent wants, so to give up less combat res. So, in this case, I've got a Centaur Chieftain, we'll say he's got Agor's Hide, we've got a Beast Lord Chariot, we can have like a one up, a rollable armor sable, something like that. We've got a Raiding Chariot, which is quite defenseless, and we've got a Jabberwock, which again, toughness, toughness 5, got a couple of wounds, not that, not that tough, and we've got a Gortark, which is, of course, very little armor. Now, my opponent here is Wild Horns, but again, we could put this to any other opponent. You can think of Barrow Guard with Great Opens, for example, in which case you wouldn't want, um, or Halberds even, um, anything like Strength 5. Feral Locks again, they'll, they'll be good for this situation. So, what you can do is you have to make sure that your opponent, all of your opponent's models, or, or the most models possible of your opponent's unit, are in combat. You do not need to make sure that every one of your units is in contact with the most amount of models possible. So we can abuse this. So in this case, uh, we want to put, so you imagine all these units make their charges. So we want to put Beast Lord in like so. So he is now contacting four models. So now that the opponent's unit is, these four models are contacting something, they don't have to contact anything else if they don't want to. Uh, we can also imagine uh, this Centaur Chieftain can go in like this. And now these three models at the front are now touching something. Now, what we can do here is put this unit in here. And obviously the way you resolve this is you put the units on the outside in first and just sort of make that a lot easier to, to work out. Uh, something like that, or if you, if you, whichever one you wanted, you wanted something like that. Uh, maybe like this, something along these lines, along something along that, that, or you could just leave this you know, whichever way you want to do it. Um, but now all the enemy models are based. You can now get all of your attacks, because even though this is only corner to corner, this Gortag can get all of his attacks, full effectiveness, onto the Wild Horns here. But the Wild Horns can only have one file, or whatever, they may be for or anything else, can only get one file of their attacks on the Gortag. Yeah, this is a completely legal charge. And the opponent has to put almost all their attacks on units that are going to have one up re-rollables, toughness five, you know, re-rolling successful wounds, or you know toughness six, four plus regen, and they can't put their attacks on the easy to wound raiding chariot or low armored uh, Gortuck, and so they can't generate very much combat res. This is one of the main reasons why single target, single model units are so strong against um, units such as this, um, big wide combat units. So. How do you count this uh, as as the as the big big unit? Um, well, your inherent disadvantage is is the answer. Um, so there isn't a foolproof you can prevent anyone from from just doing this to you. Um, the inherent risk is of course for the opponent that um, not all units make it in, and so you don't uh, you you have to do something like say if these units didn't make it in. All of a sudden, these guys are in here and they're going to get walloped, which is what you don't want. Um, but what you can do is, if you are the player with the block, you can deploy deep, which uh, for stuff like Feral Orcs and a Barrel Guard, uh, Judicators, stuff like that, you would normally wouldn't do something like this. Maybe not Judicators, but um, you can do this, which gives you combat res. Um, you have three combat res and your Steadfast Rages. And it gives less opportunity for your opponent to spread stuff out. So, okay, sure, they can do this. That's fine, they'll do wounds. But you'll stay steadfast. Um, you probably can get less less models in here. Um, so if you had more chariots, there's less models he can get in to reduce your frontage. Um, and it also uh, gives you good combat rounds. So you're going to stay there longer and hopefully you can get your counter charges in. Um, which is really the key in this case because... Um, Beast, beast chariots, you know, monsters, uh, all these things, they kind of rely on breaking you quickly. So if you stick around for a long time on the grind, 
you're going to get carrot charge. When those carrot charge comes in, flank charges, even things like, you know, wild horn, uh, you know, just just pet up and wild horns coming in the flank, just 20 of them, or even zombies um, coming in the flank. They have, they generate so much combat res from coming in on a flank ranked units that um, they'll probably just break all of this, um, which is which is what you want. Um, but hopefully that should help you in some of your games uh, make the most of your single models or defend against them. Uh, so until next time. And there we go. Jack ticks number three, maximizing your charge. Thank you for that, Jack. Um, now, quite a lot's happened, actually, uh, while we've been away. Uh, Matty, do you want to summarize, summarize the um Yeah, so it's uh, Craig's Magic Space. Uh, five cards out, five and nine. Um, and, uh, and, and Craig's been, been, well, he's had a good Magic Face, to be honest. So he got off, uh, he got off Fireball, which uh, Rory let go with Blaze onto the... Uh, onto the uh, Pathfinders, and he's taken those guys down to two. Uh, I think they're now no longer the threat they once were. Uh, he's then tried to get out um, the hereditary favour of Miladies, which Rory has stopped, which I think is a very good call. Uh, and then he's go he, I th he's now thinking about Raven's Wing. I think that's that's what he's looking to do here uh, on the Sea Guard, uh, which he has finished doing. Uh, and now we're obviously into the shooting phase. Um, the um, sea guard that had turned around finished off the last of uh, the, uh, the the chaff piece that was in behind them, uh, and he is busy wailing on the uh, the archer block now as well. Double fail on Rory's um, on Rory's archers in the forest. Panic test. Right. Fortunate. Yes, that's problematic. That was a nasty bit of shooting, to be fair. Killed quite a lot with that, considering they're in a wood. Yeah. What did he roll then? I'm just looking. Oh, uh, yeah. So he's rolled 18 shots, uh, uh, and um, so it'd be long range, four fours. Crikey. Move. It should have been. Oh, it's long, long range and wood for fives. Got four hits. Yeah. Lord hit as well. Did right. three wounds, yeah. which, yeah. Uh, and then he had three from I think from the Queen's Guard guy who's strength four. Um, so he did six wounds in total. Right. So the um, Moonlight Arrows, uh, Queen's Companion guy, is what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's so those the, so the archers are off uh, like prom dress, and here comes the RBT into the remaining Pathfinders. Mm. It'll be. I mean, if we can get this, he'll be glad to get rid of them when they've done some done some work. Do you know you've got to admire Craig really here, haven't they? I mean, at the beginning, I thought all oh, Craig's in deep shit here, but he has just. Boss, this this second and third round. Yeah, I mean, after turn one, you, you can't help but feel that it was. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, they're gone. It was. Yeah, I mean, it the, was the going shooting and magic has way. been great. Yeah. Yeah. I think one important thing to note now as well is Craig's going to get the secondary. There's nothing Rory can really do to stop him. Yeah. Because he'll get it this turn, and then next turn, provided the dragon charges those lion guard, they'll flee and rally. And then that's 2-1 on the points. Mm. Um, I, I'm right in thinking that the Lion Guard could flee and the Sea Guard would get a volley fire, right? Cover volley. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, all the more shots. Um, not the Queen's Companion, it would be noted, but um, who has the better shots. But, you know, every little helps. And if he does that, I guess he'd, he'd be aiming to redirect into the Sea Guard uh, Reaper? Possibly, yeah. Everything else is quite a long... Difficult charge, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think how these combats go could uh, really yeah. be really big on how Rory decides to play these next few turns. Not obvious, but yeah. Is it dangerous terrain if he charges the Reaper? It is, yeah. Yeah. It'd be three on three dice on ones. Okay. Mm. That is his, not uh, what you want at all. Oh. Mm. Is in that, your is... challenge. Oh, that's that's, that's oh, three ones and a two to wound, I think. <laughs> uh, yes, because he would have been hitting on twos, right? Yeah, that's the rider. So the that's rider. Good, did, um, Hypergy, did uh, the rider pop his Nova Flare? 
Uh, I can't, couldn't tell you that. Sorry. Okay. Uh, he doesn't doesn't need to. He's he's charged. Charged. He's charged. Yeah. He's charged. Oh yeah, so, of course, of course. He's only done a wound. Oh, he yeah, passed two ages. <gasps> uh, d- oh no, this will be the Griffin, won't it? So yeah. So he's got a big chance here. If Rory, get, if Rory can get, get something going there, he's got a chance here. He needs to do at least one wound to win the combat. Who Who is he accepted with? He's hit three times. It'll be a champion, most likely. Three no, times. that was his age, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, who has... I would have thought that as well, because of the bodyguard and everything, but... Oh, if he can get something here... To it... It'll be his champ for three times. One wound. Three up, four up. He makes it. He's, oh no, it's, uh, it's magic. Uh, but he gets the. Yeah, he's cool. Ages. So it's one all. It's a push. Uh, yeah. It's a BSB uh, for and charge for each side. So yeah, it's a two to two, I think. Well, like Rory. No, Rory lost because he. Oh, because he done a wound. Rory Sorry, by one. Yeah, I forgot oh, the wound. Yeah, yeah. I, that was my my mistake. I forgot his wound. So. Because he did actually do one, didn't he? Can't tell. Did the griffin have a toe in the wood? Um, I'll zoom in. Didn't think he did. I don't mm, believe so. I can't tell. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, um, that didn't help putting the slide. No, but let's say uh, no. Uh, let's say no. Say no. Like VAR, that. Like... Yeah, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. I mean that could have gone worse for Rory. Right, it's just, it's yeah, the it, it looks it looks like a push, uh, and yeah. um, they're onto the dryads now. Yeah, I mean this one he'll he'll be wanting the dryads to flee, right? Yeah, yeah. ideally. Yeah, the best for him would be for them to flee, and then for them to be wiped out is also all right. But them to flee is. He's only taken one wound so far, though. Or knowing how this combat will go, the dryads will stick around again <laughs> yeah. because the phoenixes can't apparently do anything. Do anything, man. They have. I mean, this is their third round of combat? Fourth? Third, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we've counted a dryad rank around. Yeah. <laughs> Which is terrible, really, when you've got D6 stomps and all the grinds from the flame phoenix. 3D6 plus 8 attacks, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a grind. Yeah. So two, two more fails. Yeah, two fails that time. So, so he's got 2d6 stomps to kill three models to break steadfast. Um, no, he'll still have a complete rank, right? Uh, I mean, if he has four, then four left. You've got to kill three models. Yeah, so three more oh, to get rid of oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought there was still three on the back. It's tense. This is tense. You can feel the pressure. Uh, it's a decent roll. You can be hitting on fours, is it? Does uh, a wound. One I think wound that's the there. fire um, phoenix. Yeah, it's yes, a wound there. No. And nothing on the frosty. That's how you roll thunder sound. Woo. Yeah, that's, I mean, these that's how you roll four, was it? Yeah, there you go. That's, yeah. that's the most damage those dreads have taken. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, so if they do that turn one, it's a different story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. six, six dead there from really that. Really poor on his thunders on his stomps yeah, up until now. Deletes the unit, just, now. just leaves his man. Uh, it's got to be auto, right? Yeah, that'll be an auto break. Uh, double six doesn't even get him off the board, so... The thing is, if he chases, then... Uh, well, I mean, either way, he's kind of in a, kind of in a crappy position. Yeah, you'd want to chase uh, with one, wouldn't you, I guess? Um, yeah, I believe the Fire Phoenix can flee if it wants, uh, but I'm pretty sure the Frost Phoenix can't. Hmm. Yeah, it's one's... infernal, isn't it? Yeah, that one's yeah. infernal. Yeah. You, you chase at the bird, you're more willing to lose. And hopefully he doesn't just roll, like, really badly. And, yeah, like uh, two. <laughs> you get some overrun into, that would be quite bad, but... Of the two, I think you'd want to get the Frost Phoenix in combat. Yeah, so. So Rory's gone. 10 inches? No, that's his saves. Yeah, I think he's right. just. Yeah, yeah. Just working saves. it out what they need and stuff. He's just. Craig's just working out what's going on before anyone decides. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, while they're deciding, we'll go back to the chat. Jake's piping up with if the Griffin breaks here and Rory gets flank on Seaguard, he will laugh and then immediately goes, oh, <laughs> um, because nothing happened. Uh, and we've got Zeely, is what I'm going to say. X -E -E. That's, that's Adlake. Oh, right, there you go. Uh, saying all of it, all three of his Griffins fluffed in my game. Uh, bleeping useless. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, that was a... If you're doing that, oh no, role. that is that's the worst thing that could that you'd want. Ah, like so that. yeah, catching up. Um, so he overran he's, with he's, both. Yeah, he went with both, um, which is an uh, odd choice. Did he? No, he didn't try to restrain. Yeah, he's just, like I, I guess he just wanted him dead. Mm. But that's an odd choice for me because, as you say, there's not many combinations where you wouldn't get. A charge because of the frosty being that side as well. A charge. Yeah, so run. it's now a sixteen into the flank of the frosty, which can't flee because it's supernal. Yeah, uh, and that's gonna if he posts through it, he's into the. Uh, that's that's bad news. Yeah, that um, is a lot of points right there. Yeah, we've we've moved over uh, to another combat. Uh, no. it, oh, it's only no. shooting that. Yeah. Oh right, sure. Yeah, so this is the cover volley. From the charge straight on to Rory's turn. It? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the only wound that's got through. It looks like I think he did the. It looks like he did the Queen's Companion, which yeah, he's I'm not sure he should have. Yeah. But it didn't. It didn't matter because he'd saved. So no zero wounds through that. But you're just chipping away at How that. How close point, is that? So. Uh, Ooh. That's an eighteen. Uh. Uh, yes, just an eighteen. So you. He only needs. Oh no, he keeps moving. What's the um the range from the pathfinder? Path <laughs> Was that a double? I think that's, that's a, a, oh, a redirect. Redirect. The redirect. I was gonna say yeah. Sorry, no. not the pathfinders. A distance of the sentinels to where? Sorry, that's terror. The the sentinels being to able to the, poke him back. Oh right, yeah. Uh, it's eighteen. Eighteen uh, to the lions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just okay, out for so them. Can't, can't poke um. Back. So it looks like yeah, he went into. I, I imagine this and the terror was passed. I can't imagine he's gone straight into the... Did he, but we did he go into the spears? No, no he didn't. No, no. There God, go. he would have made it, though. I know, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that passed his terror. Uh, DT's rolled... Is it, no, it hasn't rolled yet. That was his charge. No, that was his DT. Oh, that was his charge. charge. Oh, I guess he was auto, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah... yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point in the chat, actually, is that maybe because Chris is Craig, he's forgot that he can't flee. With <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Craig is notoriously bad, so it would make sense that he'd forget a rule like that. No, no, I know. but Rory's, could be Rory's just reminding him. <laughs> there you go. Um, so he's, <laughs> he's moved it, so it's like, yeah, yeah. I'll just flee. Oh, flee oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, <laughs> I've made a horrible it's... mistake. <laughs> and, and I guess, I mean, we all know Craig's a very good player and he's done well, but this is what you get when you have the first time with an, an army, right? There's some yeah. things that might might happen that cost you points. And if you was this, hoping and this the game quote, is, the is two from players. Craig is oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is that a censored quote? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that is the full quote. I, oh, really? I kid you not, that is the full quote. Oops. Um, this is the thing. Both of these armies have got a glass jaw, but I think Rory's failed the yeah. charge. Uh, oh, oh, Rory! Oh, so no. yeah, to clarify, <laughs> the, oh, the charge, charge was a three plus. I mean, the movement nine. He needed a seven. Nine. The two, nine. Sixteen to get oh, that is, seven. Wow, that's a lit off. That is Lucky a huge Craig. let off. Um, th oh, when you're rolling three on Swift Stride, it's that's not a that day. That's <laughs> a uh, that's a that's a game breaker right there. Oh yeah. Because I mean, both of both of these armies have got glass jaws, but a wicked right hook. So um, or he's taking it like a chump. To be fair, he's taking it like a chump. Yeah, he, he would. You can uh, they can they, they'll slap each other around something fierce. Don't get me wrong. Um, because I, I don't think it's unlikely this line guard unit gets deleted this round. Um, it's perfectly possible. Um, that's that's the charge I start drinking on. <laughs> charge right there. 
it looks like Rory wants to focus on trying to kill these phoenixes, um, which is understandable. Um, personally, I think the Lion Guard are a slightly bigger issue because of the objective. Um, but I can understand why I'd want to get rid of the phoenixes, especially after that salt in the wound right there. Yeah. I mean, they're just going to now save their points for the rest of the game, aren't they? They're not they're not going to want to be not around. An opportunity like that to take out both phoenixes is not one that comes along very often. No. So. Oh. But those huntsmen hit pretty hard, don't they? Yeah. The question we yeah. just had in the chat is, does the banner of the calming work when the unit is fleeing? And are they just deciding? Um, I don't think so, personally. I do think. I think no, I the think unit it, just has to be on board. It's, yeah, it's something you have to activate, isn't it? It's, no, no, no. I, I think it's just as long as the unit's on board. Let me check. I've got the book here. Let's have a look. Banner of Becoming. Well, nope, you can just do it. It doesn't matter if they're fleeing or not. Yep. Oh, it's just yeah, got better. Just have to be on the table. Hey, that's, that's one of the auto includes for Eyeborns for me. And it makes the. Made even better. It makes the hereditary so much stronger, so... Yeah. Oh, great. I like that. Um, yeah, Tommy T's giving some mocking to Rory for rolling poorly. I'll, I'll let your imaginations run wild with what he's saying. Essentially just... Ha, in the goat sort of manner. <laughs> That we all know wondering. Tommy T is <laughs> renowned for. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I've had too much drink. Uh, so uh, it looked like... Uh, has anyone got the dice breakdown for this magic phase? Um, it's Flux 2. So mm -hmm. it's 5v4, 6v5? That would be a f 5, wouldn't it? So it would be a 5... Two. For yeah. Two. Yeah. So um, yeah, it might be. It'd probably be six v five. Likely. He's not at the magic phase, is as he, Rory? Uh, no, I'm I mean sure he's had the low ones. Point. I didn't. I did think he had a five nine, one. I, it's turn two, I think he did. But I mean, I could be. That could have been Craig. But yeah, for otherwise. He's a, so he's gone five dice. He's oh, he's pulling it, pulling it out. Uh, Rory's had a one, one, two, four, and six. Right there you go. So it was probably Craig that had a five, right? Yeah, that's what's that five dicing the uh, ice and fire chaos version there. And he gets it off. And he gets it off. Ooh. Come on, Rory. Cross my fingers so, for you, mate. Um, where is oh. this on? Is this on the... Oh, goodness. It's on the Fire Phoenix. Reroll, right. successful armor saves. He's done two wounds, which is translated into two unsaved two. wounds. But it's only two, and he's crucially still around. Two left, with a poison shooting unit left to go into him, so you would hope... Has it just got an Aegis save, no armor? It's got an armor save and no No, Aegis. just armor, uh, yeah. Right. right. So he'll have four ups to all these poisons. Well, here they come. If he's going to get anything going, it needs to be now. Really, I think. Uh, that was the wizard, I think. That's just shot. <laughs> Done a wound there. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's only one poison. Hit on twos, I think, though. Or not. Uh, three is... Saved? Oh! Yeah, saved. This, these birds, they're enchanted. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't care if he's good. Is he lucky? What's, it, what's the... Uh... What are the penalties that they take? Do they take moving or long range? Or? They don't uh, take moving. They do take range, but they're on threes naturally. Uh, so they were on threes and they rolled one, one, two, two, four, five. So no threes. threes. That so, would be yeah. why. Mm, so. Yes. Big brain time, Jack. Big boy, big brain. What was it, May? Yeah. I am, boy, I am both brain. of those. So <laughs> can confirm. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, what's this? Uh, end of. Well, top of the fifth? No, fourth. Um, yeah, top of the fourth. So we're only just over halfway. Um, what, do we think this is Craig's to lose now? 
I do. I, I don't I, know. I didn't until that charge has failed. And mm. now I, I do. I think the dragon is still quite a bit to play in this game. Um, and the fact that the the high, the prince on Griffin is kind of just sat there is a big deal. So it, they're working that combat out now, I think. Yeah, um, they're doing that now. So and if he is, sits there, which that um, seems pretty bad, I think he's only that was the Griffin, right? That's just the, yeah, the the character's not dead. The champ's not dead yet. He's still going. And it's a, no, yeah, the flare has not been used. Right. So he's he's waiting because he was waiting for. <laughs> So the champ sitting there with one <laughs> left. Oh, Rory! Double yeah. one's leadership. Yeah. Wait, the champ's still not dead. The champ seems to be alive. He seems to have done one wound in the first round and one wound in the second round of combat. Second. With the, I mean the, yeah, with all the improvements for the Griffin and himself on the charge, it's just insane. I mean, uh, are they are they rolling divine? The Thicket Beasts. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard Divine... Are they re I haven't heard Divine being mentioned. I've got a... F because I'm sure Nova Flare has Divine attacks. It does, yeah. It, it does, yeah. So it, it could... He's, it, he's not popped the Nova Flare. It, even if you don't pop it. Yeah, it, it always it, has it. It's always Divine. Um, so but could, the Griffin doesn't have it. So. No, true. And the, actually, the mount has been terrible at hitting and wounding. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure that Rory failed the ward save anyway on the, yeah, from the yeah. Riders' attacks. It's just the Griffin that he so on. it might not have come up. Yeah, actually, no, that's, that's correct. The first, yeah. the first combat, the Rider didn't do any wounds. Yeah. The second time, Rory failed his failed it anyway. So yeah. yeah. Um. So it's not even so that. It's just he's just poorly rolling on his um attacks with everything. So, which is just insane, yeah. isn't it? So, that's so is, pretty... uh, Rory's Rory's now really running out of options here, isn't he? If he doesn't do something very big with the dragon, uh, I think we're saying that this is uh, going to be a, a, a medium win, medium yeah. to big win. Greg. I've got I've got a feeling the dragon will only be doing breath weapons and shots now. I don't think he'll really. Um, he might go into the guys on the right. Um, I can't I can't see the dragon. Doing much? I don't think Craig will let him get into anything, will he? Yeah, I, th I think all the dragon's gonna have is a march and burn. Yeah, it's, he's got three, two turns left. So if he does want to get into combat with something, it's gonna be on the last turn because it's not gonna be now. Well, so Craig's just giving him an eighteen into the rear of the bunker. So I mean, that's Craig. I mean, we're, we're in Bob's cast territory now, aren't we? So it's, I mean, it's, uh, he could just move the dragon up. Give the flank to the lions, and burn the the sea guard all the lions, because um, even if the lions flank charge him, he does win that combat with the lord on top. So, per personally, with that dragon, I would be marching to burn the lions and then try and get a rear on that griffin. Yeah, um, that's also a good shout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see much point going after that big sea uh, block at this point for Rory. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna get It'd be points. Guys. If it, if he decides to just ignore the objective and go for points, I guess with magic he he might. But they got MR four right, so it's going to take yeah, one. Exactly. I, I don't know. I I, I mean he's got. You're what? just trying to get them on res. Yeah, you got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seventeen, eighteen to get through. I know they're still they're elves, but that's a lot of. Yeah, I mean, I, rec I, re I reckon the play here is going to be ignore that main Seagull block. Just weather their fire as best you can, yeah. And um, you've got to take the uh, try and take the lion guard and the and the prince on Griffin. Mm. Looks like he's flaming the um, the bunker. Not sure, if he, not sure if he needed to take a uh, march. Yeah, march test there, but um, he's about there eight inches. Probably mm, not. Possibly well, out. Possibly yeah, out. Yeah, I think he was out, but doesn't matter. That's that's why not getting the the five phoenix there is devastating. Yeah, because yeah. he's gonna do the do the sweep. Oh, was it is it D six or is uh, it's D six plus? Oh, he is in range for a march test. Uh, it's D six plus I think D three for each additional rank. Okay. So it would be D six plus D three there. 
Yeah, so that we could... can't do more hits than we have in a rank. Yeah, so sure. So I think it'd be up eight. to five. Yeah, up to up to as many as eight, which is. Yeah. Um, or would it? It would be more because of the uh, wizard in there, wouldn't it? So it'd be nine. We, you can get as high as five on the first d6 and as high as three on the second d6. Or second d3, sorry. Right, sure. Yeah, and he got three okay. there, so you yeah, one wound. So, yeah. After all that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. very little. Um, <laughs> giving, giving Craig random attacks appears to just result in the lowest number possible. Yeah. Because <laughs> here's, here's the, the, these uh, huntsmen do have a nine inch charge on the uh, Sea Guard, hypothetically, if he wanted it. Mm. In their front. I, I, I'm not saying it's a good idea, I'm just saying he yeah. has it. <laughs> I, I mean, the, I yeah. think the sliver guy kills him on his own, personally. Yeah. And if you got the dragon in as well. Um... Also into the spears themselves. Would, um, it, this is a question I, I'm not sure of the answer, which might be really easy uh, to solve. If you went in with both, do they lose the um, spear bonus for the front people, or is it just. Yes. They if do. You, uh, if you're charged in more than one flank, you don't get the. Uh, yeah, if you're charged so... in the flank or rear, you don't get the spear bonus. Okay, well, that's that means then. then they would be going first, apart from the characters, which would be decent. But I, I, I don't know. I still think the Sliver Prince is. Yeah, that's some that's an enormous gamble. Um, yeah, you're pretty much completely relying on getting Fort Region off. Yeah. Um, which is yeah not. Also, if either of them brick that charge. Yeah. The exactly. other one's yeah. done. Because the dragon. Well, the dragon, the... I think, would be fine. I don't think the dragon has too much fear going into that combat. No, uh, but the dragon fights the, the eight champion. Card, so it's got ten versus seven phase. Mm. Um, I got a thing in chat, and I don't, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what it's resulting or going towards. Um, it's Bognog, so it's Josh saying that he forgot re-roll ones in a wood. Where would that have come up? In uh, uh, the, the, the thicker beast thicker re-roll ones to re-roll wound. ones to win in, in the combat. woods. Okay, so there there might have been a few wounds that, the, <laughs> ironically, the the champion could have done to. Um, the thing over a couple of rounds. So yeah, possibly. Yeah. I think um, the champion's just counting his blessings right now. Yeah. Well, he just rolled a double six on a spell to get yeah. awaken the beast off on his griffin, which is pretty nice. Two d six roll. I mean, I he's, he's getting, I think he's anyway, getting frustrated so. and bored with his griffin. Not <laughs> right, do something. I've given you this now. Just do yeah, something. Rave. What's he raven swinging? Oh, this is interesting. Getting raven swing to try and get some points up here. No, he's fireballing. Fair enough. So that's been dispelled. 5-3. So you can, he's likely to get another spell off. He's going Raven's Wing on uh, on his Frosty to try and... Uh, sorry, fl flame, Flareon. Another double six. Oh. That's all you need. Uh, triple five, though. That'll do it. Will certainly do it. That's... I mean, they've, so they've got three dice on something. Yes. <laughs> These are, I mean, these are crazy dice, <laughs> but he should get should get another spell off. So it's another pyro. Is he's yeah. going for the salvo, which I guess at this point he would rad rad uh, pyro. <laughs> right, that's all he's got really. He could have done the hereditary, but he's yeah. I mean, get as well mentioning this. Getting this spell off also gains a wound on his. Uh, Flame Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, really, getting the yeah. Uh, awaken the beast off. Yeah, so that's probably the primary reason he cast yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, another reason for doing Raven's Wing and hoping he he sort of lets that go. Or, I mean, getting that off on Raven's Wing is inc would have been incredible because you wouldn't have forgiven Rory for going. Okay, you can have a double six with three dice, right? Damn, they're rolling fast. They uh, are. Combat. Thick and fast in combat over here. Does the champion have four? Uh, this is Salvo. This is Salvo. Oh, right, okay. So just done it on all the different peeps. Did not know Salvo hit units in combat. Today I learned. I guess it's just a hex, right? Really. Sentinel's dead. 
they're doing units in combat. They decided it was. They didn't think about it for long, but they're doing it. Is that Blaze going on Sentinels? As, uh, yeah, probably. So As the one great one Mike one. Sylvester once said, you don't need to know the rules, you just need to be confident in what you say. <laughs> so it can't go into combat, but we're past that now. But, I mean, they've done that on the unit. I mean, so you can't, but it should it, it probably won't make any it difference. It pro probably won't matter, but it is yeah. a damage hex. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So are we? Are we? Who are we rooting for? The Griffin or the? <laughs> I really want these uh, these thicker beasts to win. I'm, I've got quite invested in yeah, right. this one out. And, <laughs> and specifically the champion, right? To do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, a, gr a Griffin is just an imposter dragon, so I'll never root for a Griffin. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, so it looks like he's shooting at these guys with his sea guard. This was the turn he went for the bunker. Not done that well. Yeah, I mean, cover and hard target. Yeah. Can't really be expected too much out of that. Or has, yeah. he, has he got rid of the unit there, actually? Because he's doing. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. scrubbed the unit. So wow. he's. Mage the, the left Rambo one. Prince. He's got a few more attacks with this unit Sea Guard. Can they do the damage? Damn. Yes. Gone. Yeah, I'm failing that charge. Oh. oh man, it's huge, isn't it? It's absolutely massive. Absolutely. Do you know what though? Craig's been playing for that for the last like turn and a half, hasn't he? It's actually scouts and, and then just picking them off. Yeah, with, I, it's, it's good with the blaze and everything. It's remarkable. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna forget a rule. That's when you want to forget it, when it then doesn't get punished, right? Yeah, when you don't get punished. Because Craig definitely was playing for that yeah. Frosty to flee. Yeah. And then not getting punished, just let him capitalize on this and, entire... And turn. you can bet bet your bottom dollar that he will not forget that in the rest of the Masters. Um, that's I mean, a, if he... We'll stick with him. If he, if he got that, then the Frost Phoenix wouldn't have been able to... Probably wouldn't have been able to reap the... Uh, uh, well, I think oh, yeah. two used to play in vampires. They wouldn't be able to sweep the uh, the unit, and oh, then yeah. he wouldn't have been able to kill the wizard because uh, yeah. they wouldn't have had enough models to give. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's so many stays together. Yeah. Poss so possibly so far the the biggest turning point is that failed charge. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's the highlight of the game, yeah. or the low light, depending. <laughs> Yeah, on your perspective, I yeah. guess, right? Which which elf you're rooting for? I've just corrected the wound on the unit combat, by the way. Fair enough. There you go. All comes around, but they did. But the champion is dead. Now it seems. Yes, he is. It's, and he's also, not become um, a dream man. also, Craig um, <laughs> did mention the rider attacking with divine attacks, and Rory rerolled and passed his aegis. So yeah, I mean, there's three three there, right? Is that la his last three was his. Eight. Yeah, that's from the Griffin, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh. See what? When I, it's, it's happened, the same thing happened when I played uh, Rory the other day when he had his Dryads. I had uh, a unit of 10 Warlocks and, uh, and a unit of 3 Dread Knights going through his Dryads. And fuck me, I killed like four of them. Because <laughs> he plays KOE. That's He's just happens. really good at Aegis saves. I don't know. He should be playing Demons, really. To be yeah, fair. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we're thinking he's going to flee here. He can't be wanting to stick around. I surely he flees this. Yeah, I mean, he's up on the objective now, so he hasn't really got too much to lose. Yeah, yeah there they go. There's no downside. DT on one, maybe two. I don't know. Maybe. He's not actually declared it yet. He's just uh, he's measuring it. Uh, I'm measuring from the Huntsman. Yeah. Archers push back. Oh, yeah. End up I'm not sure there's much players. in in favour of the Huntsman well. declaring that charge anyway. No, I I absolutely wouldn't get stabbed and shot and killed by the uh, yeah by the guy on there. I think at this point there isn't much they can do after failing that charge. No, that was their that was their moment. 
he could he could get triangle bounce there, couldn't he? Uh, and then Cub brings it back for I, I reckon it's a fifteen to complete the charge on a triangle bounce, uh, yeah. triple charge, triple flea. I, like yeah. it, uh, remember as well though that is a unit of eleven lions. They're not that much points wise. Like they've done it for the objective, but points what you're getting two hundred points, two hundred fifty. Yeah, but I, I think at this point he's just trying to stop the bleeding, right? So any any points are good points. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah so so here comes the triple, and then if he bounces uh, off of the, uh, there's there's a possible overrun here if he then flees from the archers as well. There's a possible overrun from from the dragon through the triple bounce lion guard into the back of the the prince. Wait, no, we just catch lion guard and destroy him. Yeah, he can't yeah. overrun yeah. after oh, yeah. killing them. Yeah. Yeah, you best be fucking sorry, Matt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Watch out! The, the council is watching. You can get some rules wrong. I'm not. Sure, I'm not sure. He'll I like redirect, that will he? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have to. The the dragon now is. Uh, yeah, they can all redirect. So I don't like. I don't think I like that play. What bouncing the line guard around? Yeah, because you. I mean, you've got these guys shooting. He can. Potentially go in. I know he will just dance around and stuff. I, I don't know. It, it go, it's hoping to tear a bomb off the uh, sea guard. It makes sense, right? Because this is turn five. So if he just fails this charge, he bumbles forward like up to six inches, which is not good. Um, but if he manages to get to a slightly better position, like he is able to complete a charge against something, um, then he's now in the center of the board. He can reform and look at something and be useful. Um, yeah, he'll get a free the dragon back into play. Them, which is quite yeah, exactly. Okay. Which brings the dragon into the game for turn six. He can maybe get a turn six charge on something. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not ideal, but um, yeah, as uh, as uh, Johnny said, it's uh, trying to stop the bleeding really as point. much as possible. Yeah. And, and Looks the huntsman like I'm doing anything anyway. Yeah, seventeen to complete it. I think. Yeah, has to And as in please, last guy. So that is now a uh, that's now a twelve, thirteen, twenty-three. Yes, yeah, eighteen. So what is the the dragon's movement seven? Is it Prince. movement seven? Yeah. Yeah, five. Seven. They don't make dragons like they used to. <laughs> It's funny. I was having the. I, I was thinking earlier actually about the. Um, just weirdly, it popped into my head the hover rule from Eighth Edition, where mm. you were fly but you couldn't march, so you had yep. movement ten. And uh, I was like, oh gosh, I can't believe that. Well, what what are now blowflies used to be movement ten? Oh my god, I can't <laughs> yeah. believe. I can't believe shrieking horrors used to be movement ten. Yeah, oh my god, dragon used to be movement ten. Yeah, yeah. fly oh used to be a god. blanket. Didn't Demon it? princes were movement ten. <laughs> it's just like this constant upgrade of units. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, harpies used to be. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I mean, that was quite a big move, wasn't it, to to change the fly? Yeah. I mean, some some things remained almost the same. E Eagles, fell bats, mm. harpies. Well, I remember when I um, ah, oh, yes, I'm failed. I think he failed by one. I oh, know that was the one, two, three. I, know, he, I rolled the ten for the archers and then the yeah. three for the. So he would have gone f uh, five and needed. To, yeah. Oh, that's a real shame. Yes. I mean, that that takes the dragon out of the game for the rest of the next couple of turns. Most, for most likely, yeah. Does it? Does that spell doom for these guys? Because uh, I would imagine he just matches up shoots and says what are you going to do I don't know what Rory has to kill that last guy uh, well, the, the, the lion is fleeing so maybe he just doesn't yeah, yeah he, he, might he will have rally, the but he will have the, he's got one more turn hasn't he so he'll have the breath if he really wants oh, him the dead breath, yeah. I guess it depends on counter charges though because if the, the thicket beast can't be longer, like too I, long. I, I can't imagine we'll see it. Oh, charge I think they're going to game. Yeah, I think this is. You could pretty much 
screenshot this. Yeah. And just remove the lion. And to be fair, it wouldn't surprise me now if um, I think Craig, what was Craig going to do is he's going to challenge mm -hmm. the uh, thicket shepherd. BSB will have to accept or lose stubble. Light, light up the lance, and, and then if he'll you blow do up, great, yeah. you do great. Yeah. yeah. We do have a challenge. We do have a jewel, and um, that is not Craig's pop nova. Yeah, that's and that's not good yeah. saving. That's um, four wounds, isn't yeah. it? Thicket shepherds down. Yeah. They are still stubborn because they're in a wood, though. So, are, yeah. are they fully in a wood, though? Uh, do they need to be? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. I, know I was sparking up that I shall open this open up. I believe in boldening bows is more than half. Sounds right. Yeah, I don't think they're in. Half. I don't think that bottom guy's center of his units in that wood. No, he's no, because not. the the Griffin wasn't in the wood, which was the. Yeah, they've counted them as stubborn, and they're moving on oh, okay. to Craig's charges. Right, so. So they are. We'll see. Oh, say By millimeters, they were just in. The benevolence yeah, perfectly of Craig. square woods. <laughs> Things become easier that way. <laughs> yeah, God, imagine if we're on a real table with that. I don't have to imagine I've had that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Frosty. Lucky Frosty. Picks up the archers. Yeah. yeah. Mops up some points. I mean, yeah, that, that, that charge just... These, the fact that they're both going to survive is crazy, isn't it? Lion's back. Lion guards. Chaps back. Of course he is. From... As him killing that uh, that unit with the wizard in as well on that turn was insanity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was hitting on uh, what would have been sixes, I think, with the unit. Yeah, and but the. Fours uh, with the character. Is it fours? Isn't he normally as a zero? I thought he was one up. Oh, he might be a one. He's, yeah. not, he's not a prince, is he? So. Oh, he's not. Okay, yeah, then I think. It's the BSB. It's fours. Is there a reason Craig didn't charge the flank of the Wild Huntsman? I think because um, he could need I think to lame them. Yeah. Better to sweep them. Oh, okay, yeah. As well, if you do that, you'd rely on purely on um, the combat, and this Flame Phoenix is yeah. I think he's not proven do, himself. I think <laughs> he would rather do the sweep plus shooting yeah. plus magic. Yeah, to be honest sense. on them, because they won't they they won't get any cover through the forest or nothing because they've failed and moved forward. Yeah, so yeah. They're just and they and they won't they won't charge the Sea Guard. They're pretty much dead in the water aren't they I'm interested that yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Craig is going to move forward with the sea guard it doesn't look like he has I suppose we're still in the movement phase at the minute but... yeah because you can you can let the phoenix yeah, just on a sweep sweeping first as well. right yeah. and then move to see yes. if it, if it yeah. matters because if you don't kill like any because he, wa he won't, he won't leave a last turn charge in the rear. Um, I mean, you you can right because you've got the champion still in there. Well, so he can't. You... He can't challenge the dragon out when they're in the rear, can they? When the dragon's in the rear of him, so he'll have it. He can. Can you? Yeah, he can. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. No. Being a large flying monster in this edition is not always the best thing in the world. Mm. What am I thinking of then? Why, if when you're um, in the flank, or I think you just make way. Make way. Make way. Okay. But yeah. So you can challenge, but not wake way. Yeah, sure. Oh my god! You used to be able to make way to the rear. <laughs> totally oh yeah. Forgot that. <laughs> that <is so> bad. <laughs> oh my anyway. god. Yeah. How do we still play this game? <laughs> yeah, Craig obviously reckons there ain't going to be many huntsmen left in a minute, so uh, he's yeah. pushed right up in his face. I mean, it's it's a twenty right to get yeah. in, and it's just yeah. so it just. Nullifies that. Yeah, I mean, the dragon's going to go up and try and burn off this one lion god. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we're into, I think we're officially into mop up phase here, aren't we? So, um, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'd add a... if, I'm going to have a quick snoop and see what's going on on Marcus's and Ooh, yes. Colin's game while while uh, they're doing the movement here. Not to say yeah. that this is all over. Well, whilst, <laughs> you're, whilst you're doing that, I'll put a quick shout out to the other tournament that's running at the moment. It's not just the uh, uh, the big boys on their big day uh, for the Masters <laughs> table. There's uh, the also Rams, uh, Cheap Seats. We've also got the Masters open going on. It's open to anybody who did make the Masters like uh, me. Uh, anyway, so that's been going on. 
Uh, and the uh, first round's also been playing. Andrew Huntley's out in the lead with his dreadies on 20. Uh, Josh uh, with some more Sylvans. Uh, Josh Burns. Uh, then Jack. Jack's, uh, Jack Austin's running Demon Legions. Uh, he's obviously back Africa and uh, doing some stuff. Uh, David Kupowitz uh, with his, his ID is out there on 18. Then it's old Manny P in there after his win against James. Robert Cousins with the Greenskins. Shane Baxter, the Master Nav. Ollie, uh, Dr. Ollie, Matt Brown with some more Beast Herds, Alex, James, uh, David Pox with some Warriors, uh, Paul Fern, uh, Fernbro and Adam Lake both on one point, and the rest of the guys I think are still to play, including uh, Jack, who's just disappeared. Uh, still here. I know. Well, he's still there, mate. <laughs> I've only left the uh, UB game. Let's we'll take on Marcus's game. Uh, when's, uh, when's, your, when's, your, when's your first round game from the Open then, mate? Uh, three hours ago originally uh then i remembered that we were doing this um so we rescheduled to tomorrow evening <laughs> oh there you go commitment i like it there there are some now, unbelievable lists have you seen yeah. frank, uh, frank oh frank <laughs> i thought i didn't know when you were going to mention this yeah um, i'm busy watching that game at the moment and frank has he's done something very unexpected and he's made a unit of just 10 things by itself which i don't brilliant. think anybody was was ready for yeah fantastic now I was, uh, now jack i was listening to um the uh, podcast from Trent. Yep. <laughs> the uh, um, uh, Ray- Vale Renegades. That's what it is. I'm a moment in blank. Um, Renegades Rumination. Re- Renegades yeah. Rumination. Uh, are you still accepting uh, the requests for names? Yeah. Have you got anything? Um, no. That sounds like <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> uh, not off the top of my head like that. Um, but no, Jack, because was that uh, they, they seem to um and Trent, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to tip Jack's list. Yeah, I think we had you down as a twelve eight. On, uh, on I think two of you had me down as a twenty. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You that Jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the Jack, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're playing Tomb Kings, right? No, <laughs> no you're, you're, the guy you're playing against is the Tomb King player. No, no, playing Warriors. Okay, I've, I've completely <laughs> lost track of everything. So I'm glad well, that you know me so well, Trent. I'm yeah. so well you. really maybe you're awesome. not that famous, Jack. <laughs> no one knows me. I'm a has been. <laughs> oh, I will. I will interrupt. Say, Kev's just off. Oh, he's gone. Oh, um, no, no, I'm oh, here. oh no, see you later, boys. <laughs> okay, see, see you later. Well done, uh, well done on your ten ten. Thanks for coming and joining us. Uh, it's your, your Thank you. It's been knowledge. great to see. I've really enjoyed it. I do hope we get to see more of this. Oh yes, yeah. Well, we certainly. Well, got please to, don't watch least... my games and just slag <laughs> me off of all the shoot, stupid moves I do. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't need that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have to see if yours is. You know, if you, I reckon if you get Jeff, we'll have a beast aired off for uh, round three. That's oh what, god, it'll be horrible. Um, but, yeah, but thanks for joining us, and uh, um, yeah, no problem. Good, it's been a lot of fun. Good, yeah, good rest, luck, mate. Yeah. Yeah, 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 keep yeah. it up, mate. All right, bye. Um, but going back to you, Trent. Um, uh, very cool that you guys have started uh, up a podcast again. Yeah, no, it's, it's the the Vale Renegades guys. It was their idea because yeah. I know they they used to have one. Um, they just kind of invited me to join so all credit goes to them i guess but yeah i think it's just because the open didn't have very much coverage because obviously yeah. all the focus is on the masters so they thought yeah I'd do something for for those guys no, that's fantastic i would say it was good good pod as well uh, yeah, thank nice you. to listen to so um and you're planning more in the future yeah i think we're going to do like a halfway point one and then yeah. maybe a, a roundup at the end Oh, great. Uh, very much looking forward to that. And uh, what I'll do as well is I'll put in the link in... When I release this video as a video separate, mm-hmm. I'll, uh, I'll put the link in there so people can catch yeah, up on you. Thank you very much, yeah. And do all that. But it is good, so check it out, everybody. Uh, to all the 43, there's a few few people also agree that it's um, to, getting towards the end of this game. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have a charge. Do the uh, the so the dragon's going for uh, balls deep and glory. He's uh, obviously the the lion, single lion guard's leg get and uh, the dragon is going long into he's... the griffin. Did the, and um... he's only got to made it, I'd say. Did the lion yeah. guard die through dangerous train as well? No, I don't think so. Oh, he's here. No, he's still alive at the back. Yeah. Still alive. <laughs> so, so he's got the he's got the charge then. So. This will be. Yeah, while, while you guys were um, saying goodbye to Kev, you also had to the uh, the thicket beast doing two wounds to the Griffin. Finally. Oh, that's quite nice. Right. So and and now we've got the judge. Also, it looks like the wild huntsman survived. 
the onslaught. Yeah. Yes, but have they have failed to charge on the uh, Griffin there? So they, oh, they also go charge the well, Griffin. So yeah, sure. Get out of dodge of this. Um, but yeah, so this is. I mean, we're we're coming to a. This would be a very interesting climax, so to speak. There's a quick update on um, Marcus and Colin's game. Um, Marcus has reached the Soren Ancients line and is beginning to kill stuff. Ooh, but uh, has taken how much damage? As so far as I can see, he's lost one unit of bloat flies, and uh, he's Ooh. in combat with a lot of stuff. And there are lots, uh, lots of wounds on monsters and stuff. So, mm. well, I'd, I'd say if he's got in with anything like. Uh, a decent battle line, I reckon that's tickets then for the, the Saurians. Uh, I think it's. I think at this point it could still go either way, definitely. Um, but yeah, he's definitely got a few combats that he wanted. He's, it looks good. Looks good. But uh, yeah, it could go either way. Um, just to clarify, and it's something that's been thing in the group, um, in the chat, uh, how highborn elves are up on the objective? Do we think? Who's been counting? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. Yeah. So, like I said at the start, it's much easier to hold the objective if you're going second. Yeah. Hold the um, at this point, though, will they be? Will all the highborns have won it, or will it? Could it be drawn if the thickets stick around? Um, I think it's two one to the highborns at the moment. So yeah. if the thickets do stick around. That's I mean, just what I calculate. That 100. I guess. Sure. I guess though, yeah, I that regardless right, of that, yeah. you could turn the sea guard around and. Because it's yeah, Craig's turn it. last, isn't it? So, yeah, um, and that's way more important than getting the points for these chaps. He could also Raven's Wing something onto, yeah, yeah, he sure. Could Raven's Wing the uh, the other unit you know, of Sea Guard into there, perhaps. Yeah, uh, could. Yeah, it that way. So it's it it should Craig's Craig's it should be Highborns um, should objective. Be, yeah. uh, I can't see that going. Um, also, I've got Glenn Wilkinson Tough. Thank you, gents. It's been a success, and I, th I thoroughly enjoyed. Well, thank you for joining us, and thank you to everybody else for joining us. Still well, got... do you know what? It's worth a quick shout out to Glenn. Uh, Glenn's, a, Glenn's a good friend of mine uh, oh. down there. Uh, uh, I think in in sort of Sussex, Surrey, area, and he he runs a really important function. He is a big old paramedic ambulance driving sort oh, wow. of chap, uh, and has been doing sterling work. Yeah, well, I mean, in that case, we really appreciate your time because uh, <laughs> your your time is very precious. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for that, and yeah, thanks for everyone. I mean, it's uh, we got up to uh, eighty three, I think I, I counted, and I'll check afterwards. So uh, very good um, sort of showing from the community, and it's been uh, that's been the case for everything so far. And, um, we are really enjoying doing it, and we're going to bring you loads more as well. I say we've got all these guys doing fantastic pods as well. So, if you've only joined in through YouTube, make sure you don't just stick with YouTube. Make sure you go to all the pods and and everything because it's it's really cool. <laughs> um, Trent, the Veil vale Escapades. Do you like it you like that? The Veil vale Renegades. Oh, the, the oh, okay, yeah, that's a name idea. The the Veil vale Rudder Blade. Rudder blade is another yeah. one. Um, How about the uh, bridal veils? <laughs> like that one. That's not bad. The bridal veils. <laughs> um, so yeah, keep keep your uh, <laughs> suggestions coming in, chaps. That's from Leo Brown <laughs> from both of those. Appreciate um, them. Yeah. <laughs> we're still. So we're we're just zoomed in on this combat. Uh, I have yes. No, nothing so, else matters. I right? mean, I mean, uh, he's got rid of the things. It seems uh, was that through cover volley? Do we think? What's this? Sorry. Uh, the or, or these have moved here. Have they moved here or are they dead? They moved there. They're just running away. Right. Okay. So they didn't charge in. Doesn't look like it. Uh, no. Fair enough. Cool. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it's gone on to combat. And there's a lot of wounds on Dragon. Dragon's had a bit of a bit of a uh, enjoyed a bit of a, 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 a violent abuse. There, Thanks, right? just yeah. rolled really well on the Griffin attacks. Yeah, and so well, has he has he gone all the attacks against the Dragon? Yeah, he hit four times out of four and wounded four times out of four on the Dragon. I think he's in a challenge. And Rory um, sure. saved yeah. one of them. Ouch! Um, and 
has done no wounds back? Seems so. Yeah. Um, is that is that was that presumably those last two ro- rolls by Craig were his um, Aegis? Uh, he should have a one up, four up against these attacks. He's AP three, the Lord on top. I do yeah, believe. So he's just, yeah. he's just armored. So he's just armored. He's just... Blimey, yeah. that's a fluff. That is disdainful to not um, even need to read. So I mean, if that stays the case, and I imagine they're counting up now, you got a charge, a rear for three, and that's it against four wounds. Big rear for four. Mm. Big. No, is it, no, no it's not, is it? Because he's not a rank. Because he's flyer. He's a flyer. Ah, yeah. So, uh, is there any yeah, it more? Looks like looks like the dragon's down by one. Yeah. Wow. Um, Sickening. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Did he even use the breath weapon? I would have used everything in the kitchen sink again. Yeah, that, sure. Like. I mean, it doesn't look like he's rolled 2d6 apart... No, yeah. So, it doesn't look like it. I mean, Dragon Forged armor, though, right? So, oh, of course, I still wouldn't use it when I yes, use it. Yeah, what else do you do with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. When one wound is the difference between you winning and losing the combat, I would risk I, the three. I, up I, I can up. imagine the conversation is going at the moment. I've charged you in the rear with yeah. the dragon. Counting it out. <laughs> yeah, and like Rory's going, no, 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 I can't have lost combat. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 count it out again. Count it out again. What well, I mean, uh, Hyper G, are you? Do you know what they're talking about now? Not a clue, Jeff. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't see the dragon. There's a dragon. Um, fair enough. Uh, you know he was doing like a line of coke when he said that line, right? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. he had to a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what, Jeff? <laughs> um, right, another. I mean, Leo Brown is is filling in all of these suggestions. Um, it's the next suggestion is the veil. I'll drink too much, fall through an X-wing stand, it end up in hospital, then reappear the next day in hospital nighty. <laughs> Ollie Manners was telling me about that story yesterday. Actually, yeah, one of the, one of the guys about yeah, the I mean, uh, Renegade Crusade. <laughs> Even right. It looks like the dragon's stuck. Uh, yeah. On isn't? Has he rolled for it though? It looks mm. like they were. They it doesn't look like he's rolled, so it must have been a push. Although yeah. I reckon the dragon lost by one. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, probably probably just missing something. So, but yeah, so he's got the frosty in the rear of the thickets, um, and he's just, I imagine, going to try and use everything else to try and kill these wild huntsmen. Wait, how many does uh, the dragon people, have on it? For people who are looking at that frosty coming in the rear and going, why isn't it maximizing as well? It doesn't need to, of course, and that's, that's just good, good yes. play there. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. you would know if you'd watched the Jack Thicks episode on maximizing charges. <laughs> I, I think Maybe I figured out why the, why the combat was a push, because the dragon already took a wound from the DTs. Ah, uh, right. It only okay. took three wounds. Fair enough. So, it wasn't as terrible. Um, yeah. as before. So it looks like yeah. the Phoenix failed two DTs as well, but passed one on the ward save. <laughs> yeah. Um, unless that was... No, no, it wouldn't have taken yeah, yeah, yeah. Dangerous Train, would it? No, it would have. It's, it's a Wood yeah. yeah, Woods. Oh, right. correct. And it's it a flyer. It failed two but, DTs but, but, and passed one on Aegis. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, Craig's now just moving stuff around because he doesn't need uh, to worry about positioning and things, does he? So he's just yeah. going to try and maximise getting magic over here and some shooting on, on them. Uh, I'd imagine the quick to fire one's still in there yet. Uh, and the mage is out. To be fair, here. Craig's still win this combat. Uh, sorry, um, Rory gets to win this combat. And the, Craig's moved away from the objective now as well. So if, if Rory sticks, they tie. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's by our maths, anyway. <laughs> yeah, by I, our I, maths. Well, you are, you are PhD, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I can count I, up to three. Yeah, <laughs> I'm happy to take your your word on that. <laughs> yeah. So um, nine six is not a bad final so phase. Yeah. Buff him up. It's a pretty good roll. I don't. Yeah. 
I guess he's got to he's got to stop the buffs, hasn't he? he? Just assume the huntsmen are dead. Yeah, it's going to be the hereditary and plus one strength here yeah. that he's going to try and want to start because I mean, he is out of range for healing the both the. I guess I could uh, roll Phoenix though. Thing, but... Twelve, so yeah, twelve on three dice. That's not, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, think I actually think Craig's made quite a big mistake here because the uh, the thicket beasts are steadfast in the forest. Yeah, if so they played it before, they're not. They're not one hundred percent. Well, yeah, I guess if that's the way they played it, then. Mm. Um. And he's got that off. He's regained a wound on him as well, so that's <coughs> like a double buff. I guess you would anyway, but he's definitely out of range for that. Well, at twelve, is it? Yes, yeah, twelve inch range. Oh no, he's moved no, the BSB he's, he's out BSB of the unit because yeah. it's his last turn. Yeah, so yeah. this is the um, yeah the BSB is here, the uh, Queen's companions there, and the mage is there. Yeah, I, I think I think Craig is just leaning into the fact that if the dragon dies, like the the static res is just yeah. you're going to keep winning that combat against the thicket beasts. And they're just they're an eight no reroll. Mm. Was that um Hybergy, was that strength? He's done it on the eight, is it? Sorry. Um Yes. Yeah. No oh, good, thank you for confirming. Sorry, <laughs> I, I I asked you and then realised I could use my eyes. Um so Didn't you want to do that? <laughs> then I remembered yes. I have eyes. Uh, uh, he's down to one hunt, uh, one huntsman. Uh, one solitary lonely huntsman. Solitary huntsman over here. Uh, but this is magic, isn't it? So. Uh, no, I think that's shooting he's doing. Yeah, he's done. So he's gone. Huntsman out. Yeah. Cheapers, they could have turned the game, eh? Oh. And that's no way to die. Being shot down. That, by them, I mean, but... I mean, they did. They deserve to die after not yeah, getting that, the charge. That, that's they? what they deserve. Yeah. <laughs> just to be running away, cowering, and just get done by some strength three arrows. He does. That's what they deserve. Um, right. Any predictions of this combat before it happens? Oh, I really want this dragon to win. <laughs> I really do. Um, I think all it's not the any worse. Well, the really, the really good news is loads of elves are gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no more elves left. To yeah, die. there's only there's only two elves. Uh, this lot, but yeah. Um, ooh, that's not a good roll. Oh, but that's not a good roll either. So it's two wounds. Okay, Ooh, so now bad. the dragon. Uh, it's going back on the dragon. T uh, two wounds. S mm. no. He's dead. <laughs> so what was that? Was that the? Wow. What was that then? I think that was the griffin. Yeah. Because he's now lethal strikes. Goes before the dragon. Lethal strikes on the griffin, which I can I've completely forgotten about. Oh, that that's one wound that he healed saved him as well. Yeah, yeah. Level six cast. That is brutal, isn't it? Cast, uh, Twelve cast. I, I mean, that's that's game, right? That's it. That's well, yeah. Now, now it's do the tree can break for the objective. Yeah. And this this game has been. An emotional roller coaster. I know. <laughs> There's so many moments in this where I feel like yeah. we've already had this in the palm of the hand. Are you like... enjoying the UK Masters, mate? Have you enjoyed uh, tuning into the UK? Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's been fun, man. It's been it's been enjoyable. Yeah, I'll say thanks so ever so much for coming on, um, especially from a different time zone. Because I oh I I rolled out of bed, put on some pants, and turned on my computer. So. It... <laughs> Wasn't too bad for me. <laughs> and what did you say? It was seventy outside or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So we're no, supposed to get snow next week. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I say thanks ever so much for coming on. Uh, we'll get you on for the other live streams if you're up for it as well. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, with that that happening and going down. Uh, What's this roll? This is, can't be a good roll. Unless it's... Oh, I think that was his leadership. Is yeah, it. Oh, is it? it? Well, there you go. And that's oh, possibly a drawn objective. Right? Yeah, yeah. So unless I'm mistaken, that's a, that's yeah, a tight could, objective. Yeah, do, um, Hypergee, is that confirmed? Is that drawn objective? At least for Rory? Uh, just having a summary of the game. I'm trying to 
trying to find out. <laughs> oh, right, there, yeah, fair enough. Running onto the pitch wildly. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what's happened. Yeah, so, um, no, no, good game otherwise. Like you say, a lot of, a lot of moments, a lot of failed charges, I feel. Um, Mm. Well, uh, certainly yeah. one, certainly one critical one, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and and I think Rory put up a, a really good fight there against what is is I think for most people's money one of the uh, the pre tournament favourites. So uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, we I said from the start. Well. I think Rory's deployment was really good. I think yeah. he mm. made a couple of mistakes. Um, like we were talking about, uh, not him, him not prioritising the uh, the bolt throws uh, when yeah. he could have done. Um, I think that did come back to bite him because he ended up losing five pathfinders to mm. a bolt, th- uh, an errant bolt for a shot, um, as well as his, his um, one of his unit of heath riders to them as well, um, which he really didn't need to. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is one of those games where definitely, I think, could have gone Rory's way really easily with yeah. just a couple of different dice. Um, it really would have made all the difference because, I mean. Just making that charge of the Wild Huntsman alone would have gotten him the uh, would have probably gotten them both phoenixes as well as potentially the uh, um, Griffin. Yeah, the Griffin as well. And most likely kept the mage alive. Yeah. yeah, and kept the mage alive. Yeah, and probably I mean I, I don't know would would have had a chance of keeping the Huntsman alive as well. Uh, yeah, possibly. They can't uh, be. I mean, what they they've got to be four hundred, five hundred points. Eight of them. Uh, I, I think they're like 475 around. Yeah, there. 470 sounds about right. So I mean, that's still a decent. Just that's a vic, that's a tournament point, right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah possibly. So yeah. Um, All right. Let's. Um, God, I'm so excited for my game tomorrow, man. <laughs> what are you thinking? What seven. are you thinking? So you you are uh, uh, you are. Remind me, I've for- completely forgotten. <laughs> uh, I am you Jack. Um, You're I'm Jack, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> right? Jack Tix from that guy from Jack Tix, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, no, um, I want Dread Elves. Um, Dread I'm up against. I'm up against um, the mysterious M, uh, Ooh, and his Mr. Blackstone. Um, yeah, and his uh, warriors. Um, I think that's quite a good game for me. Yeah, because you've got the agility budge on everything there. Uh, I feel, for, yeah, I mean, I've I've played Warriors twice and they haven't made it through turn four. So I feel like the Warriors matchup for Dread Elves is oh. really good. Well, yeah, I'd agree. Um, we've actually got Craig wanting to come into the chat. Yeah, he, he did mention yeah, to course, me. So. Straight away. Um, so we've got a, a proper match of the day post-game Taunt, uh, well, into... here he is with a towel around his shoulders, sweating. I from expect the field. a heavy, thick accent. <laughs> yeah. <Can't understand. laughs> deep breathing, deep breathing from Craig. Uh, Craig. Hello. How did hey, it go? Hey, man, what a what a good game. I uh, it was fascinating for a, for a whole host of reasons. Uh, me and Rory just had a little bit of a debrief, and I mean, <laughs> evidently to anyone that's been watching the last few turns, certainly I was by far the luckier, um, especially in a key few moments. So, for example, like the Wild Riders failing their charge. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realise the Phoenix was fearless. So yeah, that, that yeah. was a big mistake for me. Um, the, dra- the dragon into the griffin is crazy. <laughs> um, I just that first yeah. one when you did three and he did none, was it? Or was it just, oh, man. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the dice certainly benefit me in the late game. I, I was a little bit frustrated after turn one because I deployed badly. Um, and my movement was okay, and then I think I killed seven models with pyro magic and shooting, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. I expected to kill more than seven And then it, it, it picked up as the game went on. Um, and I turned two, turn three, I was really happy with my movement, which sort of got me back into it from what what was m- me deploying badly and me moving not great in the first couple of turns. Yeah, and yeah, there's some some odd moments. Like for example, the the phoenixes took either a turn too long on the dryads. I yes, obviously would have liked to have broken him in his turn. Yeah, because then you'd uh, been able to piv- pivot and go three sixty, right? Literally any way you want. Yeah, and and I said that the pursuing with both was a mistake because I didn't. I read the Phoenix entry and not the Frost Phoenix entry, so <laughs> um, I should have been caught out by that, and I, I probably should have lost both Phoenixes. And I was saying to Rory afterwards, I think if those Wild Riders get in and your dragon does kill the Griffin, which I think it should, I'd already put the victory points on the 
the spreadsheet I use, um, then suddenly it's a, you know, it's 10, 11, 12, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, but I certainly made mistakes throughout the game. I think Rory made a couple of little mistakes as well. So it was far from perfect, but you would never really expect a perfect game. Um, your uh, your deployment of the bolt throws at the beginning was that trying to drag the the dragon out wide and just sort of distract it because um uh, and also what's I got a second question do you, do you think that he used the uh, the uh, the pathfinders effectively out on the left wing early doors um partially my my as you probably saw if you were watching the deployment early on I was intending to put a flying threat on that side and then I just didn't and I didn't really re go back to the bolt throws um so i was going to put a flying threat out there to sort of annoy him probably slow him down um but yeah i just i just didn't reconsider the bolt throws and like leaving a bolt throw within range of sylvan archers on turn one is was a mistake so yeah i was, I was quite frustrated by my deployment and then followed that up but with quite a frustrating turn one so i was yeah quite frustrated after the first turn and feel like i made plays to get back into it and then it got a bit lucky and um, in terms of Pathfinders and the Dragon, the fact that Pathfinders only ever really shot Bolt Throwers and, and White Lions and the Dragon, well, he eventually got into a combat in the end. Mm. I was quite happy for those to do do very little in the game. If the Pathfinders are out wide, I can chuck up the odd fireball at them. And if he's within 24, Seaguard Reapers are actually okay against them, which is, which is eventually sort of what happened. Yeah, well, we were saying actually that one of the things that perhaps Rory could have done better was to actually prioritise the the bolt thrower instead of like with the archers as well, because I know the archers went after your lion guard instead of going for the bolt thrower itself, and in yeah, the I end didn't... he didn't quite get enough and was left on. I, I didn't really get that going for the white lions. I mm. I agree that maybe he thought he had enough to deal with the bolt throwers. To be fair, yeah. Um, but yeah, the pathfinders and the dragon. It, like, even if you've seen the dragon kills the griffin at the end there, then he spent the, the twelve hundred points in his list that really threatened me, killing two bolt throwers and a, and my griffin in the end. Yeah. And my griffin's already traded for the BSB, so I was pretty happy with that. To be fair, across the course of a game, and it, yeah. it just so happened that I I assumed I would get the pathfinders at some point if unless he completely backed off with them, and. Um, I assumed that the bolt throws would eventually die to something. So, yeah, um, quite lucky. I, yeah, and still sort of processing in my head, as you can probably tell by how I'm talking. But <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a hard work game and yeah, few moments. Yeah. And I, I said to Rory afterwards, um, the result certainly doesn't reflect uh, the balance in the game at all, which I think is harsh on him. Yeah, and lucky on me. So, um. um on the result, uh, was it yeah, twenty was in the end, or what, or what, or did he draw the objective, or was that did he just not? Uh, no, the objective. I so turn two was a draw, turn three, four, I won, turn five was a draw, and turn six was um right, was sure. his. So it was, was two nil, yeah. so it was two one to me at the end of the game on the objective. So it did, it did end up in a twenty by not very many VPs. So the VPs were I've got spread open. Uh, Four five two five to me, and one two one nine to Rory. So a difference of three three zero six. So there's like quite a few swings on that last turn that mm, got me that yeah. like, over that TP. And I was debating the the Phoenix in the rear. Um, that would only cost me a tournament point if I didn't kill the the Wild Riders. Otherwise, it was a free charge. So yeah. that was why he went in because him dying didn't matter as long as I killed the four Wild Riders. Sure, and I mean, as a whole, uh, first time with that list using it, uh, or was it the first time? Did you get a game in before the game? I, I got two practice games in and didn't did. win either. So, oh, was right. my first win with the list. <laughs> there we go. And how to, I mean, after three games, two practice, and a, a big win, how are you finding it? It's it's hard work. Um, I really enjoy it, and it, it does sort of. There are moments where you're sort of putting things in risk and. Chatting to Scrub about it before the event, like he he just he thinks the Sea Guard can basically just push into the middle of the board and take off the world. But I think in that game, for example, Wild Riders go at the same time. Thicker beasts are hard work. The dragons hard work, and I'm like, I can't I can't deal with two or three things at once. Maybe one. Like the dragon into the Sea Guard, I was trying to avoid with Raven's Wing. Yeah, and I got I was quite happy he let me have that a couple of times rather than stopping something else. So yeah, um, it's. 
it's an interesting list. It's hard work because, as as I said, my deployment and movement one was so poor, and there's so few units that poor movement does probably impact you more because sure. in like an MSU list where you've got 20 moving parts, if you get a couple bits wrong, yes, it can cascade in MSU, but normally you can flee or, or sort of dodge. Whereas in this, if you get a movement wrong, you, you know, it's one of your six pieces out of position. Yeah. So, um, so in retrospectively, does this sort of change your view of, of the meta at all? Does, is there any sort of longer term conclusions you've drawn from having now, you know, hit form at the right time with the uh, with the high ball? I think it's too early to say game one. And, and as I said, when I came on before, Sylvan Elves, I think, are in a pretty poor place. And so to to get a lucky game against them and come out with a score, when like, I think a realistic score for that game should have been you know, if I'm pushing for a win, it's it's 12 to 13, um, especially after turn one. And I, I don't think after one game with a list, I can really reflect on the specific meta of the Masters. And I do think it's a different meta to elsewhere. And I, I do still have worries about this list against some of the lists at the event. There's three maybe that really, really worry me to the point of I can't comprehend how to play it. And I just yeah. need to either get them in the army swap or in the right mission or... Yeah. You did mention towards the start of the game that your list seems really small. Yeah, this is part of the reason I picked it up, is I saw the list in the list document for New Year's Revolution and went, that's got a unit of Seaguard in it. And that that's literally <laughs> that's Seaguard. And I was like, I don't understand how a list with 27 Toughness 3 infantry can grind through a game. And like, for example, turn one when the Ice and Fire killed 10. Mm. I was like, well... I, I don't know what to... I uh, killed eight, sorry. I was like, I don't know... Like, if he does that twice more, I don't have any Seaguard left. <laughs> and, you know, you add on top of that shooting and a lot of people have brought breath weapons to this event and magic generally is pretty good at targeting Toughness 3 Infantry. Uh, I, I've yet to work out how it's going to survive every game, but maybe that's the challenge in the list. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good start. It's a very good start. Um, In terms of... Uh, the game itself um, did you have it down as a 12-13 to start off with uh, beforehand in your head uh, were you ever did you, were you ever thinking that the matchup might allow for a 20-0 or anything like that I think I think any matchup can eventually allow for a 20-0 I think there's very very few matchups in the game that can't go 20-0 but things have to happen you have to get some luck and some better play Yeah. in terms of what I had that matchup down as I thought first turn was going to be important, um, and it, it was. I, I think we both wanted first turn in that game, and I, I had it as a win. Ultimately, things like the Griffin are quite hard for for Rory to deal with, and the, the Phoenixes, if they don't get focused down early, again are quite hard. And and the Magic, like Fireball, and the you know Ravens Wing and Hereditary are all pretty good. And I had it as a win. I, I thought the mission was pretty neutral. It would depend on how he deployed, if he wanted to play the game in the middle or play centrally. Um, yeah, I had it as a, a fair play, small to medium win. No, so good. you'd say the Griffin was the MVP? Well, no, he got stuck on Treekin for forever. He t- <laughs> took two turns to kill a champion, <laughs> and then yeah, and turn around and one shot a dragon. It was. <laughs> it was uh, an interesting yeah that was crazy that was crazy and uh, but no i say thanks very much for letting us watch especially last minute uh we really appreciate that and i know the viewers did we uh, just so you know you had 83 people watching you at some point um most of them trent's girlfriend um <laughs> but uh also we have friends. yes girlfriends <laughs> plural um and this has got loads of account maybe that's it uh, maybe <laughs> um but we do, we are saying uh, goodbye to uh mr uh, with Mr. Septic himself. Hi, yeah. Johnny. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, be be nice to Trent's girlfriend. She's the next uh, UK master. <laughs> she might be. <laughs> My understanding is anything go on. But yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. That was a great game. Greg, it was, it was a roller coaster to watch because I thought it was the lights for you at that charge, and then the second it didn't connect. I, yeah, yeah. That was, it, we discussed that after, and it was a big, big moment. And I got lucky after making a mistake, and I can't I can't put that down to anything other than getting lucky after a mistake. So, uh, lucky than good, right, Craig? 
<laughs> always, mate. Always. <laughs> all right. You fellas have a good night. All right? Yeah. No, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, and yeah, and I think um, unless does anybody have any final thoughts before before I go to the competition and and end off the the live stream. Well, I just think it's it's just super exciting, you know. This is a bit of a first, isn't it? And you know, getting uh, so much hype behind the the Masters uh, and what an opening game, Lucky Six is for us to to be 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 uh, be privileged to be witness to, and to you know have Johnny on, Trent on, and Jack on, and uh, and Kev on, and uh, and yourself and and staff and staff and stuff. It's, it's it's been awesome, mate. Absolutely, mm. absolutely, yeah, great event. Yeah, right, <laughs> for sure. Um, and yeah, no, Craig, no, thanks no, for coming no, on before no, and after no. as well. Like, mm, I, I did make a really small caveat on the game for anyone that watched all of it. <laughs> yep. It was quite a slow game, especially at the start, and I'd like to apologise for that. Because um, there was quite a lot of checking No, it's rules. Right, Craig, it's okay. Um, we have jack ticks to fill time. Don't you worry. Don't and, you worry, son. Yeah, it was it was quite a slow game, and I'm aware that both of us got a couple of rules wrong during the game, and we were discussing that on Discord. And, you know, Rory said before the game, apologies if I keep having to look things up. I'm still pretty new with Silver Nails. I moment. must admit, genuinely speaking, if you did, it seemed like you went back and corrected it pretty quickly. Uh, there was a few things we were like, oh, they, f- they remember this. Like, for example, Scorching Salvo into a... Um... We had we had a lot of discussion over what spell it was you had, Craig. Yes, that was the <laughs> main thing, if I'm honest. The, so <laughs> the issue that happened there is that the army was spawned with the old spells, and then I had... I, I thought Cascading Fire was the 2d6, 3d6 one, which obviously it isn't. And so at that point, I I couldn't, like after that turn had happened, I couldn't describe to Rory which spell I wanted to have on turn two. So I, I said to Rory, I was like, I've made a mistake on the spells. What do you think I've got? And he was like, oh, you've got the number two, the salvo, right? And I was like, sure. If you're happy with that, I've made a mistake. If you want me to change spells, I will. And he was like, no, you, you got the number two spell out, so I've been assuming Salvo. Yeah. Um, but my initial plan was not to take Salvo because of the MR on the dragon, and I only really want to target a couple of units. So, yeah, there was that, that's another big mistake. Um, I'd, I'd tried to prepare quite a lot for the matchup. Like, I had all my spells out ready, yeah. moon markers, and then I just spawned the wrong pyro tokens. And uh, I've never used pyro really. Yeah, sure. So that, but I mean, th- me. another thing we were saying is what what a time to have a mistake when you win twenty nil. You know, all these mistakes you're not going to do them again. Yeah, something I, I did want to mention as well is obviously this game was twenty nil, but it's and a lot of the time when you see um, a lot of times when you see matchups from from players like uh, who are on Team England or you know, play, placing very highly, um, and you see them twenty someone. It's very easy to say, you know, to to, to think that beating players like that is is unattainable. But we all saw here that this game was very easily losable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It could have gone either way at multiple points. Um, it just unfortunately it just didn't. Uh, Roy did not have the rubber of the green today. Unfortunately, it didn't go his I way. I think you're absolutely right there, Jack. I think the margin of error here is so so small at this top top level. That, you know, a little bit of a spike, a little bit of tiny error, uh, and it, and 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 it can cost and cost big. I thought yeah. Rory played really well. I really did. Yeah, a, a different day. It could have been. Uh, it yeah. could have been Craig going going down like fifteen plus on this game. So. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you wouldn't yeah. Craig because Craig never loses. But you know, but. Uh... <laughs> I I hundred percent agree. Um, I, I I said I'd chat to love Rory a bit more on WhatsApp after this and. I don't think he did much wrong. I think there was a couple of small things, and and but you know I probably made more mistakes than him during the game. And I, well, I really uh, yeah, I mean, what I thought you did really, really well. Your movement in in turn two and turn five was was remarkable. Uh, it was it was it was a privilege to watch it. Really, wasn't it, lads? Because hmm. you know, I mean, the the way you then sort of you know having had a, a, a poor first turn, then sort of shoved it all round, got into that that not. not Unchargeable V with your, your flyers and stuff. Uh, that was um, that was, yeah, that was I really think... cool. And then the way that you, you operated to take out the master at the end was classy. Yeah, because I mean there was there was many points throughout this in the turns where we thought, oh, this this game has changed. I think after turn one we had we were like, actually Rory might have the upper hand here um, with the left flank sort of looking like it was going to crumble. And then all of a sudden it sort of slowly with your movement and with a few. Uh, choices from Rory's part sort of changed back to that back to that even level when anything could happen and then the Wild Huntsman happened so it, it, there was like you said I think when you first come on here um, there was three or four points that it, the game turned 
ever, mm-hmm. ever so slightly. So, no, it was. I say it was really, really good to watch. Fantastic first live stream. Um, really, really good. You said yeah, it was slow. Totally. We, we there was plenty, uh, uh, plenty to get stuck in while you were doing it. So I wouldn't worry too much. And as you say, it was a finickety, two finickety armies. I think um, probably helped with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, people watching, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have got a schedule up uh, that has been up for the last five, uh, ten minutes while we've been chatting. Um, this will not be the, the last live stream, so do keep checking us for Twitter and forum and all that jazz uh, for when the next one is coming up. We will let you know in due course. Um, thank you to yeah, everyone. I think we're going to be picking up in... Round three, aren't we, mate? And keep yeah. an eye out as well for the pods. There's going to be Absolutely. some uh, summary pods coming out for the end of each of the rounds. Yes. Uh, I know that uh, <laughs> uh, Jack uh, is uh, Thundercock's going to be picking up, uh, and Slamrat are going to be picking up a couple of uh, you know sort of summary rounds and stuff. So there's there's loads of content out there, guys, to to keep you uh, keep you busy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, um, last thing to thank is the uh, uh, you, you guys for coming on and guesting and commentating with us. So thank you, everybody. Thank Trent. you for having me. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. And Jack, uh, how how good has it been to have Jack Ticks in person? Oh, gee, I really do feel privileged <laughs> for everyone to be seeing that, that content that I've produced. Uh, so, oh, so Truly do we. Really top so tier in quality. Yeah, oh, Very uh, proud of it. Absolutely, and uh, production value and everything, right? Um, just as a just as one last heads up as well, um, the Marcus B. Colin game has ended. It looks like it's ended a critical stage, so it's going to be over quick, one way or the other, very Ooh, soon. Very good. What's it? Is it looking swingy? Um, well, Marcus has just uh, hit a unit in the front and side with two of his units, like the uh, main bunker unit. Oof. Change, change the UB lobby. Yeah, <laughs> I could actually. <laughs> Very yeah, quickly. just just keep going. Continue the commentary. No, we, we will we will leave it there. We will leave it there. Um, I'm joking. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, thanks very much to everybody for listening. Yep. Um, thank Best you. Best of luck to Trent for his uh, his game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we'll um, catch you on the, and, on the flip uh, side, I guess. I'll leave you guys uh, with the competition um, that we're running throughout um, as a con. Uh, everybody uh, a masters competition with at least seven prizes and at least seven winners um so thank you very much for uh tuning in um and we'll leave you with uh the competition and see you later bye 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 everybody Hi guys, I'm Lucky Sixes. And I'm Maddie P. And today we're here to introduce the Masters 2021 competition, where you can win a whole host of prizes, including painted models from the Gobbo and Kev, lifetime TTS subscription, gaming book from Heretic Games, Rotten Factory unpainted Nurgle champion, laser sight pen, and a free standard size commission from the Gobbo himself. All you have to do to win one of these prizes is answer this simple question. What was the latest army book released by the Ninth Age? Was it A. Orcs and Goblins B. Dread Elves or C. Undying Dynasties And Matty, how do you enter this wonderful competition? Well, Lucky Sixes, I'm uh, glad that you asked. All we're asking people to do to enter this competition, and let's face it, why wouldn't you with a list of prizes like that, is simply to send us an email to the following address, pairedweaponpodcast at gmail.com. That's pairedweaponpodcast, all lowercase and all one word, at gmail.com. Don't forget to include your contact number, your contact Twitter, your contact forum, and any way other that you'd like us to let you know if you've been a lucky winner or not. And don't forget to keep an eye out for the PTG videos at the end of the Masters where we'll be announcing those lucky winners. Yes, at least seven winners we will have for this competition, so it is well worth you entering. Make sure you check out all our other content on several podcasts, including Paired Weapon Podcast, Slanrat, Thundercox, and Fantasy Warbang Podcast, and of course, the videos right here on PTG. That's it from us. Best of luck, and stay tuned for more content. Best of luck, guys. See you later.